ML Play is an innovative gameplay format that is completely unique to Major League Pickleball. It doubles down on the team aspect of MLP competitions. ML Play format starts with women's doubles, followed by men's doubles, and ending with two mixed doubles games. This unique dynamic means that teamwork is just as important as speed or technique on the court and within the community of the league. Bringing all players, regardless of their background or gender, here to MLP.
season one, event one. This is the MLP Mesa by Margaritaville. Welcome to championship court. We have been waiting and waiting for this event to finally take place. It's going to be bigger and better than ever in 2023. You can see our players are starting to get warmed up here on championship court. And warmed up is the right term because it's a bit chilly here in Arizona. We're actually hanging out in Mesa, Arizona at the Legacy Sports Complex. But let's get you uh, a little bit of a glimpse into what our day is going to look like. So we will start off with five total matches, but the Bay Area Breakers are up first facing off against the Columbus Pickleball Club. Then at the 10 a.m. hour local time, Arizona Drive and the Atlanta Bouncers will be up next. You can see the 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, as well as the 4 p.m. match is taking place. Now this Major League Pickleball, it's a team format. It has taken over the pickleball landscape. It's a fan favorite. We can't wait to see these dynamic pairings come to real life. Now it's also time to introduce you to our crew because we've got a pretty epic one. I'm Cameron Irwin and I also am joined by pro pickleball player Adam Stone. And Adam, we have talked about 2023 season. It's bigger and better than ever. There are now the premier level, the challenger level, my goodness, 12 teams in both regards. What are you most looking forward to in 2023? Well, uh, uh, thanks for that lovely introduction, Cameron. <laughs> but the slogan for MLP is there's nothing else like it. And I think the biggest thing for me with this 24 full teams, 12 Premier, 12 Challenger, is all these players have played tournaments. So they're all s some more experienced than others. But... There's nothing like MLP. It's a different format. It's a different energy. And I'm going to see how these players respond to it. I can't wait. Well, I'm glad that you bring up a different format because we have the third member of our crew, Cameron Blackwood, who is also down on championship court. And she knows exactly how this format works. Maybe, Cam, you can give us a little bit of a walkthrough. <laughs> giving us a little bit of insight and obviously we're working out the mics just a little bit here but she's done a phenomenal job in terms of kind of setting the scene for 2023 so can you give us a, just a little bit of an intro in terms of how these games are played out for these matches absolutely so we are going to have uh, four players uh, on each team two men two women we will start off uh, ladies first of course with women's doubles men's doubles and then two mixed doubles matches for every one of these challenger and premier uh, uh, level competitions and then of course uh, the patented dream breaker if we end up with a 2-2 of course we're going to have some uh, uh, some 3-1 and some 4-0 after the doubles uh, portion of the match but if we get to 2-2 the dream breaker comes into play and that is a rotation of four points for each player on your team set up in a specific order uh, right before that dream breaker starts and man it is has to be the most exciting thing in pickleball. Now today it's all about the challenger level we have three groups in play with four teams in each of those groups so we will actually be playing for points to this point yes. everything matters in terms of seeding to then get to the next round so can you give me a little bit of a glimpse into how every point matters in MLB format in this round robin absolutely three groups of four two teams are going to be able to advance from each group that gives us six teams and the top two seeds of those six will have to not play a match which is a huge deal especially in this form Format, uh, where anything can happen with the Dream Breaker. So to have that by the, the, uh, the next four teams will play for two spots and then they will play a semifinal matchup against those two seeded teams. Uh, just just exciting time. Yeah, we want to find out exactly who's going to top each of these groups. There are three. We've got Group A, Group B, and Group C. We are starting off in Group Number A. So if you take a look, we got the Bay Area Breakers facing off against the Columbus Pickleball Club. We've got Eva Radzikowska, Rachel Summers, Pablo Tejas, and Christian Alshon on the Bay Area Breakers. Give me a little bit of a dynamic that you see with Bay Area 
breakers. Uh, well, this is going to be a recurring theme throughout the challenger bracket. There's going to be a mix of uh, veteran players and high upside talented players with maybe a little less on the results side because they're early in their careers. So I think this team, the Bay Area Breakers, has some of the highest upside in the in, in the tournament with uh, Pablo Tellez, probably the most established player on their team, but really high upside with Eva Ratzikowska, Rachel Summers, and of course Christian Al. Sean, uh, a very, very high-end tennis player, uh, one year at the University of Virginia and uh, currently at the University of Chicago. Yeah, we saw him on uh, the P PPA Tour just a week ago. It seems like, it feels like just a week ago, uh, facing off against Tyson McGuffin. He yes, picked so up that singles victory. That was something. Absolutely. Second round, too. So, absolute upset. And the man, the man's an athlete. He moves like a gazelle out there. If he can refine his game and add some uh, touch and feel and good decision-making with, with with his power and his shot making ability. Watch out, everyone. Well, and just in terms of identification, that is Eva Radzikowska currently on your screen. And now let's head to the Columbus Pickleball Club. We've got Millen Rain, they call her Millie. Rebecca Ryan, they call her Becky. And Yates Johnson and Carson Klinger. So give me a little bit of a lowdown, expectations for this team. Right, very solid team as well. Millie Rain, the only one. So uh, I mentioned it uh, earlier with the breakers. So we only have two of the eight players on court for this first match that have MLP experience. So uh, I think that'll be big for Millie. Uh, we have uh, Rebecca, Becky, Ryan, Carson, Klinger, uh, and Yates Johnson. Yates Johnson, his brother Hunter, they've had some good results lately. Uh, he is a very talented tennis player as well, coming over from the pro doubles tour, a high of a 250 ranking. And Carson Klinger, the young buck at 16 years old, and he's an Ohio native. So it makes a lot of sense with the hometown team, Columbus, <laughs> Uh, picking him up. Well, it looks like they're just about ready to get started on championship court. Again, thanks so much for joining us here for our coverage. We've got courts going on just about everywhere. It feels like this is a beautiful facility, but I have to mention, it's a little bit chilly. <laughs> <laughs> and that really affects the game though, right? I know even though we're in Arizona, high altitude, and we had some wind yesterday afternoon as a lot of these players were out on the practice check, courts getting check. set. And Cameron now and the weather Daniel with Mike. the chilliness, it affects the ball as well. Well, it's You're absolutely true. Right? I think Just it's an underrated mic. part. A lot of people don't realize that the temperature really affects Check play. One, two. And not Check. only is the ball hard, oh, it Check will one, fly. Two. It doesn't, Check one, two. it's hard like that. It doesn't quite grab to get the Check spin one, also. Check so one, a big two. issue, and we'll see how the players Check can handle one, it out there in this first matchup. All right, well, surely these stands will start to fill in. Again, it's just 8 a.m. or 8.18 here, local time. Phenomenal facility. We have about 30 or so courts here. All individually fenced. Very, very nice facility. Uh, I believe it's right around the year anniversary of opening up. It was, I believe it was January last year, so really excited to see more of these facilities popping up around the U.S. And I will say, too, this championship court is beautiful aesthetically, but then you also have to pay attention. We actually have a cover now over the top of championship court, so how that might shape and change and affect the level of play and style of play could be interesting, as well as the sun. You can see on our video board the sun coming in to one side. Definitely uh, sun in the eyes on one. Oh, yes. So so they, they have actually, the first time I played, at this venue, they did not have these uh, sun barriers up, so I think that's really going to help. But, but when, when when you're a little bit shaded and you have a sliver of sun uh, slipping through, this 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 game is very fast, and to have that uh, a little bit of uh, issue with the eyes or seeing the ball, we'll, we'll we'll see if the if the players can handle that or that uh, creates some issues moving forward. Court still awaiting players who are standing by, waiting for some walkout songs, I believe, at this point. Again, Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. Cameron Blackwood is with us as well. You caught a glimpse of her. Hopefully we can catch her audio soon enough as she brings so many phenomenal insights as well, a professional pickleball player in her own right. Hey, I'll tell you what, Adam with the Camerons is not the worst place <laughs> to be. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it, looking forward yeah. to today. And I have to say that we got some beautiful navy jumpsuits here. We got some red 
from Columbus. Everybody's looking good out there. <laughs> well, and I'm glad that you bring that up because this is such a team dynamic and it's so different than anything else in pickleball in that regard. You have to build chemistry, camaraderie in such a short period of time. Maybe you get a handful of practices in with the other members of your team, but then you're also working with team owners who are living, breathing, and just loving pickleball. It's one of the best atmospheres. Uh, no, no question. So this, uh, uh, a lot of the atmospheres at, at these at these regular uh, uh, tournaments throughout the year, uh, great and and very very energetic. But hey, this is MLP. It <laughs> is different. That is their slogan. There is nothing else like it. And you can you can see it. You can see it and you can feel it. Everyone's taking big deep breaths out there. Everyone's tight. They want to play well for not only themselves but their 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 three uh, teammates and their team owners. Without a doubt. Well, you mentioned team owners. We can give you just a little bit of a glimpse uh, into some of the names just in this challenger level alone. You have the Bay Area Breakers who are soon to be out on the court, the Utah Black Diamonds, Columbus Pickleball Club, the DC Pickleball Club. Then that's just Group A. You move on to Group B. You've got Chicago Slice. This is one of my favorites, the Orlando Squeeze, <laughs> and the Texas Ranchers as well as the Miami Pickleball Club. Then in Group C, you have the Atlanta Bouncers, the Dallas Pickleball Club, the Brooklyn Aces, and the Arizona Drive. Some, some really elite names in so many of these teams. You know, you look around at some of the matchups, and there's some continuity Hello, is this thing in on? terms of different teams. And I don't know, I look at the, the Brooklyn Aces, and there's, some, there's a familiar name there for you, at least two of them, right? Yeah, Corinne Carr. <laughs> and uh, believe it or not, the Brooklyn Aces have two pregnant ladies on the team. I know. Sierra Gaten Leach and Corinne Carr. So uh, obviously that is a pretty awesome storyline. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, on paper, that team's pretty dang solid, and I can easily no, see them coming out of uh, no, Group C, I believe. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 good stuff. We, I mean, this has gone from eight teams, good, good season one, 12 teams, season two, and then 24 here in season three. Just really awesome to see the growth of uh, Major League Pickleball. Without a doubt, well, you mentioned the teams being added. We had multiple drafts in place. The Premier Draft went first, then the Challenger Draft came second. We have 48 players in each level. And then what's interesting too, we'll be splitting the 2023 season into, or year into two different seasons where there will be a redraft in the middle after the first three events. And the premier level owners will then switch to the challenger level owners. So there will be a chance to set up the relegation system. So really 2023 is a big setup year for 2024. Exactly right. Everything matters uh, where you slot in for 2024. So uh, of course the individual matches in the individual six tournaments huge but we're, we're playing for the, the whole year and, and to, to solidify your spot in that premier league for 2024 and we've got all four ladies getting warmed up now on our court the red pants is Millen Rain on the far side of your screen. And you got you got Becky Ryan, obviously from New Jersey. No, no, no sweats. She's got the skirt on already. She's got the sleeveless shirt. She, this is just another day for her. I'm kind of loving that actually. She's like, you guys don't know cold. You yeah, don't right. Know cold. And then if you notice, you have over here on the right side, you have Marietta, Georgia, and Naples, Florida, in full in full <laughs> full cover. So makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> This, the women's match is always going to be the one that sets you up feeling like you're the one under pressure, the one applying the pressure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, starting off first, and it's just such a huge deal. I mean, there's only four points to be had uh, here in these team events. So uh, to, to to get that first win or possibly put yourself in a little hole after the women's doubles, it kind of affects the subsequent three matches. So uh, quick start always important in sports, but definitely in this format, Cameron. Starting to warm up not only the dinks but the serves. Uh -huh. That's the usual progression for the warm up for these pro players. 
And one of the interesting things too, a little bit different rally scoring here at MLP and then also what side you're playing. We're not necessarily switching <laughs> like yes. regu regular pickleball. Correct, so you are gonna hold your side and you can switch spots with your partner on timeouts or the changeover at 11 because we will be playing to 21 win by two. So yeah, lots of different strategy and uh, I think that I think that it's a little bit up in the air what the optimal strategy is for some of these teams with this new format. So it's just it's just going to be great to see what everyone comes up with. And you know, if the uh, the lady heavy squads or the guy heavy squads, and it, what exactly is the optimal setup and, and team construction? And we'll just have to see. Well, it looks like we are ready to go. Rad Zikowska and Summers versus Rain and Ryan. Oh, that's a great, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rain and Ryan, I love it. There's a lot of R's out there right now. Get ready for a tongue twister in game number one. All right, the first serve of 2023 here on Championship Court is about to get underway. Summers will get us started. Drive that is successful to start off. Great topspin too. Nice uh, semi-western grip, allowing her to get underneath that ball and really get a lot of tumble on it. So the first one, very quality from Becky Ryan, neutralized by Eva Radzikowska. Uh, second attempt from Becky Ryan, a little wide. And it's already starting to get a little bit windy just from our broadcast position. We're up above the court, and it's going to be interesting to talk to the players and find out exactly how the wind is working here in championship court, because it can be a little swirly sometimes. Sometimes when you're in this enclosure, it kind of stops the wind. Sometimes it kind of funnels through and plays tricks with the wind. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we've seen quite a few drives right now from the Bay Area Breakers. I don't think I've seen a drop yet. Maybe one? Maybe one. So the mixed results so far. Uh, two misses there now. The last two backhand attempts for Rachel Summers, but both Radzikowska and Summers, very nice singles player. I expect to see those drives continue. That ball is just long. Nice job, nice scrap uh, from Becky Ryan and Millie Rain. You can even hear the difference, the sound of the ball's making with yes. the paddle right now in terms of the chill in the air. It's, it even sounds different than normal. Looks like we're having a possible look wide to me. They are debating whether they should challenge or not. Let's see what's happening. We do get a video, re a video challenge. Oh, they decided you... not to. I think it was a mistake because I do think that ball was wide. No one had a clear shot of it. You only get one attempt early in the game, that's that's tough. You get one attempt, but if you get it correct, you get to maintain that attempt. Exactly right. That's a big forehand from Ava Radzikowska. She's like, get that backhand out of there, Rachel Summers. I got this one, <laughs> and she finishes nicely. That's, that's another thing to bring up, uh, middle ball confusion. A lot of these, th these are drafted players. These are not set teams that, are, that travel the circuit together. So definitely something to monitor in these matches. And again, that is a wicked forehand from Radzikowska. Nice angle there. Yeah, it's clear cut that we have uh, the Columbus team a little bit more defensive and the, and the Bay Area Breakers letting it rip right now. Big rip 
from Millie. And you see Becky Ryan really liking to step to her left and run around her back end with forehand dinks. Let's see if that doesn't get her in a little bit of trouble with her court positioning. just dictating terms in terms of taking away that middle wall. Mm -hmm. That hard ball when you're in the midcourt trying to reset in the kitchen, really tough to get it down. Yeah, the Breakers have had many, many shots early in this match, shoulder, shoulder level or above, and that makes it really tough on Columbus. Nice digs in the midcourt from Becky Ryan, definitely what she's known for, and Eva Radzikowska not quite getting underneath of that backhand enough. Nice close. Rain, when she's getting a chance, she's looking to attack herself. She just hasn't seen many. That's exactly right. I'll tell you what, the ball She's not, she's a little slight in her frame, but that ball comes off her paddle with a lot of life when she takes a big cut at it. Same thing right there. I'm, <laughs> Millie Ray is just going, somebody give me the ball. We'll, we'll just label that coming in hot. <laughs> Very nice, and able to keep that ball in from a low position. Fantastic play from Millie Rain. Score is 9 9. <laughs> Just on the line for Radzikowska. Great angle, and you're exactly right. That forehand has been on point early in this match. Well, and she's shown great range. <laughs> She's got, definitely has the most length on the court as well. Standing about a half head taller than the three uh, other ladies on court. And we are at the change. So we have hit 11 to nine, which means we are now at the change of end. So we will switch side just with a two point margin. We've got Cameron Blackwood joining us. What's going on down there, Cam? Well, Millen Rain is the... Millen Rain is the only woman out here that has been on the MLP court before. So a lot of nerves playing to factor right now. But like you said, the barrier breakers came out firing right now. I think on the other side, Columbus needs to slow the ball down. Let's make the points a little bit longer. Pick your moments when you're going to speed up. And when they did that, they came back and tied it up 9-9. Nine to nine. So on the side of Columbus, I think they're going to get a lot more free points switching sides because that sun is hitting at such a harsh uh, line right there on the other other side of the court. Well, and then Kim, I'm glad you bring up the sun. I'm curious too, because you're actually court level. What's the wind like down there right now in terms of direction? What are you feeling? It's really not playing too much of a factor right now. Okay. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to be swirling too much, maybe here and there, but right now the sun is the biggest factor right now. And especially as it starts to get a little bit higher, it's going to reflect off these bleachers right into the player's eyes. They're going to have to adjust. Thanks, Cam. Great insight from court side. So two points of difference now after the change of end. It's a nice reset from Radzikowska. Good stuff. And she's got her partner there at the kitchen line getting down on that back end right at the feet of Becky Ryan. Even better than power placement. Her grip really allows to her to get a lot of top spin on not only her power shots, but her soft shots as well. Yeah. Another good close. You know, it's interesting Cameron brought up that Millie Rain's the only one that's got 
not the MLP experience out there. We caught up with Scott Crandall, who's the coach for the Breakers. And I said, what's the message? And he goes, well, I'm going to be in summer's ear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the one. Eva has some incredible tennis background. She's been in big moments before in her athletic career. He said, but summer's, I'm going to definitely be the positive one in her ear constantly. Yeah, definitely. And summer's uh, is showing that Scott was in her ear <laughs> leading up to this match, but no slouch at all. Uh, went to the University of Mary Washington, a two-time All-American in singles there. So at the uh, tender age of, I believe, 18? No, that can't be right. Twenty-four, so I was way off. <laughs> well, I mean, she went to the University of Maryland. You know, Mary it's Washington. never, it's never bad when you're talking about a woman to just go way low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. There you go. Thanks for bailing me out there, I partner. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I mean, just it's just been some really high-level shot making from the breakers so far. Let's see if uh, if Columbus can weather the storm. Otherwise, we're going to be headed to men's doubles pretty quickly. Fourteen to nine here. to her hip there on that forehand. Yeah, a little, little too far off the kitchen line as well. Looking for that rip four or five feet off the kitchen makes it tough to control. that dink a little high and Radzikowska had a good look at a cross court backhand angle but the, the net had other ideas. That's two. <laughs> and back to back. Hey sometimes oh, it takes uh, two fortunate situations and all of a sudden they're only down uh, two points. Here we go. Oh no, Millie, tough break on the serve. Flipping the tape landing in the kitchen. That is a service fault ball back over to the breakers. 15-12 now. Well, they had some unfortunate luck with the let tape and that one clips and, and unable to uh, pick it up is Becky Ryan. So it takes and it giveth. <laughs> To say it all evens out in the long run on those on those let cords, but it doesn't feel that way sometimes. It never does. does. It? <laughs> never does. 13, Score is 13-16 now. A little tight. Very nice drop from Becky Ryan, but Radzikowska was there at the hip level, and by the time she made contact down by her knee, unable to come up with that roll attempt. Just like that, this is a completely different game. It's 15-16. Yeah, just uh, Columbus keeping a couple balls low and the breakers not being able to dig them out and all of a sudden. Working more of the middle now. Seen that since the change of end. And it set up the dink winner. That thing was beautiful. Absolutely. Anybody can hit a hard winner, Cameron. Who can hit a slow one? Great job by Becky Ryan. And yes, fantastic job of three or four dinks. She obviously likes that inside out forehand dink to pull her wide. But if you can set it up with two or three into the middle, it doesn't allow Eva Radzikowska to be looking for that one. And she has to keep moving laterally. And that's what created the error right there. Great job by Becky Ryan and Millie Rain. So just as a reminder, the last time we took a little break in terms of a timeout, it was 14 to nine with the breakers on top, now 16 apiece. So not only at the change of end, but also since that timeout, things have definitely shifted. It seems like testing more of the middle. We've seen a few more backhands from Summers as well in terms of dinking. So maybe a little bit more patient, patience on the side of Columbus Pickleball Club. And, and they're, I think they're just finding the rhythm from the back of the court in the mid court, where earlier on in the match, the breakers were getting those at chess 
waist and, and kind of shoulder height. And yeah. now they're kind of having to bend lower waist and below on some of those drops from uh, from Columbus. And, uh, you know, they're reaping the benefit of that with a few errors from the breakers. So let's see if the Bay Area breakers can find a little bit of their nerves here. Just settle those. What a stab, but Summers finally gets one back. Big backhand angle, big forehand angle, and you're exactly right. Phenomenal get by Becky Ryan on the first one, but too much power on the second ball from Summers. storm of that initial drive from Radzikowska. Summer's in a reasonable spot to poach on that next ball, but great hands from Millie. Sometimes there's a little more hesitation with that backhand to poach, right? Like, you gotta be really feeling yourself. <laughs> oh, that's a sad story there. But yes, you're exactly right, Cameron. Not quite the extension or the power for most players. Some, some players prefer the, prefer the power on their two-hander, but forehand poach, I'm a big fan of that. Sometimes a little dicey on the backhand side. Oh, and missed return. That is not the time you want to find one of those. It's 19-17. catching Becky Ryan off balance. And we have now hit the freeze for the Bay Area Breakers. Pickleball Club will earn one more point as they get to 18, but now they are also in a freeze. So each team must have the serve to win a point. Wide and then up the middle. Score remains 2018. A second shot now for the Bay Area Breakers. Summers, she just let it fly a little too much. And there, the execution was the exact same thing. It was literally a carbon <laughs> copy of that previous point, and she kept that one down, and she was rewarded with the point. to get pumped up as he's about to get ready for men's doubles as that will be up next. So Pablo Tejas will play alongside Christian Alshon facing off against Yates Johnson and Carson Klinger. We've got Cameron Blackwood standing by with our ladies winners. All right, Cameron, take it away. Eva, you guys came out firing this morning, but they started to creep in at the end. How you guys? How were you able to close it back out? Uh, you know, I think at the end is all about you know the partner you have next to you and 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 having that confidence. You know that even when things go wrong, you know we can count on each other. You know I know what Rachel is gonna do, so it takes a little bit of pressure off. You know, and then you just finish as a team. Well, you did just that, and it's cold out here this morning. The wind started to swirl a little bit. We have the sun coming in. How much did that play a factor in this morning's match? Uh, the sun is so tough. 
tough on that side. It's really hard to see the ball. I hit a backhand high volley that I literally couldn't see, just swung. Um, but, you know, first match is under our belt, so we're gonna feeling good moving forward. There you have it. Next up, you guys, we have men's doubles. You don't want to go anywhere. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the earth. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. Next up, it is men's doubles. Pablo Tejas, Christian Alshon facing off against Yates Johnson and Carson Klinger. Cameron Irwin up alongside Adam Stone, Cameron Blackwood courtside as well. So give me a little bit of a glimpse into this matchup. Where do you think this one's going to go? I, I think this is going to be a very similar matchup to the women's where the breakers are going to be the more offensive minded team and uh, the Columbus Pickleball Club is gonna be a little more calm, collected, uh, a little bit slower picking their spots, and, and I think the breakers are just gonna let it fly. So that's how I see it going. Um, Which is interesting, because it's kind of a carbon copy of what we just saw in the women's game yeah, right. in terms of, of kind of the same type of style. Definitely, definitely, and, and that's exactly what I expect to see, and we have two also left-handed, right-handed matchups. We didn't, we didn't see any switching around in the women's match, but I, I would be shocked and awesome if we see that here with C Carson, CJ Klinger on the right side for Columbus and Pablo Tellez on the right side for the Breakers. All right, well, let's take a look at head to head between these two teams. You can see not only their dupers, but the win probability, their team duper, and then their duper power rating. Is so this a close matchup? I, I think it's fair to say <laughs> 49 to 51. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely see the difference there. Just real close. It's always fun to look at the dupers and see exactly how they play out. You've got all the team duper ratings as well in terms of the challenge. Uh, level right now and I'm looking at you've actually got the Atlanta bouncers up top all 12 it's really interesting in terms of uh, categorization all right so getting us started is the southpaw in Pablo Teas Oh, 
Hopefully we get a Christian Alshon trick shot in this match. He's the, he's the self-proclaimed tweener king. Let's see if we get one right here. Oh, I thought he was gonna start with one. Johnson, come on. <laughs> Who's the tweener king, he says. He says, uh-uh, give me the title. Also, how about that shot from Pablo Tejas to put that ball back into the corner? It was a thing of beauty. I mean, the hand speed on these players out here, men and women, is just ridiculous. If you guys think this is a game and not a sport, come to MLP and watch and then talk to me after. <laughs> I thought that conversation was over at this point. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Maybe it is. Maybe, uh, at maybe, least in my brain it is. Yeah, maybe that's old news. I shouldn't even have said anything <laughs> because this, these guys, it's, it's, it's good stuff. Oh, okay, replay of the let's serve. Courtney Johnson always doing a great job down there. Fantastic referee. Yeah, you can see the explosive movement from Christian Alshon right there. Unable to, to come up with that second Ernie attempt in the same point, but the man can move, the man can jump. Look for him to take those down the line dinks with Ernie's throughout the match. And it's all clinger all day. The young buck coming through with a nice three shot combination on the poach, just standing in the middle of the court and challenging both breakers. Sean was firing those forehands from above shoulder level and CJ Klinger with some great digs. Right, tough, tough luck there. In a perfect position to strike that first volley. Clipped the tape, caught him in the right shoulder. C.J. Klinger, definitely a stalwart on tour. He comes in uh, with an RV with his dad and travels to a lot of the tournaments. Pretty cool story. Nice. That ball just wide now. He says his favorite pickleball memory is playing pickleball with his dad in tournaments. So what a good 16-year-old son there, <laughs> giving, giving dad a shout out. <laughs> Miss Sir from Yates Johnson. See a couple players blowing on their hands, trying to feel those fingers. Ill-advised speed up. You can see Alshon kind of putting his hands up, saying calm down, wait for that one, dink that ball back. Great cover in the middle from Yates Johnson. Couple loose points here from the breakers. Still plenty of wiggle room early in this game uh, men's doubles match. A little too much on that from Alshon. Yes, Starts to work around the corner. And he's a big fan of loading his forehand. And what I mean by that, a lot of players like to sit backhand. He actually likes to step to his left and slap that forehand. As you can see, he generates a lot of whip and a lot of power on that forehand side. Uh, Columbus Pickleball Club not able to come up with that volley. Yeah. Nice job from Yates Johnson there as the drop sat up about waist level. And instead of being safe and dinking that back, he decided to drive it at the body of Alshon. Nice two shot combination. Lost his balance there. Johnson, if he needed an extra step, he kind of ended up lunging for that ball at the last moment. It's not the position you want to be in to drive the ball. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. At least from what I'm told. <laughs> 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 
Tough break from Pablo after a really nice uh, top spin third from Alshon. Pablo could not come up with the backhand volley. Incredible amount of, of combination of spin and power from Alshon. I believe all of those shots are going in and he's hitting it with a lot of pace. Tough to do. A little run here from the breakers. These last two minutes or so squeezing their way back into this one. Oh, that is a thing of beauty. I mean, he literally hit that on his shoe tops. Phenomenal roll third from Alshon, and we have a little bit of sustained momentum for the breakers. Oh my, flying in is Alshon. I'm not even sure that ball was gonna stay in bounds, but he didn't care. Yeah, I mean, incredible power too. He even got a late break crashing to the middle on that poach and still had enough uh, court coverage and movement to slap that forehand right into the right leg of CJ Klinger. So 11 to nine, Bay Area Breakers are on top, and I believe Cameron Blackwood is down on the court as well. What's going on, Cam? Wind is definitely starting to pick up just a little bit. You're seeing them playing some balls that are definitely flying out, and they're hitting them just in case they might be falling in. But on the side of Columbus, I don't, I don't mind that they didn't come up on top over the changeover because they got enough points. Now they're going to go to the better side where they have the sun behind them. Uh, on the other side, they're playing quick. I'm surprised right now. Usually men's doubles, they slow it down a little bit, create a lot longer points. Uh, not the case this morning. Everyone is uh, fired up, looking to end these points very, very quickly. And I think that's because the ball is its chilly out here and it's a lot faster. It is definitely playing pretty quick out here. You can see both of our teams right now. Yeah, and uh, Cameron, we mentioned earlier that uh, uh, Scott Crandall is helping out the breakers. We also have a very great pickleball mind and great senior pickleball pro player, Paul Olin, helping out the Columbus Pickleball Club. So really cool to see these senior pros who have a lot of experience, a good mind for the game, kind of giving some knowledge to these less experienced pro players. That's a great point by you. It's one of the fun aspects of MLP. Is that you've got team owners and team coaches. As one just hits the hip there of Claire. Yeah, Yates Johnson telling, telling CJ to uh, let that ball go, but he couldn't quite get out of the way. Yes, coaching very encouraged in MLP. You can do it in between points. You don't have to even wait for a changeover. Inside out. Yeah, I think I think he, his first inclination was just to rip that one hard, and uh, the Cardinal sent a pickleball changing your mind. <laughs> Man, Klinger is showing up though. Yeah, big hands, and I think Yates Johnson just got kind of caught watching his partner dig those balls out, and he wasn't quite where he needed to be for that for that last dink attempt. I think watching really great defense in pickleball might be one of my favorite things. There's a good finish from Johnson. Wow, what a phenomenal shot from Yates Johnson using full extension on the kitchen line, able to get a lot of topspin. No chance for Pablo Tellez to come up with that response. Yeah, a quality speed up from Alshon there. I think Pablo would love to have that one back with his lefty forehand in the middle. Can't make them all. And there's the decision all Sean, I think, was looking for. Gets pushed a little bit more wide, though, so he can actually take that up the line. Mm -hmm. Yes, and really fantastic soft stuff, the first four or five shots at that point from Columbus, but just too much offense from Christian Alshon. There's a nice duck, and you see Yates Johnson talking to uh, his younger partner, CJ, just letting him know a lot of these balls are going out. 
as I back-to-back -back let goes in a slight <laughs> stare down from Christian Alshon. As I say, the most underrated skill in pickleball. The let, stare down? No, letting out, ball, <laughs> <laughs> letting out balls go out, but the stare down. That was well played. Well played, Thank partner. <laughs> There's the tweener king. Tweener king. Each team's got one. It should be worth two points. I don't. I don't even care if you win or lose the point. <laughs> you get, you get style points. Bonus point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tough luck. I uh, wouldn't say it was one he would always want to speed up from Pablo Tellez, but once it clipped the tape and went up high, Yates Johnson uh, had the response. Where does the location with Pablo being a lefty? Where does the location of the speed up kind of get looked at to go when you're going against him? See, that's a tough thing about a lefty. I know. Because so all your patterns are different. You're often looking at that sh dominant arm right shoulder. Well, it's different for a lefty, so you have to change up your patterns and you have to attack uh, different spots against a lefty. Not always easy. You know, I've played Tyler Loon a million times, <laughs> and you, it, it, if you go with the right shoulder on him, he hits a two-handed backhand about 90 miles an hour. So you got you got to mix up your spots. Uh, there's no question about it. So the tweener king is out on the court. Then we have the Ernie King, who you mentioned, and Tyler Loon. Uh huh. Uh huh. Are they just like controlling their own lands out here? Like, yes. do they get certain courts just like <laughs> their own their own territory? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, they they very well might. And then you can attack. So there is a look. Now on to the grandstand where you're getting a chance to see our multi-court coverage right now. So you've got Utah Black Diamonds out there along with DC Pickleball team. So it looks like the men's doubles, the Black Diamonds just won 21-16 uh, against Sam Query and Stefan Avern. So not sure exactly what happened in the women's doubles, but uh, they are really close on par with us at the end of the finishing that men's doubles match. In. And I believe Utah was actually up 1-0. Okay, gotcha. And there's a look to our score here in championship court. 17-15. that communication. Uh -oh. One of the issues, a lot of big advantages to having two forehands in the middle, but that might be one of the, the issues for these guys, both with great drives too. Got to communicate early. That was smooth from Tejas. Yeah, right at the left hip of Yates Johnson, who was kind of breaking towards the middle. Perfect spot from Pablo on that speed up. A nice pace, didn't overdo it either. The ball would have stayed. Just a little too much extension, and Alshon is getting into Alshon at this point. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love to see it. I love the emotion. There it is right there in terms of emotion. 19-17 <laughs> now. We always like to say same guy. Rips a winner right in the middle of the net on the next one. <laughs> Seems like it's turned into a head-to-head -head battle right now between Alshon and Claire. Absolutely, and you see Alshon very comfortable stepping off to the left, almost doing a half Ernie on a lot of those speed ups uh, with his forehand. Uh, lots of power, lots of spin though. That's a big drive cross court. That's a long drive. Yes, and what a phenomenal return by Tejas. It was three inches from the line, so Johnson to come up with that quality of a shot from that position, phenomenal. The net. And Claire wants that back. That ball just sat up too high. Mm -hmm. Great loose arm finish from Alshon. But they put themselves in a great position. 2018, or excuse me, 2019 now. Yeah! And they earn the side out. Score remains 19-20. Yeah, exactly right. The correct. Johnson thought they were at 20, but no, they were frozen. Oh, my. Whoa. Oh, and oh. 
Oh. Tejas, oh. I believe, touched the post. Yes, he did with that foot on the landing. It was not on the oh. takeoff, it was on the landing. It was so beautifully executed as well. Score is now 20-20, I believe. No way, that ball was six inches behind him. To get a snap and down at the feet of his opponent off of that let cord, just phenomenal, just control of his body and knowing where he was on the court, Christian Alshon. And I do like Yates in that neutral cross-court uh, dink rally with Alshon. As you see, Alshon likes to kind of hide his backhand and hit more forehands. So I know Yates is disappointed with himself for not being able to win that, that mini battle. And we haven't seen many of those, to be honest, in this entire game. It's kind of been more head-to-head -head between both sides. Nice job from uh, Klinger, able to jam up Alshon, who is a little late not only coming forward, but stepping to his left, looking for that forehand. Yeah, I think, I think there was a little pump fake from Yates, who was considering driving that ball, decided to go with the roll drop and just threw off his rhythm a little bit. Another game point opportunity for the Bay Area Breakers. Right. Ball is he crossed the plane, so he didn't contact the ball. His right foot came across, broke the plane of the net. Courtney Johnson on it, Cameron. Yeah, and here's a look right there. And actually, that was a great shot. That is the correct call from Johnson. Nice job. You saw it on the replay there. That was exactly the kind of uh, kitchen cam you got to love. Great job by our crew here. Very nice return, able to get it fully cross court to the clinger backhand. Not, so, not easy, I'm just saying, not easy to do from that point from Tejas. Two really good returns from him the last couple minutes. Another game point opportunity. And there's the inside out setup, and Tejas was just waiting on it. He had two almost earnings that were called for faults, but then finally he finished it off in perfect fashion. Look at that beauty. Yeah, an incredible setup from his partner Alshon with a little shoulder fake on the inside out dink. So 22 to 20, keeping things awfully close, but in terms of team score, area breakers are looking mighty fine right now. I mean, we got what we wanted, though. I mean, we saw the duper. We saw the duper right there. We knew it was going to be close. I mean, we got a two-point game here, 22-20, exactly what we expected. Yeah, right. It was 40. What was it? 49 percent and 51. Yeah, I think it was 0.01 different or something like that. So, uh, yay, duper on point. All right, we've got Cameron Blackwood standing by with our. Our winner, she's down there right now with Tejas and Alshon. Take it away, Cam. One at a time, one at a time. Let's go, we got it, come on. Pablo, let's talk about this team aspect here. How much momentum does the women's win bring into this men's doubles? A lot, a lot. It gives us a little breathing and to play a little more risky, I would say. And when you guys, you, you guys had a nice lead there, it gets tight in the end. Now you're at hold. How, what does the strategy change to close it out? Uh, you just gotta stay aggressive. Don't go for anything special. It's so key and kind of don't think. If you're thinking, you're gonna be overthinking. So empty the mind. There you go. Now we have mixed doubles coming up next. You guys don't want to get, go anywhere. We'll be right back with more MLP. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10 court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business. 
with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here. Right? Are you getting this? You get so if he wants the end, water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Welcome back, everyone, to MLP here at beautiful Bell Bank Park. Uh, excited to get this first mixed match going. The Bay Area Breakers off to a quick 2-0 lead. So uh, Columbus Pickleball Club's got to pick it up here. It's now or never because the next match win for the Breakers will seal the deal with three. Well, and to that point, we'll still play both mixed matchups because you're playing for points right now in terms of seeding for these three groups taking place here in the challenger level, group A, B, and C. We'll also have three different groups in the premier level. But for now, it's all about the challenger level on this Thursday from Mesa, Arizona. There's a look at Millie Rain. We talked about her when she was in the women's doubles matchup. And I, and I believe, Cameron, that the uh, seeding uh, once you come out of group play is uh, win percentage and then point percentage. If it, if it, so it's obviously wins, team wins are the most important, but points count. So we, we mentioned it multiple times on the broadcast. Everything matters. These players need to leave it all out there, even if the situation looks Diet. Yep, so it does go to point differential percentage is the second key. And then I like that they said coin flip <laughs> if it gets to three because there's no way it's ever going to the <laughs> third part. Coin flip. <laughs> Everyone's having some fun here, though, on championship court. Yes, and so it looks like the, um, the home team is the breakers. And what that means is the Columbus Pickleball Club said their first mixed matchup, and then the breakers got to respond. To that. And so that's what we have here. And that's Caitlin Kerr having some fun. Sorry, I'm too distracted. I know you're talking pickleball, and I'm like, hey. I, I, I wish I were, I wish I were dancing. She's of course with the Las Vegas Night Owls. She's, she's, the, she's the hype girl, you she's know. She's the hype she, girl. She's got to get she's it going. Got me hyped. She's doing a great job. <laughs> so Summers will get us started. She'll be playing alongside Alshon. Nice roll third shot from Rachel Summers. Yates Johnson overextending just a little bit to cover that fourth ball. Slippery. Slippery, slippery. Slippery, slippery. Have we, what are you calling that now? That I, shot? I don't know. That's, that's the Gabe Tardio. And yeah. Kyle's one of the first, Kyle Yates, one of the first people to do it. So I'm not sure there's a name. I think it's name. like the slippery fish. Because yeah. it like flips over like a fish, you know, and it's <laughs> going through the water. Hey, I, I like it. Thank I like you. it. Let's go with that. I mean, we're broadcasters. This is what we do. We're going to make stuff up. <laughs> and, a, and a great ole there from Yates Johnson falling down on his backside, but letting that ball go out. Graceful. Go, 
He's on the floor again. <laughs> <laughs> two for two, two points. This time the front, he was on the backside the previous one, this time laying down, doing the Superman there. Good stuff from Yates Johnson and leaving all on the court. I'm serious, that was very graceful. Nice work. There's an art to falling. Yeah, Gates Johnson questioning that ball coming off with so much spin from Alshon's paddle. It kind of puts you in a decision point. Am I, can I can I let these balls go? And it makes it very tough. Miss return. And again, every point counts and it's hard, especially now the serve and return game becomes that much more critical because you're losing points off those. Interesting choice, going with the tweener speed up yeah. to Johnson. So usually people do tweeners when they don't have a lot of time. Uh, Alshon just does them at any point in time. He had, he had all the time in the world to do whatever he wanted to there, and he chose the tweener. Some help from the net. Yeah, that's a heavy drive from Yates, and I know that Millie got a little assistance from the net, but she was uh, in a great position to let that one fly on the two-handed backhand side. Up into that point, Summers did a nice job diffusing the pressure that was coming her direction. She did, initially off the drive and then a couple quality dinks, but leaving that middle dink a little too high and Yates Johnson stepping, stepping over to the middle to clean up. I've seen a lot of tricklers this yes, morning. Yes, definitely. A and lot. I mean, it, it really comes and goes. I'm not sure there's really a, uh, like a, you know, weather that allows it to happen. Just some matches have a lot, some don't. Just easy movement from Christian Alshon, who is lurking in the middle, Millie thinking she had a chance to catch him up the line, but he's right back in position where he needs to be. There you go, Rachel Summers with rolling that drop again. Wind a little bit in her face, pushing it wide though. spot there from Alshon going inside out with the forehand. Often he's going to be taking that middle or at Millie Rain, but to put one occasionally to the left side of Yates Johnson's a great play. It looks like there's a call on one of the, or questions on one of the calls. Yes, yeah, so on that return, Yates wondering if he should uh, challenge. Ch challenge or not, but Courtney Johnson letting him know she did not see it clearly. Yeah, very nice. Always a little bit easier when you're in the midcourt to let that ball go out than right on the kitchen line. But either way, great job by her getting out of the way. Yeah, great return from Yates Johnson. Completely fine with that roll from uh, Rachel Summers. It's been a great shot for her. Can't mm -hmm. make them all. And Millie and Alshon very comfortable with each other and they know each other's game. They are in the same practice group down in South Florida. I gotta love the replay there. Millie Rain doing a solid job chasing that ball down. And Alshon got her back there, but you're exactly right. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think Millie had a shot. Great, I didn't either. Great job, <laughs> full extension and, and able to get that ATP even short in the court. Just beautiful job by Millie. Couple times Alshon, kind of going behind Yates Johnson. We'll see how much court Yates continues to take. Always, always a fine line for these fellas of being a presence but not overextending. So uh, that's that's mixed doubles in a nutshell for a man. So it's 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 not a perfect science. You just got to get it as close as you can to optimal. 
11 to 9 now. So they will change ends with a two point advantage on the side of the Bay Area Breakers. Cameron Blackwood is checking in with some of the team right now for Columbus Pickleball Club, listening to the huddle. Maybe we'll catch up with her here in a minute after she hears what's going on in that team huddle. And you can see Paul Olin dropping some knowledge on the squad down there with those beautiful red gloves, going with the team colors. I wish I had some red gloves on right now. <laughs> There's a look now out on to your grandstand court, or court two, where the Utah Black Diamonds and D.C. Pickleball team are going head-to-head. -head. Utah up two to zero. Exactly. And mixed doubles. Exactly yeah. right, Cameron. I think both uh, D.C. Pickleball Club and the Columbus Pickleball Club needing this win to stay in their respective matches. All right, let's check in with Cameron Blackwood now who listened in to Columbus's huddle, I believe. Interesting strategy they have. What they said is, let's go hard right at Christian Alshon's hips. And what that's going to do is they want that to isolate Rachel's because their end goal right now is to isolate her and go after her. But they also need to have the first punch at Alshon. So that's a strategy heading into this. Let's go ahead and hit a nice speed up towards him and then go directly right at Summer, see if we can't get some more points. All right, great work, Cameron. We love that stuff. So now we've got a little bit of a scouting report from the Columbus Pickleball Club. Let's see if they can execute. And then not even just that, let's see if it works. Yeah, so that's right. So kind of looking to kind of freeze Alshon and then pick apart Rachel Summers. Reasonable strategy. that was in the cheek from Alshon. Uh, uh, at least it hit the tape first. <laughs> there you go, nice attack from Millie Rain. And that wasn't particularly high. I was about waist level or below, so great pull by her, able to catch Alshon a little off balance. Great whipping drive from Yates Johnson. And now Sean takes a shot up the line. Absolutely, stepping over to the middle nicely and not, not even a bad drop from Yates Johnson, just able to create some offense from almost nothing. Excellent job, Christian Alshon. some oohs and some ahs. <laughs> Oh, so it was overruled. Okay, so what happened is our head ref overruled the Yates Johnson call, and Yates is trying to figure out if he should challenge or not. And there's a look right there in terms of the close call. Ooh, baby, I think that's a little back. Oh, I thought that caught right no, there. I don't know, I don't know. I yeah, mean, come on, I mean, how, how get your eyes checked, I Adam? I'm saying, how can you, I don't know if you can over, oh man, that is wild how Adam, close that is. look at that bowl. I think it's out, to be honest. It literally has, look at this. Oh, great job by our crew. There is yellow, there is pickleball touching that? the outside of that line right there. I don't know, that, that ball does not compress. I do not believe it touched the line. Are you serious? I am very serious. I never joke, Cameron. Well, I know the ball doesn't compress, <laughs> so it's a little different than a tennis ball. See, I come from the volleyball world where that ball, that ball is 100% in. Right, but see, the thing is, is call on the court is a big factor here. Like, when the yeah. call is this close, overruling is just not very easy. But if I had to pick one, I would say that ball's out. Okay. So no compression of the ball doesn't means that it's not squishing down. 
I'm being told by my crew that it's the rule of thirds here. Uh -huh. <laughs> the crew always in our ear. Always we, in our ear. We love most of it. It's like, but you know, not always. I would love to say it's the angel and devil on your shoulder, but I think it's <laughs> more the latter than, yeah. Yeah, than may, the may, other. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. <laughs> and I only kid. I love this crew. It's, it's a perfect time to give a little shout out to old Boxcar Productions in the booth, helping us out in the truck. We love it. AB is the angel in the crew, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> I would actually think that's true. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got, I got some really nice rec play in with Kyle Selenko of Boxcar Production. We were lighting people up yesterday, I'll tell you that much, Cameron. Let's go. It's only because you didn't face off against me. What, what happened? Oh, it was, they called it out. Apparently I was wrong. Rarely happens. Rarely happens. <laughs> I kid. Wow. Unbelievable shot from Rachel Summers splitting the defense up the middle and hitting that ball three inches from the baseline. That is incredible shot making from Rachel Summers. I've seen that a few times from her. Nice speed ups, just kind of rolling those to the baseline. She's found a few winners now. <laughs> and it seemed like a change in decision making right there, like you mentioned before with Alshon. Cardinal sent a pickleball. Not sure if it was the court positioning of Johnson, but he flubbed that one. It's a very technical term. <laughs> flubbed it. All right, Columbus. A little change of momentum after that call. Well, and it's also important to note, Columbus down 0-2 right now. So in order to find the match victory, as the pressure continues from Alshon, yeah. they would have to pick up both of these mix and then head to the Dream Breaker, which is the tiebreaker. I'd be fine going to the Dream Breaker. Oh, Why yeah. not? Let's get, let's get this party started the right way. It's what everyone wants, Cameron. <laughs> it's for the fans, for everyone. It's just exciting. For the fans. 14-17. Oh, and he was all over that. Yeah, it's a great job from Yates Johnson, kind of making Alshon feel like he had a window to go to there behind him, and he closed that window very, very quickly. So very, very different vibe of this match, really since the, the little break we had for the challenge call, and Columbus Pickleball Club really stepping it up with a four-point lead here in the latter stages of this first mix match. So four points of difference, like you mentioned. So in terms of what you might be seeing on this side of the court, what's the uh, equation for success here? You see uh, Scott Crandall talking to Summers right now, but how can they make the difference here with four points trailing? Right, just really specific strategy-wise, I'm not really so sure. I think that uh, Columbus Pickleball Club has really raised their level, and I think that they just need to stay aggressive and uh, definitely not get too touchy-feely with some of that stuff at the kitchen line. Trust their shots. Trust they both have really quality top spin forehands and let it fly a little bit. I know that's, you know, not so easy to do when you're, you know, you're down four points at the late stages of the match, but I think that's really what's going to get it done for them um, is, those, uh, is those aggressive shots and those aggressive plays. No touchy-feely play. Got it. Oh, man. <laughs> well, they, they went for it there, but the counterattack's too strong. No touchy-feely. No touchy-feely. <laughs> nope. there, yeah, there you go. And it just continues right now for the Columbus Pickleball Club. It is now game point for Rain and Johnson. Oh, it was on her paddle. And she had it. Looking for that Alshon backhand. Very, very much not easy to get it to the Alshon backhand with his great footwork. But if you get it there, definitely a weaker, weaker wing than the forehand side. So an 
another point on the board for the Bay Area Breakers. As a reminder, the freeze does not go into effect for the Bay Area Breakers until they hit 18. I think there might have been a few of those going long, but. Yeah, definitely. You can, you can hear the uh, uh, the partners uh, when the ball is coming to their partner calling them off, but hard ball, lots of power from your opponents, tough to let it go. That's an overhead for sure from Yates Johnson. That was demolished. Yeah, nice, nice loose arm there from Yates. Uh, really whipping through, creating a lot of pace. Hulk smash. That ball is out of bounds. Not even gonna challenge it. Nope, here's a look at it. So our first mixed matchup game has been completed. Columbus Pickleball Club has picked up a point on the board and I do believe, yes, that ball was wide as you can see it on the replay. So 21 to 17, Rain and Johnson. Here's another good look from our crew. That one guys, I know that one's out. <laughs> Great job with all of these cameras going down each of our lines so we can catch all these close calls. One of the great additions to the game of pickleball is more and more camera angles coming into the game. And our box car, car crew production has done a phenomenal job setting up all these cameras. We can catch just about every angle we need. challenge here, but the call does stand. So just catching you up to speed a little bit here on championship court. So game number three, the first mixed doubles matchup does go the direction of the Columbus Pickleball Club with the ball being called out of bounds on Alshon's final shot. So now we've got Yates Johnson as well as Millie Rain, our victors down with Cameron Blackwood. Go ahead, Cam. You guys, we're down 0-2. Talk to us about the strategy heading into this match and then how it changed throughout the match on those changeovers and those timeouts. Uh, I was pretty pissed about the first one, um, so it was good to get revenge. Uh, I think we just used kind of like that momentum, um, used that anger, um, and just brought it to them and, and it and worked out. And a lot of people don't know, you guys don't play together necessarily on the outside tour. You're drafted onto a team. How many weeks have you and Yates had to train before heading into MLP? Uh, we actually haven't trained at all. I've seen him at a couple tournaments, but we haven't trained at all. We just kind of went out there and we were like, let's go. We both have the skill set, stay out of the way of his drives, and let's get it. We guys did have some success. We're on to the next mix of doubles. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more MLP. Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. <sighs> plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. 
Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. I love it so much. Thank you so much. Championship court, the home to Major League Pickleball. Of course, presented by the Margarita Bill. It's time to get to the second mixed doubles matchup. Caitlin Kerr, I mean, she's got this crew dancing, and it's still not even 10 a.m. here in Arizona. You gotta love that, bringing the whole energy with her. <laughs> so let's take a look now at the head-to-head -head for this next mixed doubles matchup, and you see exactly who's facing off. We've got Pablo Teas and Eva Ratzinska facing off against Clear and Ryan. And again, we saw it in the last one. It was 51 and 49. It's the exact same thing. But I believe the opposite direction now between these two teams. That's right. And you can see that duper power rating as well. And that is factoring in not only doubles, but the singles as well. So Tejas Radzikowska, very much uh, quality singles players. And that's why their power rating is a little bit higher, even though it's 51% in this doubles matchup. Right, so let's get to it. The second mix doubles is now about to get started. In, in terms of the match score, right now the Bay Area Breakers are still up two to one in the score. Oh, we got, oh, we got Tyson scouting. I mean, how is he going to be on camera with the hood on? We don't get to see the mullet. What the heck? Unbelievable. Maybe he chopped it off. Yeah. I don't think so. That's, not how it That's a signature move, man. H. Johnson's got some hand warmers. That's a great idea. It really Whoever is. came up with that, it was smart. And I'll tell you what, we are very much even. We, we're not pulling for anyone here in the booth, but I was nice to see Columbus get that, that first mixed doubles match so we can we can have this one really count. Let's see that dream breaker. I'm also loving the uh, dance moves from Becky Ryan. Give us more, Becky. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Really, yeah, really nice, really nice. And we saw this match up in, in women's, uh, uh, Cameron, where we have the inside out forehand dinking from Becky Ryan and then Radzikowska trying to neutralize it. I'm sure that pattern will continue throughout this match. Right up the middle. Yep, nice, nice step over from Pablo Tellez. And like you said earlier, didn't have to do too much. A nice little mid-paced attack from him. Perfectly placed. Great job from Radzikowska. From kind of a low position on her backside, uh, backhand side, was able to get it cross court to Becky Ryan's backhand. Fantastic attack. Hands from Teas. Yeah, that's it. Over, I think that's one of my favorite resets when the paddle faces up that towards the sky and you're just slightly slicing that ball. Man, I just I like that downy soft stuff. Oh, that's you know, anybody can hit it hard, you know? I already said that once or twice. Give me some soft stuff. Little little overextension there from Becky Ryan. Kind of got stuck in the middle of whether she was gonna attack that ball or not. And when you hesitate. It makes it very, very difficult in the game of pickleball. Not a lot of time. You're so close to your opponent, just things happen so quickly. Any form of waffling or going back and forth between your decision-making process creates issues. Yeah, that's it. I might have just hit the wrong part of her paddle. Yeah, rock solid volley from CJ Klinger, catching Radzikowska right in the land of opportunity, AKA no man's land. Yeah. Yeah. And again, Taya is finding multiple shots right now, going right up the middle. Yeah, reasonable let go from Becky Ryan. I thought that ball yeah. was gonna sail long as well, but that's a phenomenal job of getting rotation what I mean by that top spin on the ball from Pablo Tellez. Is 
hitting inside out forehands all the way on the past the left side of her hip. I don't think I've ever seen someone go that extended. She's not interested in any backhand to the kitchen line. <laughs> Actually, a uh, very old school player named Christine Barksdale is one of the only other players I've seen actually go to the left side of her body to hit a forehand. Oh, That's exactly what Becky Ryan's doing. Oh, yeah. Good leap from Becky Ryan. She drops to her knees right there to get out of the way. Yeah, it pays to be short sometimes. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I feel her pain on that one. Or I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be hard right now when you're thinking about Columbus. Trying, Becky Ryan seeing the majority of the balls, but to speed up, she's got a lefty in front of her with a big old forehand. She's yeah. got to speed up cross court. Or she's looking to at least. And that's tough. Yeah, it's not easy. Big drive from Radzikowska. I'll tell you what, I've been really impressed with the soft stuff from CJ Klinger. But in this mixed match, he's going to have to take some chances and play a little bit more offensively. That was a great ding from Klinger. Yeah. And then you've got both the lefties out there for the fellas. Yeah, and you can see when, when Klinger is contacting that dink, Tejas is actually on Radzikowska's side of the court. So you got to go behind the guy occasionally, keep him honest. Yeah. Solid finish. Yeah, too much power from the breakers right now. Just a lot of firepower, a lot of two, three, four shot combinations. Oh, wanted, wanted the poach, but a little low. We're, we're, we're going to label that one ambitious as he's going for the uh, forehand roll cross court poach <laughs> from his shoe tops. Hey, you got a six point advantage. <laughs> That's right, let it fly. Let's see what happens. Heat check. <laughs> Heat check for sure. <laughs> got a quick change of sides here. Columbus Pickleball Club's got to figure something out. And really, it, it, like I said, with the combinations, there hasn't been a lot of finishing in one shot. Uh, so Columbus has had some nice digs and some nice defense, but the sustained pressure from the breakers right now is just too good. So 11 to five right now. Let's take a look now out to the grandstand. Again, we're at the DC Pickleball team and Utah Black Diamonds. This one's close in the second mix matchup, 16-13. Yeah, and I believe the Black Diamonds are up 2-1 in are. this matchup. They are, and currently it's 16-14 in favor of the Black Diamonds. McMillan and Cassidy are out there right now. Balicelli and Corey are also the, the rare on the far side. The rare double lefty combination from uh, Cassidy and McMillan. You don't see that too frequently. <laughs> Sometimes lightning does strike twice. <laughs> Seven to five now on championship court. Yeah, a boy, CJ Klinger. Very nice control of the kitchen line, keeping his opponents back. And a nice forehand up the middle for the winner. He's got some length to him. He does. Loose air, just a short little one minute side change can really can really just change things up a little bit. I do also have to give some props to uh, both Klinger and Ryan. He looks pretty aggressive at this moment. But I do like the energy these two have together, constantly coming back together at, in between each and every point. And a little bit of extra step or pep in their step. I'm all about the fighters. Oh. 
And there, finally, Ryan takes a shot up at Teyes. But she found the backhand, Cameron. And that, the right shoulder. Exactly, that was important. Those, like you mentioned earlier, those middle balls against Teyes are, are very tough to pull off with that big lefty forehand. So uh, for her obviously enjoying that inside out forehand, to be able to get that to his right shoulder was a phenomenal shot from Becky. job and I would almost like to see Becky's got stuck a couple times I'd almost like to see her hang out a little bit more to her left knowing that she has clinger in there in the middle yeah, lots of spin from uh, the paddle of Tejas and the short hop kind of half volley from Becky Ryan just a high degree of difficulty when there's that much spin on the ball Just too much heat off the paddle of Teyes. Unrelenting in this one. Yeah, really nice forehand, backhand, forehand, three shot combination. Just, man, there's just a lot of firepower. I don't care how good your defense is to come up with <laughs> three digs on, the, on those kind of offensive shots is gonna be a tall task for anyone. All right, now we have 14 to nine, so this is about the point we see timeouts have been taken almost in each of these games yep. to this point. But in terms of what we've got coming up next, we've got Cameron Blackwood, who's got something coming up next. What's going Cam? In the huddle here, they're just telling Becky Ryan, just stay steady with those dinks. And maybe on the second to third dink, go ahead and go at Politel's back end. As we saw, they did have some success with that. And they're wanting Klinger to get big in the middle. They said, you have to come over, cover that middle a little bit more. Becky, go ahead and stay steady. Let's see if we can't get some more points on the board and make this interesting. Well, we always like interesting. Let's see if they can get it done right now as they trail by five. Great job, Cam. Again, Becky Ryan. And, and you see Teyes held line a little bit because she caught him a couple points previous. So when you can go to all the spots, it opens up everything and a great job of mixing up her spot by Becky Ryan. just a loose error there, but I like what CJ Klinger was doing, kind of protecting the backhand uh, of, or uh, the middle ball of Becky Ryan, allowing her to step over to her left and hit that forehand. We haven't said much <laughs> about Eva Radzikowska, <laughs> but right there she does beautifully. That's back-to-back -back points at the hand of Radzikowska. That time she missed, but really she made. She let that ball go, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> that is a beautiful combo. Taya says, I've had enough, Becky Ryan. I think he threw out a little yeah, baby, at the end of that one, too. He was happy with himself. We're happy with him as well. Yeah, often when the ball clips the tape, changes the spin, and even on the soft shots when you have plenty of time, it still kind of messes with your brain when it clips the tape. Yeah! And again, reaching in. That's so that's, Ryan. that's two in the middle, and I hope next time she goes to the backhand to Tejas because I think he's going to be ready for the next time she tries that one. We'll see if she mixes it up or continues with that middle ball. Bad luck. CJ, he wasn't even cheating that bad, so I think he would have been in a good position to counterattack with that backhand, but... Radzikowska with a great shot. I just like that phrase. Cheating that bad. Yeah. <laughs> you can cheat, you just can't cheat that bad. It's true. <laughs> I know. Does it land? It does, but out of bounds. I believe that is the first backhand dink for Becky Ryan in this match. And unfortunately for her, it was a little too high.
Yeah, great job from CJ Kling. I was really hoping he was gonna take that ball over on Becky Ryan's side, and that's exactly what he did. from Teas. Yeah, right up the middle. And I, I like it. He's not really releasing with too much power mm -mm. Uh, on those fourth, six, eight shots, whatever it may be, but the spin is just so heavy. Yeah! Exactly what I said. I didn't, I didn't, hoping she wasn't gonna go to the middle again. Teas was ready and the breakers. Phenomenal job in the mixed doubles. So the Bay Area Breakers have officially won the match as they have now finished out the second mixed of doubles. However, we've also got a chance, we've got to get a chance to catch up with them as Pablo Teas is going to head over to Cameron Blackwood. Slowly, he's he's he's, he's saying he's his, saying his nice victory. match. Yeah, he's taking yeah. his victory lap. <laughs> saying, saying nice match to his opponents. We appreciate that. Good sportsmanship, Pablo. Well, he's made his way that direction. Now it's time to catch up with our winners. I believe they are all set and ready to go. Go ahead, Cam. Eva, the Bay Area Breakers came out firing this morning. Tell us what was said in the team huddle before you guys stepped on the court this morning. You know, I feel like we have such a good chemistry on the team. You know, everyone was fired up. Everyone was ready to go. You know, it's like we know what to expect from each other. So it's it's literally fun to step on the court and just fight and give your best. You guys were up 2-0. You go down in the first mix. It's 2-1. What's the mind shift changing to get this win today? No mind shift. We want to stay aggressive. That's our game. And it worked, so we're going to keep doing it. There you guys go. Bay Area Breakers, they have won their first match this morning. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Everything MLP. MLP Mesa is brought to you by Aura Organic. Fuel your lifestyle with Aura, the cleanest, most powerful plant-based supplements. Knock around sunglasses, quality shades that won't break the bank. Pro XR Performance, innovation you can handle. Skechers, experience comfort on the court with Skechers Pickleball. Margaritaville, escape to your personal paradise. Stay, play, live, and dine in Margaritaville. Michelob Ultra, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. I said, Saturday, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, yeah. So if he wants the end boy, Water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. <laughs> We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. ProXR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. ProXR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he doesn't, so you're not going to be, you're going to relax. Yes. But then the thing about, the thing about Christian, he, he like, he's 
unpredictable. So, you, so I, I am expecting, like, I, I missed a couple dings because I'm thinking he's speeding up, which usually he is, but.
Welcome back to the MLP Mesa 5 Margaritaville. Next up, it's the Arizona Drive versus the Atlanta Bouncers. They are in group number C, or group letter C. <laughs> and what number <laughs> letters? I mean, why not? One, two, three. Uh, Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. Cameron Blackwood also on the sidelines. As you take a look now at our groups, we have group A, B, and C. We just saw a very fantastic battle between the Bay Area Breakers and Columbus Pickleball Club. But now it's time to head on over. Over. It's the Atlanta Bouncers facing off against the Arizona Drive. Adam, give me a little bit of a breakdown. We see a few names out there we recognize and know very well with these two teams. Yes, and it is the complete definition of what we were talking about earlier with, with veterans and basically legends of the game. Uh, Christine McGrath with a new last name, Trifunovich, and then Sarah Ansbury. They've both been around for the beginning of the game. And of course, with our solid veterans, we have some, some more unknown, very talented players throughout these two um, uh, rosters. So uh, the person that I am really looking forward to check out today is Andreas Seelstrom. New to the game, he's a decently large human being at 6'9", six, <laughs> at six, and he is a former ATP doubles player with a, with a high ranking of 57 on the ATP. So he's a little bit older at 41, and I believe he's still trying to figure out some of the soft stuff with the game, but he has some electric and spin and power coming off his paddle. I can't wait to see him play this match. Well, and he's got great personality too. We saw him yesterday out on the practice courts getting some uh, matches in, some practice matches in. He definitely brings the power and the pace. So for the Arizona Drive, you mentioned Sarah Burr, Sarah Ansbury. It's Team Sarah, Sarah Squared. And then we have Wes Burroughs as well as Andreas Silstrom. Uh, for the Atlanta Bouncers, it's it's going to be Brooke Buckner, Christine Trifunovic, uh, otherwise known as Christine McGrath, Hunter Johnson, and Ben Newell. Um, I'm looking at that men's team going, ooh, that's a dangerous one. It is, and Hunter likes that left side. He's really been coming to his own these last six months or so. And Ben Newell, uh, I would say he's more of a part-time player, but electric. He actually filled in for me for the first match last season in MLP when I kind of, when my calf kind of exploded, Cameron. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you get to 40. Uh, things start exploding, but he filled in adder admirably. And um, yeah, I'm expecting some big firepower, a lot of third shot drives and poaching from Hunter Johnson and Ben Newell. So third, you said third shot drives? Oh yes, lots oh, of those. Yeah. And, and I would I would consider Ben, ben, ben Newell uh, one of the best uh, poachers in the game. Oh. Arizona local Larry Fitzgerald in the house in the house a decent career at the <laughs> wide receiver wide receiver position just uh, an absolute athlete uh, loved watching that guy play um, glad he came out to check it out yeah, Larry Fitzgerald the Arizona Cardinal for years and years yeah is, is 17,492 receiving yards is that good Cameron <laughs> You're, you're stealing my numbers right now, dude. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, man. He's 11-time Pro Bowler, of course. One-time All-Pro. He was the 2016 Walter Payton Man of the Year as well, one of the most prestigious awards in the NFL. And he was also a Hall of Famer for the 2010s team. Rock the my number, the number 11. I guess I rocked his more, more so. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, we're now into the way of women's doubles. Out of Group C, the bouncers, as well as the drive. Yeah. There's the lefty Burr trying to step in and cover. And of course, uh, Atlanta bouncers, uh, Fitzgerald is on the ownership group. Really nice cross court dink from uh, Christine Trifunovich, who has one of the best forehand drops and dinks cross court when she gets in a really good rhythm. That's probably the best part of her game, and I expect her to try to get into that pattern as much as possible. Great. 
Tree Funovich. Look at her Louis last name on the back of her jersey. <laughs> yeah, that was that. the first thing she showed me. She goes, look. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling very comfortable going towards that backhand side of Burr. Yeah, I would actually like to see Sarah Burr mix up the pattern a little bit and not stay totally cross court with Christine. Uh, maybe dink up the line a little bit and get uh, some a few different patterns working for the bouncers. Sarah Burr er, on that counter with the with the lefty forehand just sailed it long. She is out of Runaway Bay, Queensland, Australia. International event here at MLP. <laughs> I mean, we are tired trying to take this uh, sport globally, so. Absolutely, no doubt about it. It's a step in the right direction for sure. Speaking of Australia, Riley Newman uh, learned how to play cricket. <laughs> Found that on social media. Fun fact. <laughs> I'm like, please don't bring that to pickleball. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't want to know what skills you learn to bring over. <laughs> he doesn't need any more skills. He's he got, doesn't. He's got plenty. <laughs> it's a backhand power right now. Shot, I think uh, Christine Trefunovic might have had the around the post there, but couldn't pull the trigger. Uh, I mentioned a large uh, ownership group of the Atla uh, Atlanta Bouncers or Arizona Drive uh, with Larry Fitzgerald. There's also Anheuser Busch as a team ownership here in this match. So the bouncers are with Anheuser-Busch and the Arizona Drive, which makes more sense. There you go, yes. Larry Fitzgerald. It, it does, and I was going to correct myself, but you beat me to it. Thanks so much for that, Cameron. <laughs> I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> also, part of that is uh, Devin Booker, Dirk Bentley, country music star, Michael Phelps. You might know him yeah. uh, from his days in the pool. Doug Hirsch, the list goes on and on. I mean, it's, I mean that's a ridiculous, not only amount of people, but I mean, these are high-end people in what they do. It's, it's amazing. Michael Phelps, Devin Booker, good stuff. Yeah, a good, a good look from uh, Brooke Buckner, a little overextended on the Ernie attempt, but I, I like the idea. giving them much to work with, but Ansbury finds exactly the moment to attack. Yes, and great job. Nice two-shot combination from Ansbury. And I would look for Ansbury to really be aggressive in the middle because Christine uh, Trifunovic has trouble changing direction sometimes and loves to go with that cross-court ball. Yes. So if Ansbury knows that Trifunovic doesn't feel comfortable going behind her, it kind of gives her free reign in the middle of the court. Looks like we have a hydration break. <laughs> Hot out here. So seven apiece. <laughs> I'm not sure who took the first hydration break here. <laughs> We've got Tree Funovich as well as Ansbury. Also fun to note, Tree Funovich also a new mom as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. she's now back out on the court. Her little one sitting courtside. She's More like sleeping courtside. Yeah, she's a, she's a new <laughs> mom and an old mom. So she's got three total kids. That is true. Uh -huh. there you go. I wouldn't say old, I'd say experienced. <laughs> I like that. I like that. She's I'm giving you some lessons up yeah. here in the booth, buddy. <laughs> a soon to be dad, you're gonna need that. <laughs> I need I need anything I can get, thank you. Up the line. 
side. Nice change of direction from Tree Funovich. Yeah, a little bit of everything from her on that point with two dinks behind Sarah Ansbury, several crisp cross court dinks, and a very nice backhand put away to end it. Great combination. Keeping things close, just a one point game. Good reach there from Ansbury. Yeah, nice job sliding over to the middle, knowing that her partner was transitioning forward. And she got that, that forehand paw out there and put it right up the middle for a winner. Yeah! Nice close out, the two-hand backhand, Trifonovic. Yeah, nice little mid-pace attack set up from Buckner and uh, Trifunovic just sliding over to her left for the two-handed backhand finish. Patience comes at a premium now. Yeah, nice patience from the ladies. The, the bouncers actually got pushed all the way back to the baseline and made it back to the kitchen. Uh, excellent job of, uh, you know, scrambling, turning that defense, getting back up to an offensive position. Yes. Yeah, slight overextension from Sarah Ansbury. It's okay, I, I don't mind it at all. It's gonna happen sometimes when you're being aggressive in the middle. So 10 to 11 right now, it seems like on each of these change events, it's been just a one point game. I feel like even through the first match we had here on championship court, even now. So it's really about the dust settling and finding a little bit of, I don't know, a different strategy going to the second half of these games. Yeah, and I think I think we had two, two matches get to 14-9 and those leads shrunk. So I'm not yeah. sure we've had more than three or four points of real separation from any of these matches so far, so. No, and it's, it's interesting. Interesting too, because you have mentioned the 14-9 point. It feels like that's the other the score that we see time and time again. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. there's another shift that takes place. So it's at this change where all of a sudden adjustments are made, and then it's the counter adjustments. Yes, it's all the it, big game of chess right now. I mean, it's just so. It, these are just such pressure points. Everything, it, everything's so close. You can feel like you're in a commanding lead, and then the snap of your fingers, it's all tied up. Uh, just to see these players react to the big spots and the pressure moments. That's what MLP is all about. Thank you. So who will find success under the pressure here on championship court? 11 to 10. Buckner will have the serve. Nice job sliding a little bit more middle, trying to find that forehand. Right, and then Burr was able to get it to the forehand of Trifunovic, who yeah. really loves that two-handed backhand counter. So great spot from Burr. on the board. <laughs> no, it was an amazing point, and they just couldn't quite get out of the midcourt. Uh, great digs right at their right at their feet, but great sustained pressure uh, from the bouncers. That's it. Uh, and another good ball. Yeah, good stick volley from Burr, and then Ansbury able to finish. Love watching the footwork in terms of defensive play. Just how steady these women are, slowing their feet. Let's take nice and balanced. Yep, yep. Let's go, Christine. So just, good. just missed, but a nice right deep right crisp right. volley from Trifunovic, making it tough on Burr. That's it. Come yeah, on. 
quite a few points here, Cameron, with one team at the kitchen and one not quite being able to get there. So I know that mid-court area or back of the court is tough, but they got to find a way to get forward. from the net, but you mentioned that the Arizona Drive finally found themselves up at the kitchen line. It took about four or five balls to get there. Yeah, a little bad luck on that one. Didn't quite commit to that one-handed speed up, Sarah Burr. There we go. Uh, two tough ones there for the drive. Uh, one at Burr, one at Ansbury. Tough let court adjustments. Yeah, that's the, that's the spot uh, for Trifunovic for sure. Really whipping through that two-handed backhand. Loves to hit it cross court and she did so beautifully right there. So 16 to 13 Buckner and Trifunovic on top with a three-point advantage. They're gonna talk to their team as well as Ansbury and Burr right now. You see Sealstrom and Wesley Burrows. They'll be up next in terms of men's doubles. We've also got action and happening just about everywhere you look <laughs> here at the Legacy Sports Complex. Actually, your, your wife's on court behind us. I see that, and it looks like she's in a bit of a dicey situation at 18-20, but that's gonna help. Sierra Gaetan Leach with a nice overhead. But yeah, as we saw in the previous match, Cameron, I'm not seeing a designated coach. So it looks like the players are conversing among themselves uh, on this timeout. And we saw it earlier in our previous match where we had two established coaches. All the teams are a little bit different in that regard. So 16 to 13, look, welcome to our lovely position because we've got one heck of a shot up here too. <laughs> I, was, I was taking notes, I was looking professional for that shot. <laughs> uh, I feel like we're gonna call this the bird's nest because yeah. we're, we're higher than anybody here at championship court. It's true. We've got a great view. Might have been also the chilliest view. <laughs> but now we're getting a nice little suntan. Somebody find Adam Stone some uh, sunscreen for his earlobes. <laughs> That's right. And the same shot right there from Burr. She's having success. The cross court speed up, I feel like has been a new thing in pickleball just within the last year, finding the location there. should also say this, the cross court, cross body speed up. Yes, and the thing <laughs> is, is with the new paddle technology, even though you're giving your opponent a little more time, you can get so much pace and spin on the ball that is a little bit more uh, of an option to go cross court. Bit of a hands battle now. And finds the right hip. Big come on from Sarah Ansbury, and you're exactly right. You don't always have to go to that dominant right shoulder. You can go at the hip as well, and it kind of forces your opponent into that scoop shot, which is very difficult to execute. Again. And that one, I think, may have been about three inches too high for Sarah Ansbury. She got a little vertical on this one, but didn't quite hit the right part of a battle. She was elevating her grunts, too. How, how could she miss <laughs> it with each grunt a little bit more? <laughs> And that was the same pattern she was looking for. Yeah, she, uh, Burr was there in the middle. So, uh, but, but you have to give Trifonovic some credit because she was much more ready for that forehand counter that time. And that is a great team from Burr right there. Yeah, I would probably say, not knocking her at all, but Buckner has probably hit the fewest balls so far in this yeah. match. Oh, 
Nice try. You're and a good ball. leave. Yeah, Here good go. leave and a good look. She player. obviously needed to be right aggressive in. with that forehand in the middle, but sailed it long and a nice let go uh, from Arizona. on that one that caused oh, some problems. Yeah, tough luck. A little bit of confusion in the middle these last couple minutes. Uh, as you can see, Ansbury taking much more court than Buckner. Buckner's kind of letting Trifunovich do her thing over there, and I think that's a good strategy right now. Some slight overextension from Ansbury. Uh, we'll see if they can get it sorted out. It's hard when you feel like you want to try and get more and more involved, and partner seeing 90% of the ball. There is game number one for the Atlanta Bouncers, picking up the victory 21 to 17. So Buckner and Trifunovich doing a solid job getting their team on the board first. Yeah, I think solid was the perfect word to describe that performance. Uh, nothing crazy, no uh, you know left side player just trying to get in there at any, any moment. It was just solid cross court dinking and then picking their spots when they had them. Very, very composed and collected win uh, from those two. Great composure from Trifonovich as well as Buckner. They're now alongside Cameron Blackwood, the third member of our crew. What a great win for you guys. This is your first time to MLP. We're so happy to have you. How does the mind shift change from playing on the PPA tour and coming to the team aspect of MLP? Yeah, I think, I mean, the rally scoring means every point matters, um, but the PPA and how high level that is really sets you up to focus on every point. Um, I'm excited to be here. You guys seem to have some chemistry out there moving seamlessly, but how many weeks did you have to train before you stepped on the court this morning? Um, yesterday was our first practice, but Brooke is very solid. It's an awesome player. <laughs> so yeah, lots of fun. <laughs> there you guys have it. They're up 1-0. We're going to head into men's doubles right after this. Make sure you guys stay tuned. gonna do next I'll say I'm going At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. Six carbs and 95 calories. Take a look out towards our grandstand where there's another epic battle men's battle now underway. We've got Greg Dow, Rob Nunnery against Brandon French and Chuck Taylor. Chucky e. T. Meanwhile, championship court. 
men are now getting underway. Six foot nine. That's Seelstrom on the right side right now, standing in the sunbeam. Wesley Burroughs, a fantastic tennis player out of Thousand Oaks, now on the pickleball court. He's good buddies with Sam Query. Played a couple. Played uh, Sam's first tournament a couple weeks ago. Love to see that. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, Cameron. Of course, I'm about to say this, so we'll see some extended dink rallies. But I'm expecting a lot of offensive fireworks from this matchup. Oh, there he is, right there on screen, checking out his buddy play. Sam Query, of course, great ATP pro tennis player. I believe he made it. Semi-finals, Wimbledon 2017. Correct me if I'm wrong there. I but I'm pretty sure I'm, I, I think I'm right on that. <laughs> I, and I believe he got to number 11 in the world at the height of his yep. powers, which is not too shabby, Cameron. So he's now found his way to the pickleball court. There's a look at Ben Newell. He's playing alongside Hunter Johnson, also a pro tennis player. Ben Newell, great calves. Some of the best calves in the game, I'll tell you that right now. Hey, that's important. That's critical as you look at the head-to-head -head between these two teams. Win probability a bit more lopsided here. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a little off just because of the sample size of Seelstrom. He's only played a couple tournaments. Uh, Johnson's been playing a lot. Newell, part-time player, but been around for a couple years. So I think that that is a, a little bit off just because of the sample size, but who knows? We'll see. Let's see if we can adjust that sample size now as he is out on the court. Yeah, so Newell is now the lefty who will get things started. Yeah, and I, I like this matchup with Burroughs on the left and Sealstrom on the right, really using that reach to speed up a lot of forehands is what I expect. <laughs> oh, that's one way to start. With a woo, <laughs> little Ric Flair there from Hunter Johnson. By the way, Burroughs, if you think you're coming middle, you better watch out for that line too. <laughs> A little bit of payback with some net assistance, but as we see, two points, two third shot drives. Watch out, that's called a reach. Yeah, I got to play <laughs> my first game against Seelstrom and some rec play yesterday. Man, ball comes off his paddle special. I imagine it just be insanely frustrating because the ball will never bounce. Yeah, yeah. Good luck dropping. Yeah, every good luck. Good luck dropping. To him. <laughs> you don't have a chance. So it's interesting too because you talk about six foot nine, but usually the arm span is even longer than that. Oh yes. Maybe Cameron can ask that post game. <laughs> well, that was our first drop of the match. Four out of five third shot drives. And just couldn't come up with the fifth is Ben Newell. And that is very clean right there from Seelstrom. Just painting the line, not too much pace either. Exactly. And off little, the bounce. A little slight feathery touch from the big man there. He, he, he doesn't have to smack everyone as hard as he can. That was can that was beautifully controlled from Seelstrom. He's also got a big, big serve. Yes, and it's it's not just pace or spin. It's the combination of both. Almost somehow got it <laughs> past Zilstrom, but uh, three inches wide on the drive from Hunter Johnson. And a miss serve from Burroughs. First match from the boys. Got to get some kinks out. Seelstrom, wow. He's got power and he's got some touch as well. Uh, that was the most patient point of the match so far. Uh, net aided winner for Seelstrom. Not 
tough break. Almost, almost too juicy for West Burroughs, who uh, not only with the drive, but a very, very good athletic poacher. Back-to-back -back drives from Newell, but the opposite direction, the pressure is added. Sealstrom with that. It's not just the forehand side either that he can flip on and, and attack that backhand right there. Beautiful execution. shot from Newell. Yeah, very athletic. One of the best movers on tour. So uh, to see him kind of hop the corner of the kitchen with an athletic play, not surprising at all. Great dip, great top spin on the Hunter Johnson drive, catching uh, West Burroughs on the right hip. Flying in is Newell, but backed up again. Great play from Sealstrom, able to keep Ben Newell. I mean, that ball was three inches inside the baseline. Not much Ben can do with that ball. <laughs> I shouldn't have mentioned the serve. Hey, it happens. It happens. All good. <laughs> Commentator curse. But it's real. <laughs> it's funny. Yesterday we were standing there while he was practicing. He goes, looks at us and goes, next ball is going to be an ace. And I think was wicked. He wasn't kidding. West doing a nice job keeping those very, very shallow. Yes, definitely. A little itchy trigger finger from Hunter Johnson on that last ball with the two-handed backhand. To this point, Sealstrom's done a pretty nice job kind of protecting his body. Mm -hmm. You'd imagine with someone that size that kind of taking some body shots is going to be normal practice for them. Nine apiece. Yeah, definitely, Cameron. There's advantages and disadvantages yeah. to, to being tall. So it's not it's not all gravy train when when you're six nine. You gotta you gotta protect your body, and with those long levers, it's not easy. Yeah, and try to touch your toes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, AKA exactly. short hop, right? <laughs> There's a nice shot at the Frommuth booth. You get to see all the fun stuff taking place. Uh -huh. You need to hear, I think that might be the place you could go. Oh, we got Deco Bar right there for the lotto. Oh, AJ Kohler, we got all the guys. And now back on a championship court, Cameron Blackwood's in the huddle. I'm curious if she's going to start coaching up some people. I don't see why not. I don't see. <laughs> she's getting her ear, Cameron. She's got a good mind for the game. Get out there and give some tips, Cameron. Multitasking. Uh, there's a look out at the Grandstand Mountains in the backdrop. Just a beautiful setting for the first event in 2023 on a Major League Pickleball Tour. And hey, it's the... Uh, and change here, 11-9. Shocker. Shocker. Yeah. Mm, There's going to be a question. It w I didn't see it terribly cleanly, but it looked just back to me. <laughs> and Ansbury, this is the fun one. So here's a look at the shot right there. But uh, Ansbury immediately goes, yeah, nope. <laughs> nope. We're not going to challenge this one. Uh, please walk away. Ooh. I don't know. Look, wait for it. Right there. What do you think? Close. That's so close. Well, obviously, you think everything's in. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. All right. Two quick points for Atlanta, and we're tied up. Nice stick volley and a good high backhand put away from Burroughs. Not, not an easy shot. High to the forehand, sure, but to create that kind of pace with a one-handed high backhand, nice job. Uh-oh. Oh, he was calling that out of bounds, Sealstrom, so that's why stop play. So we will have a challenge on this ball on the far sideline. Yeah, I will have to say that 
Atlanta looked right from the get-go. As soon as that ball landed, they were they were very much questioning that call, and they decided to pull the trigger on the challenge. Oh yeah, yeah, that's way in, way in. I mean, we were talking about some of the disadvantages of being six foot nine. You're <laughs> further away from the call, <laughs> and, and right? That, yeah, and that is one of the tougher calls, looking straight down, down on the it ball. Is really so hard. Uh, yeah, definitely difficult. I know I've missed a couple in my day, so. The nicest guy in pickleball even misses one or two. That's me? That's you. Oh, thanks, Cameron. Appreciate that. <laughs> My vote for nicest guy in pickleball is Rob Davidson. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so, yes, I believe that this will be a successful challenge for the Atlanta bouncers. And as we mentioned before, when you have a successful challenge, you get to do get to keep your challenge and use it later in the match, which is very, very important. And that's why you see some teams kind of questioning at the beginning of a match whether they should challenge or not, because if they're incorrect early on, they're going to be in trouble. So I have a feeling this is going to go the opposite direction. So the challenge will go in favor of the bouncers. We got the hype lady in full force right now. We've got Johnson throwing his paddle on the ground. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think they're having a noise off. Is that what it is? Yes. A shout off? What do you call that? I mean, I've worked in sports for years, and I don't even know what you call that. No, I think that I think you said it perfectly. <laughs> was a, a yell shout, a shout off, off? Of, of some sort. We had a dance off earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't think that's the first one either. The hype lady, she's gonna get some people dancing. Organized that's, that's part chaos of the deal. right there, and I'm loving it here on championship court. It's important, it's very important. And I'll tell you right now, if you think, so that is exact overturned call, it was in. And I'll tell you right now, if you think crowd energy doesn't leak onto the court and affect the play of the players, you're crazy. Energy is huge. The players feed off of it. Just, just rip it, Hunter. You know you wanted to. Cardinal sent a pickleball. We talk about it all the time. Just let it fly. Can't change your mind. I see Burroughs is letting it fly now. Three drops. recovery by the drive right there. They were primarily playing defense this entire rally. Yeah, that's a great job and a great scramble from the drive, able to get back forward after four or five drop attempts from West Burroughs. <laughs> he thought about it. Yep, and that's the spot. You gotta find the feed of the big man. And uh, that's one of the issues also with being tall. Great reach, but it's a long way to go for that paddle to drop down at your feet. Decent look from Hunter Johnson. Wouldn't mind seeing him play the middle of the court a little bit more uh, on the drives, use the athleticism of his partner to pick a couple balls off. Oh, wow. See, that's what I think one of the hardest skills, going head up and letting that thing go. Absolutely. I mean, you saw Especially the, inside you, out. You saw the pace that, that Westboro's hit that with. For, for Newell to pull that paddle back is really, really high level. Your reaction time is, what, less than four-tenths of a second? From kitchen to kitchen? There's not a lot. I think it's about what we're less than a baseball player from pitcher to bat. Yeah, right, and the thing is, is you can only hit a pickleball around 60 miles per hour or so, but you're so close. You're 14 you're feet so, away. And you're talking about reach, probably more like, 10, like 9 or 10 feet, right. When you got the big paw of uh, Andres Silstrom there, you know, I mean, come on. That, I mean, the reaction speed and like the fast twitch, uh, uh, you know, explosion of some of these athletes is, is incredible. 
All I'm saying is that when you're standing on the kitchen line, you got somebody whining up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got to have some, uh, I don't know, ice water in your veins. Right. Not be scared because that ball hurts too. Yeah. It does not feel good. And and to to have to have to be loaded up and know it's coming to be able to counter that ball and let it go to do both of those things. Just not a lot of people have both of those skill sets. So uh, a little mini run here from the drive uh, after a tied up game to to take that three point lead. And I think Cameron Blackwood has been listening to the huddles. What you got? Yeah, exactly what you guys were saying, that the feet is exactly where the bouncers are going to go with these two guys. They know they have a lot of length up there, but they're having issues with those balls at their feet. And it doesn't need to be powerful. It just needs to be well placed. So that's what they're looking to do on this changeover is just place the ball well at the feet and see if they can't get back into this. Great work from Cameron Blackwood picking up the scouting report. It is important to note that I believe 2020 is our score out on the grandstand right now as Dallas leads 1-0. We focus back in here on championship court. Nice uh, neutralization by Sealstrom and a good patient point from all four players, uh, resulting in a Hunter Johnson missed dink. I like that dink up the line from Sealstrom. That thing's got to be absolutely perfect. It was well placed. Yeah, and then a uh, nice long patient point followed up by a quick uh, return error from Newell and a fairly commanding lead for the drive. 19-14. is all over it. Yeah, that was a, a little bit of sexy time there. You know, I mean, to just, I mean, he he, he started the hop of the kitchen before that Silstrom even struck the ball. That's a great read from Hunter. You said it, not me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There's the length and the control to be at full extension and so much closer to your opponents and keep that ball in when they can't hit it. That's just a great feathery touch from the big man. Game point, Sealstrom and Burroughs. And that spells trouble. Is that ball out of bounds? Wes is thinking maybe it hit Ben Newell. What's what's happening, Cameron? Well, I believe they're wondering if <laughs> if they're going to have to use a challenge here. Oh wow! I thought Wes was like tapping paddles, and then man, wow, I know that, that was interesting. I would love some clarification. Um, and he's just going to go with the side out instead. Yeah, I think I think Wes just it was too juicy. It's just sitting up there so nice for him. Lost his focus for a second. I don't believe that. And back, back as, a remember, as, a, as a reminder to everyone, even here in Championship Court, it is the freeze. <laughs> so there was a lot of celebration, but uh, it is now the game. That? There it is. So 21 to 16, the Arizona Drive Burroughs and Sealstrom. Sealstrom, six foot nine frame. You better watch out. He's putting people on notice. So Atlanta trails now. or excuse me, now one to one, as Arizona Drive have knotted things up. Sealstrom and Burroughs down with Cameron Blackwood. Andres, you were the only one on this court right now that has not been on the MLP stage just yet, but how did you prepare mentally and physically before you stepped on the court? Uh, I, I mean, I took it like a normal any tournament, you know, like you prepare the same for any, for any tournament, so I didn't really do anything in particular, I just, I'm happy to play in a team again because it's a lot of fun. I miss that from my college days and, you know, I hope we can get it done today. That would be a lot of fun. 
And does your strategy change at all whenever you're having two forehands in the middle? Thank you. Yeah, I'm really not used to it. I don't play with a lot of lefties, so it's a little it's a little strange for sure playing against it. Just have to change where you're where you're going. Right hip is left hip now, so it's all good. You guys got it done. There you have it. We're now tied up one to one. We're heading into mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere. hard to find supplements that work. No thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Oh my good lord, what a feeling All of this joy I've been stealing We all need someone Someone that can make us believe Make us believe So call me a man on a mission I'm guilty by my own admission Locked up but I break free No change could ever take me Can't stop, won't stop, don't stop now Mixed doubles is up next here on championship court. Looks like we've got Ben Newell alongside Brooke Buckner getting warmed up. And Who will they face off against, I guess, is the next question. Exactly, in a big conversation from the drive. All four players huddled up. Looks like they have a decision, Cameron. So that's one of the interesting things. Once you get to that coin flip, you either get to choose to serve, receive, or the side, or you get to choose to be home or away. Each one comes with its own advantage. Most teams choosing between the home or away, because that dictates if you get to respond to the mixed doubles matchup if you're the home team. If you're the away team, it is the opposite. You have to then pick first in mixed doubles, and then you get to respond in the dream breaker. Exactly. Most teams, it seems like, want to be able to respond in mix. They're like, hey, we, we want to get this thing done before we ever get to, to the dream breaker. Exactly right. And that's for sure correct, because you might not even make it to the dream breaker. So you, you were going to respond in mixed every single time. Here's a look at Sarah Gansbury. Of course, from Hilton Head. Legend of the game, been around forever. Uh, runs the Palmetto Dunes Pickleball Center in Hilton Head Which and does a great beautiful. job. beautiful. Oh, yes, it is. It is. Oh, fantastic location. I was out there, I think, a little over a year, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. I can't even count at this point in terms of pickleball, but that place is gorgeous. It is. I mean, it's... I used to do family vacations there pre-pickleball, now it has pickleball. So, I mean, it's got it's got it all. It really does. <laughs> so it looks like you're gonna have Ansbury and Burroughs. Do you like this matchup? Is that what you what you would have chosen? Um, yeah, the thing is, is it's super tough because Sealstrom does not have really any mixed results under his belt. He's only played uh, uh, men's doubles. He's out of West Palm Beach, very close to Joey Farias. So they've played a couple tournaments together. So in that, the fact that he's such a wild card, I can't really say if this is a great matchup or not because I don't know what Sealstrom's gonna give us on the mixed court. 
And again, it's important to remember as we head to mix is Ansbury starts us off so strong that the score is now one to one in terms of games played. That's right, sneaky Ernie. And sneaky, sneaky. Veteran, she's a veteran. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. See ya. I will have to say the lob attempt from that position was a little interesting, <laughs> but. Good analysis. <laughs> yeah, deep, <laughs> deep analysis there. <laughs> yeah, tough break. And you see Ben Newell really favoring the drives. And it's not just on the third shots necessarily. No. He will pull triggers on fifth shots and seventh shots as well. One of the few players that will do so. I'm doing the same thing as Burroughs. He hurt, hit his third and fifth with some pace. So what makes you feel so comfortable to do that? I feel like, you know, you see people, it's always drive the third, drop the fifth. What right. makes you feel comfortable well, enough to do third and fifth? Well, it could be you love your drive, or it could be maybe you're not as comfortable with those drop Drops. shots. So uh, it could be it could be a variety of things, and I think it might be a combination of both from Newell, okay. uh, because his his lefty drive is fantastic, but you can't fall too in love of love with it, especially when you're playing quality opponents. So good. What a snag right there from Newell. Yeah, that's an amazing poach from Ben Newell. I said he's one of the best movers in the game. The <laughs> to, location of that. To pull that cross court on the off of the lefty forehand, ridiculous. There we go, Brooke! Yeah, really good eye from Brooke Buckner who counters the initial speed up from Ansbury and then pulls the alle and uh, gets out of the way for that second speed up. Yep, there we go. Yeah, we are very far away from that ball, but it did look like it landed in the green. Like Burroughs agrees. 5-3 now. Oh. And some miscommunication oh. there. Some <laughs> wicked defense, though. Brooke Buckner on, dropping on, her hips on. nearly all the way to the ground. I would look to return to Ben Newell because he's so good at poaching, and Buckner's drive is pretty solid. That's Just it. keep, keep that man keep back. Him back. Keep exactly. him back, exactly. And, and but his drive is so dangerous, too. They were having some issues with that. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll take my chances in this situation because I believe Brooks' drive is very good. Yeah, that's very fair. Plus, when you got the guys head to head, it's nice that you got Burroughs covering the line there, too. Oh, for sure. And we've also seen Newell go to that drive more frequently. So if you keep him back, he might not make it forward. That's fair. The there we go, footfall man. from Sarah Ansbury, but again, they still go. Come on. Right, and he called left foot, so that means it was on the takeoff. It was her landing was clean, but she took off uh, from the kitchen. Let it go. Low. Wow! Ooh, you talked about the drive of Brooke Buckner. Love that it. thing was like yeah. lightning. That was disgusting. In Dude. a good way. That was a compliment. Yes. <laughs> Look, she's got a smile on her face. Look at her. <laughs> Do it again, do it again. Oh man, that was a great return though, back in the her up. I mean, that was, that was ridiculous. Right up the middle, painting the line. I think that was a reasonable spot from Ben Newell, maybe some slight extension, but I, I like him picking his spots there, and he was taking that at Sarah Ansbury, who was a little bit off the kitchen line. Yeah, Love it there from Buckner, her ability to change that, going cross court. Yeah, and Burroughs, the look on his face was just kind of like, really? Well, and the <laughs> recoil there, yeah. so quick. Yes. Nice compact swing there from Buckner. <laughs> My favorite shots. What's that? It is a one-handed backhanded drive. I don't know what. I just think it's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I well, think it looks so wicked. Well, Ben's looked pretty good on they that. They look point, really good. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need a forehand. His footwork's so good. He's mostly taking forehands, but he'll let it fly on the backhand side as well. 
11 to 6 now. Yeah, I would actually look for I would actually look for Ansbury to be fine to dink cross court to Ben Newell, who doesn't really love his backhand dink. It seems like she's kind of forcing the ball to Buckner, and I'd kind of like to see her mix it around a little bit and even target that that backhand uh, dink of Newell. She might get a few errors, and it'll keep him out of the middle as well. Julian Arnold and Thomas Wilson also sitting courtside. Of course, they're in our premier level. So good, Brooke. So today is just a prep day for them. Yeah, great drive again from Brooke Buckner and kind of feeling the footsteps of Newell coming to the middle forced a, a wide volley from Burroughs. She was off the kitchen. Was, yeah. He kind of baited her a little bit with that one. But you see Brooke Buckner going behind to the West Burroughs backhand with soft shots. I like that. There we go, Brooke! Yeah, it's it's a neat pattern. yeah, for sure. And the thing is, both male players' forehands are explosive, but neither one is terribly comfortable creating from the backhand side. Nice put away. Newell breaking cross court, looking for the angle, and rightfully so in that defensive position, but Burroughs finding the middle. find the middle as Buckner works around the corner but Six. and the thing is is there was a gap but it closed quickly really with, quick. with the foot speed of Newell yeah. <laughs> yeah. usually the uh, the, the head high reset is, is not the best strategy there, but sometimes when you get stuck in the middle of the court, it just happens. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Nice job by Ansbury finding the backhand of Newell, who's hawking in the middle. We had 14-9, by the way. Again, every every time it, every time it's been 14-9-2, the other team has, has closed the gap. See if the the drive can do the yes, same. Yes, Brooke. So, so far, good. that's a good look. Make it. Ryer, Ryer. Oh, excuse me. The opposite direction. So 15. Now 15-10. Yeah, a little funky side spin off the paddle from Newell. Just just got Burroughs a little too extended. And I'll tell you what, that Brooke Buckner uh, two-handed backhand drive is pretty legit. Without a doubt, it's a 16 to 10. The driver going to take a second here to have a timeout. Trying to adjust Ansbury right now, having quite the conversation with Burroughs. Yes. And uh, yeah, the right time for a timeout. It's, uh, you know, we're getting to the latter stages of this mixed match and you only get one, but you can't take it with you. So got to stop the momentum somehow. Well, and you have to imagine too right now, scores tied one apiece. Do you want to add pressure to the next team up or take it away? That's the real question. Yeah. So right now with the Arizona drive, yeah, As a reminder, you got Sealstrom coming up next, who hasn't played much mixed. I'm not curious sure. to see if he plays the left. I'm not sure if he if he needs a partner. That's fair. <laughs> Just put him out there. <laughs> One v two. Hey, well, maybe that's the play. Maybe it is the play. We'll be playing alongside Burr. Oh, 
you had it, Brookie. Yeah, you heard Hunter Johnson love saying it, you had it. it. I like the move from Brooke. Probably just a little bit too big of a swing as she was in a great offensive position. Nice scoop. Shot again by Brooke Buckner. And I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, she did a nice job going to the Newell backhand on the dink, and she went with the speed up at Buck Buckner on the next ball, but just stick to that spot a couple times. What a snag. Oh! but can't recover. Yeah, and that's that's a great job of, of, you know, court awareness from Buckner, knowing that Newell was in the full poach position to slide in behind him and pick up that ball. Uh, couldn't get the point, but I like it. Oh, no freaking way. And that's one of my least favorite things in pickleball. Yeah, it's, it's just good strategy. Oh, I'm lucky. Yeah. I'm lucky. <laughs> Those still hurt, too, like when they pop up and they'll hit you right in the eyeball. You're like, what am I supposed to do? That's never happened to me before. Really? Not off a drive? Uh, no. Well, your head has to be above the height of the net, though. <laughs> Zinger. <laughs> Newell was on the move. He had his paddle on the ball. Very nice, and that was the, at the kitchen line backhand with a little pop-up right. from Newell. He almost dug himself out of that hole, but I would like to see the drive kind of pick on that spot a little bit more. Yeah, Brooke! Oh, the third shot lob from Ansbury. Wait. That's it. Looks like West starting to get a little more assertive here. And that was a great job of him recognizing the patterns of Buckner and how she likes to counter with the backhand cross court. Yep. So he sped up out of it and broke back to his side. Great job by Burroughs. That's a great call by you. Nice recognition. That's the way. Uh oh, here they come. A little bit of pressure. Who's gonna respond? The ball was long. It's 17-18. Come on, right here, AC. Come on, AC. Oh my goodness. Does it stay? No, that ball is well wide. It's 19-17. However, the Arizona Drive put themselves in a very good position. Reminder: once we get to that 20-point mark. There is the freeze. That ball didn't even bounce. Yeah, that was a funky. Uh, you never know if it's the ball or possible little dead spot on the court. You never know, but that something wasn't right with that bounce, no question. It's game point. Lofted and lofted even further out of bounds. The Atlanta bouncers have picked up the first mixed doubles matchup. Yeah, great match, just a little too late from the Arizona drive. I think they figured a couple things out, but bouncers getting to 21 first. Well played. So the bouncers have yet to win the match, but they are up by one, and now they're standing courtside with Cameron. Ben, talk to me about the strategy of putting this team out first in the mixed doubles. You know, uh, Brooke was so gracious to play left side all week. So I'm a lefty, it throws a wrench in the mix. So she played left side for us to give us a chance, and that's why we went with it. And speaking of the left side, you did play left side in the women's. So you came over here and played left side. Just talk to me about the strategy change going from women's to mixed. Yeah, I think it's just a little bit of a mental switch. Um, I trust Christine and Ben so much, but obviously with the men, Ben takes the middle a little bit more. So I just adjust accordingly, and I have two good partners, so it's good. Came out on top. We're heading into the next mixed doubles. We'll be right back. Match point. It's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you going to do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. Just not my mouth. 
2.6 carbs and 95 calories. Our pickleball paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. It does take two to uh, make a thing go right, as it does here on the pickleball court. Oh wow, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I've definitely been entertained, that's for sure. Definitely been entertained, and means that we are about to be entertained with the second mixed doubles matchup. Again, the bouncers are up by one right now. So now we've got Trifunovic as well as Johnson, so they will be paired together, and Sealstrom and Burr now paired together. We're curious to see how many of those Sealstrom drives are going to be coming at Trifunovic. Uh, yes, I know, probably several, I would imagine. And he's definitely going to be playing the left with that lefty Sarah Burr. Uh, if, if there was a more established left side woman, I'm not exactly sure what would happen, but ju just with his reach alone, I know probably lateral movement with that size is not you know, the biggest strength, but man, just so much reach to take take over that kitchen line. I, I, I expect the big man to go for it. We'll see if he will go for it. Now he's warming up his big serve. Yeah, a lot of life to it. And big serve, especially in mixed doubles, can be a big factor. Fellas hitting it just a little bit heavier and kind of creates some situations where you can get stuck in the backcourt and you know that's never good. We always like our percentages up at the kitchen as opposed to deeper in the court. championship court the video board in the backdrop Caitlin Kerr keeping our crowd amped and excited oh now she's throwing out gear you know the fans love the gear <laughs> nice <laughs> nice throw caught that man blinded him <laughs> Trifanovich will serve first. He covered her side nicely on that one. He only took one step as well. While standing on the left sideline. <laughs> And that's going to be tough too. So if he's going to take more and more of those middle and especially trying to drive that ball, they're going to find that backhand side of him immediately on the fifth. Definitely. To me, that's one of the tough plays to have to make. That drive to then backhand volley. Chasing is Johnson. And then K. 
can't get the stab in the middle. It was lower than he anticipated. Great court awareness, though, from Hunter Johnson to get back the movement and athleticism really on point for him to even get that ball back in play. Yeah, it looks like Seelstrom's going to be taking a very, very large percentage of those third shots. And as you mentioned, Cameron, see if that pattern continues with him hitting that backhand on the fifth attempt. And they're finding some open space right now on the backhand side. Yeah, that, so that's basically the situation. If you if you can attack and get the ball to the Trifunovic forehand, go for it. If you cannot, you better play soft because her two-handed backhand counter is legit. What a roll from Trifunovic. the stab yeah big time he's stuff. just waiting yeah it's big time stuff and and we talked about it in the women's match actually how frequently can Trifunovic go behind Silstrom and keep him honest because if she cannot do so he can cover the whole court there's gonna be a question again whether this ball was in or out at the baseline they're gonna challenge it or not I that's think, the question. I think I read Johnson's lift and said it's not even worth the challenge right now. I'm not sure if that's correct, if he's pretty confident it was in, but at 3-3, three, three, I, I, I get there the it thought is. process. It's in, huh? Yeah, it's in. I'm not going to remark on it anymore. You have better eyes than me. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me if that's in or not. Yeah, I think that one's definitely in. But see, I, I understand what Hunter's thinking, but I still think you got to go for it. Points are just so dang valuable. They are. That is very true, especially in this group round. Yeah, great eye from Burr there, who sometimes when you're in the midcourt, it's a little awkward to let some of those balls go as that was about six inches wide from Trifunovic. It's so tough. You can you can see over there the bouncers with, with the spin that Seelstrom gets. There's so much hesitancy to let it go out. They're just so not confident, and I get it. I believe that was the first two-handed backhand drive we've seen from Seelstrom. And again, Trifunovic is actually now just starting to shift even more middle to try and open up that forehand. Mm-hmm. And a crisp ball. Catching Seelstrom on the full stretch. It's hard because you don't want to jam your partner that right. much in the it's middle too to protect your forehand. So what do you? I it's very delicate. It's a fine line, and it's it. There, there's basically it's impossible to be perfect with it. Okay. You're gonna you're gonna have some mistakes in the middle when you're taking that much court. to be absolutely perfect in King Cross Court when you have that reach. Take a look at this kitchen cam. And, and really, it's almost like you shouldn't even dink aggressively because those balls carry too far. It's yeah. like hit those plain vanilla dinks and just hope he doesn't get his big paw in there. He's just trying to try and keep it as shallow as possible. Yeah, that's too good. Um, I believe that was, we'll, we'll, we'll label that 50% skill, 50% fortunate <laughs> there for Hunter Johnson. Either way, I'm, he'll take it. Dave oh. Fleming alongside Megan Fudge. Yeah, Dave Fleming helping out the Dallas Pickleball Club. So that makes a lot of sense that they're chatting. Shieldstrom a little too aggressive, covering that middle coming forward. Great spot from Hunter Johnson. Yeah, you could hear that up here in the crow's nest. Or bird, what are we, the crow's nest or the bird's nest? Uh, whatever you'd like. Either way, Hunter Miss hit that one. He wishes he had it back. <laughs> I'm trying to think of birds in the desert. Hawk? Sure, oh, we'll okay. go with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds way tougher. I'm in. <laughs> oh. Three inches long. I mean, I tell you what, if that would have landed in, he was pretty he was pretty cool about letting that go. If it landed in, it would have been kind of funny. But great eye from Hunter either way. And 
goodbye ball. Yeah, we'll say we'll, we'll give that the night night. <laughs> Night, night, not That's coming the back. That's right, and a great job uh, by Silstrom, two controlled, uh, kind of fourth and sixth shots, and then he put it away cross court. And that was perfect time in the KO of the game from knock around. Yeah, they make a good pair of sunglasses. Oh, S Steve Kuhn, the brainchild of MLP. We got to get a shot of him looking good with the beanie, Steve. I think he's re wearing a Dreamland beanie right now. And why wouldn't he be? It's his dream. I like it though. I think it's a, a good time to go for that inside out lefty drive, especially with the, the big man Sealstrom crashing in. Uh, couldn't convert for Burr, but I, I like the decision. So 10-11 now, change of end. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be a big five or six minutes here to close the match with Sealstrom and Burr looking to extend this match to a dream breaker. I'm everything. <laughs> All right, we got Cameron Blackwood yes. down courtside with some special guests. Yes, we have the owner and the GM here for the Arizona Drive, Doug Hirsch and Larry Fitzgerald. Doug, what was it about MLP that you said I just want to invest? This is exciting stuff. I think this is. Uh, this is the future. It's so inclusive. Every age, every ability. Uh, in 10 minutes, you can be playing and be be pretty good. And obviously, if you want to spend more, devote more time to it, it you, you can get really good. And how exciting! And where do you see pickleball going? Obviously, this is the fastest growing sport in America. But where would you like to see it go here in the future? Uh, I think it's the rage. It, the Olympics is going to be Olympic sport soon. Um, it's changing a lot of people's lives, and uh, it's giving people a reason to get up and do and uh, be com and compete. And it's great exercise without getting on a stairmaster. <laughs> And lastly, we'd like to know, how's your guys' game on the court? We're, we're great partners and we're bitter rivalries. Can't beat me in singles. You can't beat me I own him. I own him. Well, thank you guys. Here we go. We have the GM and the owners of the AGU Drive right now actually cheering them on. So we'll get back to the match. Back to you guys. So the Arizona Drive have some strong GM and ownership. Awesome. Cool. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Lots of support, lots of love for the game of pickleball. Yeah, that's a safe Apparently, statement. Apparently, Larry can't be beat in singles. Decent reach at the kitchen line. <laughs> yeah, great spot from Sarah Burr with a little inside out forehand, the spin moving away from Hunter Johnson. Way to redeem herself after a missed volley on the previous point. Great spot, Sarah. 12, nice, nice fancy footwork from the big man. His Hunter Johnson couldn't come up with it, but excellent reach as we've seen multiple times in this match. luck from Sealstrom stepping around to his left to hit that forehand drive just leaving too big of a gap in the middle of the court of course the net helped the bouncers on that one yeah, big time power from the big man a really good job by Trifunovic to even dig that first ball but too much sustained pressure from Andreas 14-14 now Reminder, Atlanta's up by one game. So if the drive pick this up, we will be going to the first dream breaker here on championship court. That ball is well in bounds. Yeah, nice mix up of the spot. And when it goes shoulder level, he likes to whip that thing cross court, but he found the middle on that one. As I say, you can't Ernie Downey soft. <laughs> Great drop from Sarah Burr. Hunter Johnson couldn't quite come up with the Ernie. And that's where I was wondering, so Sealstrom 
stays aggressive, goes for that third shot drive right at Trifunovic. So 16 to 15 to make it 17 to 15 now, actually, the drive up by two. They gotta be feeling pretty good. So if we're just giving a glimpse, if we're going Dream Breaker, what do you think might have the advantage there? Let's look here. So uh, I have not seen Andreas play singles. Like I said, I haven't seen him play mixed. Ansberry, very quality singles player back in the day, has not been playing much lately. Um, we have Trifunovic as well. I think that this is a pretty even matchup, but I'll give the edge uh, uh, to Hunter Johnson as he is definitely the best singles player of the eight. All right, so just a little preview if we make it there. 17-15 now. What might be one of the adjustments from the bouncers? Is it just a matter of execution? Uh, yeah, and I mean, I think so. But I, I also like, I think the bouncers are a little bit better in the better in those structured kind of at the kitchen line situations where Trifunovic can kind of get in a rhythm cross court with Burr. The X factor is, is Seelstrom has been able to, to get that forehand in there. So it makes it a little bit dicey on those cross court dinks. So, um, I mean, it is absolute crunch time here. They got to come up with something or we're going to be playing a dream breaker. Instead of letting him hit a forehand, they went to his backhand side, so right. maybe a little less deadly on the backhand side from that drive. Right, and a well-executed Ernie, too. He missed the previous one. Nice job, Hunter. Nice stab. And it's just so tough to get that ball down against him. He just continues to show length. Oh. And Trifunovic <laughs> says, I have had enough. Wow, that was a ridiculous shot. I mean, she couldn't, her drops were not bad. No, he, that last ball he grabbed out of the air, only yes, he could do. Yes, he <laughs> hit four or five great drops out of the air, and then she rips a forehand past him. Phenomenal. So they earned two back. They were down 15 17. Uh, I believe it was his paddle. I don't think it was his foot. I'm not positive, but I think he clipped his paddle when he in the kitchen when he lost balance. So 18, 17 now. Bouncers one point advantage. It's a three point swing, and they go backhand side again. That's been the method of success for the last four points. Yeah, the inside out forehand drive from Johnson has been pretty on point uh, throughout both of these matches. I know I mentioned that I like to see him go middle uh, and use his male partner to poach, but that's not the best part of Trifunovic's game. So uh, going for a little bit more behind Andreas is a good play. Anna Bright and James Ignatowicz, also members of the premier level. See the fives and uh, Power New couple. York Hustlers. <laughs> yeah, you got one of those too. Yeah, that's right. We're just a little Here's old. Here's about to be a power trio. That's right. We're just an older version. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, a, they're a much younger version of the power couple. That's right. <laughs> so just like that, it was 15 to 17, four points the direction now of the bouncers. Also, right now, they're just two away from closing out this match. Right, and even with Seelstrom's length, you can see these last four points what taking a lot of court some of the downfalls of that and, that, and that's just part of the deal uh, like I mentioned earlier it's never going to be perfect but great uh, awareness and you got to give some credit uh, to the bouncers to find some spots to keep him off balance and go behind him there's a look it's just awesome you can see our gate and leech Brooklyn Aces Just off the toe of her paddle. Yep, nice pressure. And great communication too. I can hear, hear Andreas from up here kind of saying you, saying me. It's really, it really helps. That ball is just out of bounds. 
So the score is frozen. Or excuse me, 1919. Excuse me. Not until someone reaches 20. That's why that 1919 point is so important. Oh, Andreas didn't like that. So at 1919 is a freeze. That's why that point is so huge. Interesting, both those balls bounce relatively high. Right now, playing the game of patience. Andreas in there. It, it's, it, it's crazy. It's almost like Trifunovic is not any fault of her own, can't hit a dink he can't get to. Just, and, and he's not just reaching out there and doing nothing with it. He's hitting quality balls. So chance for a tie now. And calling that ball long. I believe Johnson, yes. I think Johnson looked over at Newell, and Newell, his teammate, said that he thought it was out. Okay. So don't challenge, according oh. to your team. Okay. So maybe I guess Newell wasn't as confident as he thought. They are going to go with the challenge. So the call was out, just as a reminder, which, be, which would make the score 20-20. However, that point is being challenged. is a critical point right here though to say the least <laughs> Arizona needs this yes. badly oh the hype the hype train is building everyone's trickling into the stadium you can feel the energy Cameron you can't, you can't really I mean, blame when you got Sarah out there she's like ah, we're good absolutely I, my team may be on the court but I'm gonna toss out some t-shirts <laughs> she knows she this is a play right here for the get, fans get the crowd on your side for the fans you've heard of the 12th man well how about the fifth man <laughs> midst of a video challenge right now on a call at the baseline from Seelstrom calling the ball out of bounds, which would not up our score at 20 apiece. As they did have the serve. Turn Miss Long. It's a lot of voice for that little girl. <laughs> Tell you what, she's good, getting them going. So the call stands as out and so the okay. score is 20 apiece oh yes exciting times Win let's by go two. let's go that's what it's all about folks both teams obviously frozen not literally anymore it is getting real warm over here the layers have been shed and now a swing the opposite direction drive up by one yeah, huge drive from Seelstrom, catching Trifunovic a few feet off the kitchen line. That was the key. And right there, there was a massive swing by the bouncers. And then again, the Arizona Drive have now taken the second mixed doubles game, which means our score is tied up at two apiece. Larry Fitzgerald is stoked for his team. He's giving high fives all the way around, which means, by the way, we're going to the Dream Breaker. Oh, can't wait for this. And that's the joy cam, rightly so. You're at the right spot. Get all those AZ Drive shirts in there. Look, look at those moves. <laughs> oh, man, that is just epic. All right, we are with Cameron Blackwood. Go ahead, Cam. You guys were trailing both of the match, but the very end you found those. Andres got really big in the middle. What was your mindset just trying to finish out, get into the dream breaker? Just keep being aggressive. Don't give up. We had a strategy at the start of the game. We just had to keep pressing on, and he's just an amazing partner. He did his job so well, he made his presence known. So I'm so proud of us for coming back through that. You definitely made your presence known up in the middle. How comfortable are you up at that kitchen line, knowing your wingspan can probably reach from side to side of the court? 
yeah, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable up at the kitchen line. Uh, it was the first like real mixed doubles I've ever played, so I'm very happy we got the W. Like that was a very tough one. We were down 18-20, but we managed to pull out in the end. Nice. Well, you did just that. We'll get you guys going. We're going ahead into a dream breaker. We're going to head right up back up to you, Cam. The Dream Breaker is up next. You are spot on. So Silstrom and Burr doing a nice job getting their team knotted up. Meanwhile, the Dream Breaker, they're getting warmed up again. Wesley Burrows and Sarah Ansbury. So this is our first Dream Breaker. Explain how this works. Yes, so exactly right. So we're going to have a team that sets their lineup. You have obviously you have four players on each team and each player plays four points at a time and matches up with one player. It could be it could be guys versus guys. It could be guys versus girls. It's the most exciting thing in pickleball. I promise you that. And this is a very interesting dream breaker as well because you really only have uh, two or three traditional singles players. And I would say that that is Wes Burroughs and Hunter Johnson and a little bit of Ben Newell. I have not seen a, a Brooke Buckner play singles. I haven't seen Sealstrom or Sarah Burr. So this is very exciting uh, to see uh, some of these players that don't always get in the singles mix having to, to play in these big spots. Uh, Brooke also has a phenomenal tennis background. I, I'm sure that will serve her well, as we know. Uh, tennis and pickleball, very different sports, but uh, the singles version is the closest to tennis. And I got to ask too, what is the traditional kind of lineup in terms of strength do you like to see? Because yeah, so there is an order. If you're up first, you're getting more opportunities exactly. to be out on the court, right? It's almost like a baseball lineup. They have their best players at the top of the lineup so that yep. that lineup turns over. So so uh, that is a big factor. Now you might have a specific matchup that you like, and so maybe you would go out of that lineup, but I like putting your strongest players first for sure. Who's your leadoff? That's the question. So the question will be, who is the leadoff? Who will then follow? Will we get a guys versus a girl? It's always where things get interesting. Yeah, well, first first MLP, I was on the team with Callie Smith, and she gets jacked up playing guys, so I played all girls. She played the guys, and I played the girls. It was pretty, it was pretty, <laughs> pretty interesting. <laughs> If anyone could do it, it'd be Callie. Yes, that's for sure. <laughs> she is intense out there, so uh, not surprising that that was her answer to that question for sure. <laughs> Buckner currently number 12 in singles on the PPA tour. So quite a phenomenal singles player herself. We got we got uh, Cameron Blackwood up here multitasking, writing down the lineup for us. We'd love to see that Cameron with a K. So our first matchup will be Wes Burroughs versus Hunter Johnson. We will have followed by Ben Newell against Andrea Seelstrom. And then we will, uh, for the for the bouncers, uh, we will have Brooke and then Sarah Burr. And we will have Ansbury uh, as the third spot. And uh, following, or uh, finishing out uh, the, okay, I see, I see. That's my bad, that's my bad, yes. Yes. So Brooke. Brooke versus Sarah Ansbury. Yes. There Thank you go. You, <laughs> you got Thank it. You. I, it took me longer than it should have to get it, but we got there. <laughs> and then you'll have Christine uh, Trifonovich. Right. And, and versus like, Burr. And like you said, uh, uh, you know, fairly recently had a child. Big factor on the singles court, a little less so on the doubles. And as I mentioned with Sarah Ansbury, competent singles player, but hasn't really played competitive singles for a a couple years now. But that is, that's really the last six months. Some of the wins and some of the successes of Hunter Johnson on the singles court have been pretty ridiculous. So I, uh, it's a big matchup to right off the bat to see if Wes Burroughs can possibly win more points than Johnson or break even at 2-2. And I think that would be a good result for him with how great that Hunter's been playing. Well, and that's a great point too, that maybe you're not getting four out of the four, you're even three out of three, but if you're going up against somebody, your job might only be, can I get one? Can I get two off Correct. this person if my partner 
or, or someone else is carrying the load elsewhere. So sometimes one is just enough. Yes, uh, one or a break even in the right matchup is an actual win. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. So we will play to 21 total points. Again, the rotation will be every four. Both teams will rotate in a new player every four rallies. I wonder if there's been a dream breaker elsewhere. I've been trying to look around to see. I think this is the first for 2023. Yeah, that's a great question. I believe I saw some form of stat that said uh, the last event at Columbus last year, there was a 40% of the matches went to dream breakers. I might need to double check that number, but I mean, that's a pretty dang high percentage. That's wild. Yes, I know. And, and my, the first MLP that I played, we had a group of, uh, of eight. So we played seven matches. We had five Dream Breakers of the seven matches. So here we go. So first to Hunter Johnson yeah. and the Atlanta Bouncers. And Burroughs had a great look at that forehand. Not an easy shot by any means, but I think he, he would say that he should have come up with that one. Just wide, it's one off. Yeah, just sailed it a little wide. That inside out forehand served him so well in doubles. Make it 2 1, Burroughs. Okay, Burroughs with the one handed backhand <laughs> twice in a row. There, let it, say. let it fly, baby. Inches away, so two apiece. Probably Burrow. what you'd expect from that matchup. Absolutely, I mean Burroughs, absolute no no slouch. I know I kind of tooted Hunter's horn there for a minute or so, <laughs> but Burroughs, very quality singles player in his own right. That's a nice shot, that dipping ball from Newell. Length versus speed, what will win? We will find out. going to be hard. you got to find the edges of the court right now away from that paddle. Definitely. Oh, and there's the big serve. You want to see that in singles. Woo. I mean, that's big time. You saw that bite totally off balance from Newell. Oh, oh that thing is wicked. <laughs> oh, now it's just going long. <laughs> the look on his face says it all. But yeah, he got his opponent to stay back after the return. That's how good his serve is. You don't see that too frequently, especially in the men's game. And Ansbury's on the board. Ansbury fired up with a very nice carve volley with side spin moving away from Buckner. Five four, drive on top. Long, back to back now for Ansbury. And Ansbury with the one-handed backhand. Very, very rare to see that in the women's singles game. Especially from the baseline like that. Sometimes you see the yes. flicks, but. Absolutely, and Ansbury had a pretty good look at that approach shot. I think it would have been trouble for Buckner, but couldn't, couldn't coax it over the net. doing a nice job just deep into the middle. I mean, I don't really get it because my backhand's garbage, but I think Buckner's backhand might be better than her forehand. She is really letting loose on that uh, thing. She definitely, that's true. So six apiece, we're now onto our final pairing for this first rotation. And I wanted to call her McGrath. That's what so, uh, we're so used to <laughs> coming off the tongue, but that's Street Funovich. Yeah, Sarah Burr able to keep that return in, but couldn't come up with the volley. And it appears that both of them may stay at the baseline a little bit more. Yeah, definitely see that more in the women's game. But uh, yeah, everybody is different. Not 
things up. Adolf. Yeah, great ball. Had a couple loose backhands on those previous two points. Not, nothing loose about that last one. Ripped it cross court for the winner. So back to the beginning we go. Adolf. Johnson. Yeah, great spin. He had Burroughs kind of leaning towards his left, thinking he was going to go inside out with the forehand. Got enough top spin to keep it away from the Burroughs paddle. It's a great stab by Wes Burroughs, but his foot is on the kitchen line. Yeah, that's a tough break because you're exactly right. He was in a tough spot after a great shot from Hunter, and that was a phenomenal volley. I mean, that's, that, that's just too good. To, I mean, he's painting, he's painting a line with his forehand cross court and then the exact same thing on the backhand. Uh, nothing Burroughs can do, just too good from Hunter. Alongside Julie Johnson, of course, Mom, in the premier level. Mama Bear, Julie Johnson, Mama Bear. Special shout out to all of the volunteers here helping uh -huh. out to put on this amazing Major League Pickleball event. Give it up, so. volunteers! Change of end, and they're already ready to go. They're like, can we just get this thing started? Absolutely. We don't want to sit here any longer. <laughs> we just got a chance there to see Tree, Tree Funovich's little one. Brooks Wiley. Oh! The yeah, so, so four straight for Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Burroughs, nice job of splitting those first four, but some great shot making from Hunter Johnson uh, to take that 4-0 sweep. And Newell finds one. Yeah, that's bad luck there. Wouldn't have been an easy volley for Sealstrom, but he would have had it. That's danger zone. Wow, that was risky. I don't know if I'd love the six foot nine guy. Yeah, that's a couple overheads now. One from Burroughs and one from Sealstrom off the tip of the paddle. Wow. What a shot from Ben Newell. Yeah, that's worthy of a high five. Here we go, here we go. 15, 8. Yeah, and it wasn't the cleanest return from Sealstrom. Sometimes those shorter, lower returns can even be more effective than the deep ones. But nice job from Newell getting three out of four. Both staying baseline. Buckner just continuing to pepper middle until she finds the right opportunity. That's kind of her MO right now in this stream breaker so far. Absolutely. Going to Dansbury. Yeah, and I think I really like the uh, uh, the middle approach as well from Buckner, not giving Ansbury really anything to work with and then hitting a nice crisp volley. Ansbury decides to come to the net this time. And you gotta watch out for that. My goodness. I think she Cross heard, court. I think she heard me say her backhand's better than her forehand. And yeah, she, she says, she like, mm, watch this. Not so fast. <laughs> Whipping that around her head. Shoot. Yeah. Right on the line. So Brooke Buckner goes four for four. It is now 19 to 9. The Atlanta Balancers are looking awfully good here in the Dream Breaker. Yeah, it's been a really good three or four minutes for the Bouncers. Just phenomenal shot making. And one more now. Trifunovich. Now match point. Oh, oh I'm so close. He's gonna get another look at it. Yeah, solid passing shot from Sarah Burr. 
Score is now 10 20. fast to side out now on the side of the bouncers. Yeah, Sarah Bird definitely trying to protect her backhand a little bit. Probably cheating a hair too much, getting herself out of position. Very nice approach shot from Sarah Burr. Pinning Trifunovich deep in her backhand corner, couldn't come up with the passing shot. Under tight, under so now for the third round. Jump, jump. Side out for Hunter Johnson. straight to Brooke here because I think you were the game changer in this entire match. You played left side incredible. You killed it here on the Dream Breaker. But talk to us about the team strategy from heading into just your regular MLP format into the Dream Breaker. Yeah, I think we all trusted our singles. So um, if we got to a Dream Breaker, we felt confident. We have four good singles players and we had a good strategy and we executed. And Hunter, talk to me about what happened on the changeover because it was a little shaky in the first half, but then you guys came out firing. You went 4 no, Ben went 4 no. Brooke killed it. What was the mind shift? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it was it was cat and mouse there for a little bit, pretty tight, and I was I just me and Ben were just both just like we gotta get it, put it on our backs and try to get as many points and try to get a lead because that's that's big in a dream breaker, get a lead and try to keep that momentum going. That way, when you get to 20, you can try to close it out. And how nice is it to be here in? It's a little chilly, but it's now warming up. But how much momentum does this win give you into the rest of the weekend? Um, well, very excited for the win, and we're um, we're ready for the next one. Jobs not done <laughs> and job is not done you guys have two more matches today what is you guys going to recover what's the plan for the rest of the day for you guys i don't know i think i'm ready to go what about you guys i, I want to go practice let's, let's get it going <laughs> there you guys have it they are not done for today but we'll be right back here on mlp championship court back to you guys mlp mesa is brought to you by margaritaville escape to your personal paradise stay play live and dine in margaritaville Pickleball United, the official court of Major League Pickleball. HSS, Hospital for Special Surgery, is proud to be the official hospital of Major League Pickleball. Circle, your water, your way. Frameth Pickleball, where Major League Pickleball players and fans get their gear. Michelob Ultra, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock absorbing foam and Skechers famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. 
At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. And I said, Saturday, no one's here, right? Are you getting this? You get so if he wants the end Water does it in doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com.
All right, next up here on championship court for MLP Mesa by Margaritaville. It's the Orlando Squeeze versus the Texas Ranchers. And oh yeah, I'm looking down on championship court right now and there are some faces I am familiar with and some that I am excited to get you introduced to. So we've got Gina Arokina. She's actually Jeannie Arokina. She's actually up down in my area in Costa Mesa, California. Mm -hmm. She's got length. She's got a deadly two-handed backhand. You better watch out. I mean. When I'm saying this girl has, has got to reach, she really has got to reach. I, I can see that, <laughs> and I, I have not seen much of her play. I'm pretty familiar with all of the other players, but that is the oh, wild. Oh, look at us. Well, we're the perfect combination. <laughs> there you go. And you, you know one thing I really love to see here in this high-level best players in the world situation for the Texas Ranchers, we have 48-year-old Lee Whitwell and not to mention 48-year-old Steve Deacon coming back from wrist surgery, been out of the game for a little while. I'm excited to see, I don't want to call them old, but they kind of are, Cameron, right? Uh, you know, I'll, again, I stick with the word experience. <laughs> uh, but to round out that team, of course, for the Texas Ranchers is going to be Pat Smith. Uh, so now they're going to face off against the Orlando Squeeze. So we have Bobby Oshiro, Rachel Retker, Callan Dawson, and Todd Fott. Callan Dawson played a singles competition just uh, at the PPA Masters in preparation for yes, the MLP. Yes. I don't think we have ever seen him uh -uh. on a singles court. No, and it's, I, it's, it's kind of wild, too, because he doesn't have a tennis background, even though his parents are amazing tennis players. Jen Dawson and Steve Dawson down in Encinitas, California, the, running the Bobby, Bobby Riggs Racket and Paddle Center. So, uh, yes, absolutely. I saw a lot of people kind of squeezed into some singles draws that I don't normally see there and lead up for these MLP events because as we just saw uh, dream breaker huge factor in these matchups a huge factor we just saw the bouncers pick up the victory over the az drive in the dream breaker the first in 2023 if you're just joining us 
this sport has grown rapidly and specifically the MLP has grown rapidly. 12 teams in the challenger level as well as 12 in the premier level. We're sticking with the challenger level all of today mm -hmm. as premier will begin tomorrow. And yes, there is a very, this is a very new league, but we have some tradition here as the Texas Ranchers won an MLP tournament last year. Uh, Tim, uh, yes, Tim Klitsch uh, leading that ownership group amongst others. So always, can always spot Tim Klitsch in that, uh, in that cowboy hat. So Texas Ranchers, he's playing the part, love to see it. Well, Arokina and Whit Will will face off against Oshiro and Rutger to start yeah. for women's doubles. Arokina, she looks like an athlete. She's thin and she is tall. I see what you're saying about the reach. Yeah, she actually at times, at least the last few times I've played against her, she has a two-handed backhand slice. So she oh. actually like undercuts the ball and it, it gives her a ton of um, stability on her paddle face. We'll put it that way, but it's a little unique. We'll see if she's going to utilize it now. I watched one of her matches at PPA Masters and she looks like her game has just grown exponentially. I know she's been really working hard on her game. I would see her out drilling out in Tustin yep. constantly yep. and doing as much as she possibly could to get to this pro level. So she's got the bug. Just she's, she's definitely got the bug. Like most of us. So, And who else in this big moment to be partnered up with in Lee Whitwell, veteran of the game, calming presence on court, and some might like to call her the MV Lee. <laughs> And that is an incredible shot from Oshiro going quickly to the feet of Arokina. Oh, coming out aggressive. I like to see that. You saw Oshiro with the third shot drop, fifth shot drive. You don't see that combination too often. <laughs> But put, put a forehand up at the kitchen, right up, right through the wickets, right up the middle for a nice winner, Oshiro. Yeah, and already they're going pretty quickly to the feet of Eric. Yes, absolutely. And that was, I mean, that's a phenomenal roll. The movement of that ball from when uh, Retker hit it to when it landed, uh, just phenomenal shape to that shot and great topspin from her. There's the southpaw. Yeah, get in there, Lee. That's right, she shared with me one of my good buddies on tour, Lee Whitwell. She likes short walks to the fridge, and she wouldn't tell me who, but she slept with two A-list celebrities. <laughs> this is, those are her fun facts? <laughs> I'm kind of speechless right now. Uh, well, you should be. She's I got, got nothing. I got she, nothing. She's got. I know this is a family show, but uh, I had to say it. She's she's got one of the best personalities out there, so I had to share a little bit with the fans. <laughs> Checking the ball now is Retger. Yeah. Couple, couple misses early on from Irakina. See if she can find her footing moving forward. Yeah, nice. I'm completely fine with the initial attack from Retger, but great hands from Irakina and then a nice let go as that ball sails a foot long. Oh, Whitwell's paddle was right there. Yeah, she read it, but uh, either way, quality low hard attack from Retger. So even though Lee Whitwell in the right spot couldn't come up with the counter. Nice change of directions by Oshiro, setting up her partner for the finish. Yeah, they're really coming out with a lot of energy and some aggressive shot selection. And the ball's coming off their paddle really well. You talked about the spin that they're creating.
Could have been the breeze. Whitwell could have taken a little shuffle step to get in better position. Either way, she went reaching for it and it cost her. That backhand, big time. Yeah, a couple times from Retger, uh, quality initial speed ups and a little too big and a little too aggressive on those uh, subsequent finishing shots. Oh, with some extra sauce on that one. That ball did not come up. Yeah, the backspin was tough. And you can see it's a contrast in styles. Lee Whitwell, very calm with her paddle face, simple to the ball, and Irokina really stroking everything. So not necessarily a right or a wrong, but you can see the differences. Irokina going for more mm -hmm. and maybe missing more. Lee Whitwell, very consistent, but doesn't really do too much with her dinks. Oh my goodness. Yeah, tough break from Lee who read it beautifully. Oshiro able to sneak one up the middle earlier in the match. Whitwell right on it, but couldn't convert the put away. There we see Arakina kind of. Just getting in, settled. Exactly, inserting herself a little bit, a couple nice attacks, and I, I see that, that top spin kind of roll over on the backhand side, and it paid dividends on that shot. We used to be up in Bend, Oregon. Now she's, I believe, at the Villages in Florida. It's right where a, right where a 48 year old should be, at the Villages in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know anything about the Villages, but it's like, uh, it's kind of like uh, a fraternity and sorority for older people. We'll just say that much. <laughs> Orlando, squeeze, she baby! She did the cross country oh. trek. Oh, Retger just saying Orlando squeeze. We caught her on the mic, getting pumped up, feeling good about her start to this match, and she should. 11 to 6 now. All right, we're going to mention it early on. They came out, not even in but they were sweet, but they seemed calculated in their attacks and were executing at just a really high rate. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't uh, like sloppy aggression. No. Exactly like you said, calculated, a dink or two, and then finding a spot. So I uh, couldn't agree more uh, about that the, that shot selection, and, and I like it. It's in, and it's And it's doing them well so far with an 11 6 lead. Cameron Blackwood's got something for us. Take it away, Cam. I just got in the ranchers huddle here and they said exactly that. They said that we're being a little bit too passive right now. And especially with the wind, we really need to pick up this aggression. And Jeannie Urquina, she has that great counter on her backhand side, but she's hitting that dink. They want her to go ahead, step it up, be aggressive, see if they can't get back into this game. Let's we'll see if she can get a little bit more aggressive to your point. Yeah, thanks Cam. That's always great to get a little insight to the huddle as every time out or change ends. There's a, a, a lot to talk about. And I'm not sure what happened there. We'll see that the, it's the wind is against that far end, and we saw the exact same thing happen to Lee Whitwell earlier. That's one of the biggest things that happen when there's breeze in your face. You get set with your feet, and you think the ball's there, and it's not. The wind's starting to play a little bit more of a factor now. Head to head battle. Closes <laughs> out Arakina. There we go. A big sigh of relief from Arakina catching that uh, that exchange, and she came out on top. Oh, 
Oshiro with some oh, pace. Wow. Yes, and Oshiro, really good job of being at full extension on all of those shots. I know yeah. she's one of the shorter players, and I respect that I am as well, but to, to really reach in there and put pressure on, I love to see that. One of the first lobs we've really seen. Go, go, go. Yeah. So purposeful lobs. Yes. We've seen them out of necessity. Exactly. There's a big difference between an offensive lob and kind of I kind of call a bailout lob, where the situation is dire and you're just trying to do anything you can to get back in the point. Another one, but she's called for a fault as she's twisting around to push off. Yeah, that's the classic tennis player. They step forward to explode backward. Very often called on the push off on an overhead uh, uh, as, as a kitchen violation, as we saw right there. You see the veterans, Steve Deacon and Pat Smith chatting with Lee Whitwell and Arokina. Really good minds for the game down there in the court. If there's something to figure out, they will find it. Music's starting to get a little bit hotter now. Oshiro and still maintaining a steady approach. Steve Deacon really talking with the hands. Really nice. Good, <laughs> good, good coaching strategy. You got to use the hands. Very important. Well, and it's so fun, too. You're in a different space. Like, so often you're on a pickleball court and you feel like you're on an island, right? Yes. Even though you got somebody next to you, you can, you can maybe come up with a strategy or, or game plan, but now you've got an extra two, if not three, sets of eyes to help you along the way. Exactly, Cam. And the thing is, even though you do have a partner, eyes in the moment are different than eyes on the outside of the court looking in. So very well said and very important. Ooh, look at this. We have a switcheroo, the lefty Lee Whitwell coming over to the left side, Irakina on the right. First time we've seen that today. So you're able to do that at a timeout or in change. Amazing point. I love those points with a little bit of everything. Some fast exchanges, a couple resets mixed in. Maybe that could be a springboard uh, for Irakino and Whitwell to get something going. So now you've got two forehands on the outside of the court as opposed to up the middle. And did that land? It did. Lee Whitwell. MV Lee coming through with the left handed one hander. Wind in her face dropped it right inside the baseline. Beautiful. from Rutger and fantastic patience. I think she wanted to hit that at about mid-thigh level. She let that ball travel a little further, gave her the angle she needed. She found the fifth, but couldn't quite find the seventh. That's right, Irakina, nice job too. Looking pretty comfortable yeah. on that forehand that side. Roll. Rolling, exactly. That's a nice drop. Lee's on it. Just enough. Oh, oh Oshiro. Cheeky. Yeah, soft, soft hands there from Oshiro. But I like what I'm seeing already in just these handful of points from Irakina on the right side. She looks more comfortable with the soft stuff with the forehand and a big uh, backhand counter in that point as well. Yeah, even in transition too. Yes, yes, correct. And 
That's the shot, though. You got two backhands up the middle of yes. the court. Yes, yes. So I, I like it. We saw a couple of those from Rachel Summers earlier. So I like the pull from Retger just a little too much. She did have a gap in the middle of the court, though. The question is, who's going to cover it? Looks like Lee. Nice job, Ranchers. A little slight momentum. And I really like that they made the switch. Yeah. Just because Lee's left handed. It's harder to make that switch when you have a left handed and a right handed player. But I like the switch up from the Ranchers. At that point, oh my. Yeah, so uh, this breeze. You know, we often see this in, in, in tournaments throughout the, the season that you have a good side and a bad side. So that could possibly be something uh, that's going on down on the court. Um, and, and also uh, just a little a little uh, change of vibe after the switch. And I really like what I'm seeing from the ranchers right now. Let's see if the squeeze can come back through. So 15 to 17, let's take a look now at the standings uh, from groups A through C. So their first group round match. So you can see where Utah Black Diamond picked up a victory as well as the Bay Area Breakers. We had that here on Championship Court. The Orlando Squeeze, Chicago Slice, and the Ranchers have already won one on the day. You look over to Group C, and you've got the Dallas Pickleball Club up one, as well as the Atlanta Bouncers. So getting rid of some of those first round matches. And of course, they are playing in a round robin format. And those top two will be coming out of each of those groups. That's right. You will play every team in your group. That is exactly right. So, yes, we have the Ranchers at 1-0 and, oh, and the Squeeze 0-1. Oh and one. Communication there. Who's hitting the overhead? Yeah. I think it was two, usually one of you or a me, that was two mine. They both, they both <laughs> said mine, so uh, they battled through it and got the point. They needed to stop the bleeding after a nice run from the ranchers. That's a tough dink from Oshiro. She's great kind of ball. Look at Lee Whitwell yelling at Irokina to fight. I love to see that fire from the veteran. That's a nasty drive. Takes that one out of the air. Irokina all day. Full extension, forehands and backhands, keeping the pressure on, catching the squeeze flat-footed. Unbelievable. We just backed up. <laughs> Saw you. Take it away. 17-18. There it is. I'm kind of waiting for that double attack up the middle. Yeah, and, and I think every person in around the court knew Redger was going to speed that ball up. <laughs> but when it's hard and it's low, it's a quality ball. Even if you telegraph it, you can still be successful with it. Lob after lob. And the drop shot from Riker. Yeah, tough break. Lee kind of broke in like she was going to come forward and then held her ground. So a phenomenal shot selection from Rachel Retger after several very powerful shots to go with the soft touch. Game point, the Orlando squeeze. Extension from Irokina, hitting that ball as close to Retger as possible and not going with pure power, adding in a nice element of spin. Oshiro gets a piece of Lee Whitwell. She said sorry, but I think Lee's giving her a slight stare down right now. I don't want Lee Whitwell staring me down. Very 
very clear right now that the wind is in the face of the ranchers and at yeah. the back, even if it might be swirling a little bit at the back of the squeeze. What's interesting too is they earned one there. I was talking to Catherine Barrento yesterday uh, and Lacey Schneeman. I said, do you like playing with the wind or against them? They said, honestly, it totally depends on your style of play and like what you like. They actually, one of, I think both of them said they like playing with the wind though. Everybody getting fired up. I love the energy. And I'll tell you what, Cameron, I'm the complete opposite. I like to be against the wind. See, I would too. Yeah. That would be my thought. I feel like I can't miss. Yeah. 20 apiece. Kina. What a spot. Fantastic shot from Oshiro. Like the decision, controlled, nothing crazy. Just a good spot. Score remains 20 20. They did say the advantage, though, is enhanced battles. Sure, sure. So they said singles, I think, definitely with the wind. Maybe doubles is against. Who knows? They are the opposite. <laughs> tight on the backhand dink there. She's been looking really comfortable with the forehand, so a nice job by Retger not pulling her out wide, kind of going at that left foot, and she got an error out of it. Out of it. bounds. And she set it up so beautifully. Really nice setup. Couple middle dinks out wide dink. Got the ball she wanted. Hey, that happens to the best of us. You just keep keep getting yourself in that pattern. Retger's going to be just fine. Too soft on that forehead for Lee Whitwell. Yeah, I had a very good player tell me that he prefers to block more frequently when the wind is against him and release on his counters when he is with the wind. So that makes sense to yeah. you to your exchange situation. When you get in those firefights, maybe you hit it a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Chasing that, goes for the lob, great setup. Can they close? Continue back to the inking. Unreal play. Lights out is Lee Whitwell along with Arokina. Oshiro and Recker are playing amazing too. Stop it, ladies. That point was ridiculous. Lee Whitwell with the chest bump with Steve Deacon. You love to see the team chemistry. <laughs> That's what I want to see from Retger. I think some of those higher balls at the shoulder earlier, she didn't give me the full commitment. That one, she was leaning into it, extended out in front, and just let it fly. Great shot from Rachel. That's a nice reach. He slaps that ball down, Lee Whitwell. Exactly, and I like that too. I see sometimes when the ball goes up a little higher, uh, players like to stroke it with topspin. I prefer that loose arm smack so much harder and so much more power. And flatter. Several lobs now. Ooh, baby. Yeah, that was a confident out call, and it was only a couple inches out. But I see what you're saying. Quite a few of those scramble points from Irakina. She's on the full stretch. She covers a lot of court. Oh, and she came back to cover 
middle, but that's a great shot from Riker as she pushes her wide <laughs> she and finds the alley. She missed the easy one on match point and then makes that super high degree of difficulty shot. Either way, uh, they got it done. Very nice shot job by the squeeze to catch that first point. So 22 to 20 is your game last score for women's doubles. Men's doubles will be up next, but just a two point difference. And we want a few extra too, why not? But Cameron Blackwood now with our winners, Oshiro and Record. Rachel, how much did wind play a factor and which side seems to be more difficult, especially here on Championship Court? Um, wind's definitely playing a factor. It's kind of swirling. Um, I'd say that the side we were just on is probably the more difficult side. The balls are kind of like dropping and getting pushed that way, so you really have to move your feet. And an easy high ball is not so easy. I think I whiffed one in there, so definitely playing a factor. And you guys had a strong lead, but then they changed sides and it seemed to change the game. They got a lot of momentum. How did it change for you guys with the strategy now having Lee on the left side versus the right? Um, I think for us, we just kind of focused on, hey, you know, they're going to get a couple points in a row, but we just stick to being patient, staying calm. We're not trying to rush, and we try to play one point at a time. You did just that. They have it up. They're up one to zero. We're on to men's doubles. We'll be right back with more MLP. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic women's doubles match. Very tight all the way till the end, and I hope the fellas can uh, give us the same level of excitement in this uh, men's doubles match. And I'll tell you what, Steve Deacon and Pat Smith, I think that's one of the better men's duos in the challenger division. Some thunderous hands, really good counters, and uh, I'm excited to see what they come up with. As, as I mentioned previously, Steve Deacon has had a bit of a wrist injury, so I'm excited to see him back on the court, and I want to want to see if he held on to some of that skill pre-injury because he was at the top of the game before that. All right, so he's going to be up alongside Pat Smith, like you mentioned. Yes, and we have Todd Fott and Callan Dawson, the lob doctor. So we saw a lot of lobs in this last one. Yes. Oh, he, he outdo yeah. Oh, yeah. He, oh, Callan Dawson's the best. He, he, he's the best lobber in the game. It's actually <laughs> one of his best offensive weapons, known as one of the steadier players on tour. What? And I know Todd Fott has some talent. He's had a couple nice runs in PPA events at the end of last year, but I have not got to see him play too frequently. I'm excited to see what he has for us. Let's take a look now at the head between these two teams. 
We talked about the Ernie King, Cleaner King, Kellen Dawson, the Long Doctor, but I also think he's like the short hop king, right? Oh, yes, Taking absolutely. The ball off the ground real quick as we take a look at the 40 to 60% win probability, but you can see their team duplicates as well as power rating. Like you mentioned, maybe leaning towards the direction of Smith and Deacon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I said, really heavy hands from those two and, and really good with those backhand punches kind of at the chest. So uh, if, if Dawson and Fott go for some ill-advised speed-ups, uh, I think they're in for a long day. Steve Deacon often with the third shot goes a lot of drives with the forehand and almost exclusively drops from the backhand side. Quick flick from Callan Dawson. Yeah, it's one of, uh, like I mentioned, the lob being one of his offensive weapons, that backhand poke from the left side. It's not really much of a roll. It's That's more, true. It's more of a poke, poke, but it's got a lot of pace on it. Wipe there by Dawson as well. Yeah, really nice backhand counter. Uh, net aided uh, as the Pat Smith speed up, clipped off the tape and sat up for him. by Pat Smith on the backhand. <laughs> Steve getting skinny twice in that point, uh, but you're exactly right. Uh, I did not think Pat Smith was gonna be there in the middle on that initial speed up. Great coverage from him. Oh yeah, so he lives in Utah now. I yes, believe he does. Ogden, Originally Utah. Originally out of uh, Vancouver. There you go. spot from Steve Deacon, often referred to him as Canada's finest. Also, Steve Podium Deacon. Really, really quality nicknames there. As I mentioned, look for that to continue with forehand drives and backhand drops. Looks like they're targeting Steve Deacon on the return. Don't know if that's just how it's worked out or that was a, a game plan going into the match. A little slow start, everybody finding their footing here. Well, we heard from Rachel in the post-game interview that that side that the Rangers are currently on are is definitely a little bit tougher in terms of the wind conditions. So look for on the change of end. Differential, just a few. Even if you're down a few, you're doing pretty good against that wind. Nice, I mean, pretty quality uh, counterattack from Steve Deacon, so a nice job of being on the next ball from Todd Fott. Yeah, had a, basically a carbon copy, and he, he drove it into the net a few points prior. Better footwork that time, great drive from Todd. with a drive. It's a Which little is, bit of a rarity. Oh, absolutely, it's a rarity. Sometimes it catches you off guard because it'll, it'll drop like 40 in a row and then just rip one at you, so. <laughs> nice, really good reach-ins uh, down here from Callan Dawson and Todd Fott. Did not let that ball come to them. They went to get it. And Dawson looking for the poach. Yeah, you can see that from the footwork immediately. Oh yeah, and he is a very, very good poacher. He's a much better baker than shaker. <laughs> <laughs> you mean shaker than baker. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Shake, no, you're right, you're right, shake and bake. <laughs> you're 
This is getting confusing. <laughs> exactly. So even though it was a nice volley from Steve on that previous point, I like the move from Dawson to put pressure with his court positioning. Couple rare misses from Callan Dawson on third shot drops, these last handful of points. I think it's going against the wind right now. Mm -hmm. Just assessing, and I think that's the fear right there for Steve Deacon is leaving that third up too high. Yeah, he's kind of throwing his hands yeah. up. Try, try, he's just trying to, to rein it in and get exactly, and right when he might get it dialed in, he switches sides. So here, here we go. The boys got to get it figured out. Um, wind plays some tricks, and this has not been the cleanest match so far. No doubt the fellows are going to pick it up. Well, no, even yesterday it was noticeable. Not only is it the wind, but I feel like the altitude and the chill in the air definitely changes your approach too. You're going with the wind. And it was really hard just being out on the court yesterday to keep the ball in bounds. Right, it's kind of a, you, you look down at the players and they occasionally kind of have a bewildered look. Like yeah. what happened there? Like it felt so good. I thought my stroke was good. I thought my footwork was good. How did that stay along or how did I leave that short? So. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming out and supporting Major League Pickleball. Let's look at Tim Klitsch. Team owner of the Ranchers. He's got huge spurs on his boots too. He's playing the role. I mean, come on. You got to give it to him. As he should. But I think one of the other elements too is second guessing yourself, right? Like you're, you're the hesitation when you're with the wind creates just as much of a problem. Sure, fought, set that one up beautifully. Yeah, nice, a nice little misdirect. Really led with his palm and his wrist to create some deception on that forehand attack. Very nice job, Todd fought. It's two now for for Callan. He's one. showing something a little different now. That's right, one deep, one in the net. Third time's a charm, I bet. He's getting ready for singles. <laughs> Alan Dawson, of course, was a baseball player. A little bit of a different approach. That's why he likes those short hops so often in the dinking game. I took that from baseball. His partner, though, practically grew up with a paddle or racket, more so racket in his hand. His parents are tennis players. There you go, you see Pat Smith, one of the more fiery players on tour, letting Deacon know that he liked that combination and he wants some more of it. There you go, he threw his hands up, he can't believe it. Yeah, this is the frustration. It is really, really, uh, yeah, let me put it this way. Yesterday I was incredibly frustrated on the court going, <laughs> wow, I hope I'm not the only one that feels this way. Well, you're not. <laughs> dink by the ranchers to set that up. Yeah, really nice point from the fellas. See, it just takes a point or two like that, several shots from each player to find a little rhythm. Yeah, some really nice put away power from Callan Dawson off that ace of spades paddle. It's got a lot of thump to it. I haven't tried it yet. You like it? I don't know. Well, you haven't either. I have not. There it is again. That's just the, it's the word on the street, Cameron. <laughs> uh, Ace of Spades has got some thump to it. So, all right, time for the ranchers. Squeeze got a nice, nice lead here. Sixteen to ten now. from Fott. Yeah, very nice. Probably a hair too low for the initial Steve Deacon yeah. uh, speed up. And uh, yeah, so um, I would definitely consider Deacon a little bit more of a, the 
consistent player at the kitchen line, and it looks like they're targeting him a little bit more because Pat Smith's more threatening. He has more power with the speed ups and some of the initiating of the offense. So it comes to, it doesn't look like they're necessarily targeting Deacon, just a few more balls headed his way. Make sure you check out Margarita the ranchers to take a timeout. We also have court coverage out on the grandstand as well where it's the Chicago Slice and the Miami Pickleball Club. Goldberg and Manassee, Ackerman and DeHart are out there right now. Looks like they're playing a pretty good point right now as well. The score is tied up at one apiece. Now this is just the first mixed doubles matchup and ooh, there's some fireworks going out on the grandstand. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Orlando Squeeze are looking to take game number two and go up 2-0, heading into mixed. Nice lean into the kitchen from Steve Deacon. Todd Fott was in a reasonable position, but Steve was able to handcuff him on his backhand counter attempt. while getting on Steve a little quick. The wind is definitely picking up. Tough break. Cameron Blackwood down court level letting us know that uh, little switcheroo from the rancher with Steve Deacon over on the right and Pat Smith on the left. from Steve. I haven't heard Pat Smith yell anything in German yet, so. You might need to start. <laughs> Down seven now. There there, there's something happening. Uh -huh. It's trickling. Uh-huh. 13-19. Not as Calvin Dawson as there's a body bag now from Fott. Yeah, really nice adjustment from Fott as Steve has caught him with a couple cross court attacks. Definitely not on that one as Todd Fott was all over it. And another one. Pat Smith has cut lit up on the last two. 21 13 in game number two. He goes to the Orlando Squeeze. I think uh, they caught Steve a little late getting to the kitchen line, and usually how it works, if you hit a shot you're not thrilled with, often your partner pays the price, and that's what happened to, to Pat Smith there. The, the, the veterans just never could get anything going. Let's see if they can step it up and mix. They're gonna need to. See what takes place in terms of what teams for mixed will go first, but for now, we've got Fott and Dawson standing courtside with Cameron Blackwood. Todd, you're new here to MLP. You look like a vet out there on the court. How many weeks have you guys been training? It looked pretty smooth out there. Uh, well, Callan comes up to Utah a lot, so we get to play together a little bit. Um, Rachel and Bobby, not so much. We've, we've been here since Tuesday and gotten a few reps in, but it feels good. And when you're, like Rachel was saying, the wind out here is very intense at times, but you guys were successful on the quote unquote bad side. How were you able to come on top? Um, I mean, you try, I mean, the wind is pretty bad. You just got to kind of adjust and know which way the wind's going. So you just got to listen to the match in front of you and tell you which way it is and try your best. They did just that. There we have it. We're coming up with mixed doubles next here on MLP. Don't go anywhere.
At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. The Pro Accelerator Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game. Because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, yeah. So if he wants the end, water does it doesn't have to be boring. Thing? Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. championship court here at the Legacy Sports Park. And this, of course, is the first event in season at number one. This day number one, we're starting off with the challenge level. To be the challenger level, Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. We're about ready for mixed doubles, the first matchup with the Orlando Squeeze having picked up the first two, both the women's and men's doubles in terms of points. So to pick up the win, the match win here, they just need one. We will play both mix though, mm -hmm. as this is a round robin format to start. To yes. find out who our seeds are. And it was the ranchers who put out Jeannie Irakina and Steve Deacon, and then the slice responded with Callan Dawson and Rachel Recker. So yeah, I'm excited to see what, you know, some, some of it, especially the end of that women's match, Irakina with some nice length and some nice shots. I, I'm interested to see how she how she plays her mixed game. Because I know Steve is very good in his area, but not necessarily the best lateral mover, mover to get incredibly in Involved from the left side, so having a nice, lengthy partner with good reach could really help this team out a lot. Doubles. Pants have been now added. It's getting a little bit chillier here. <laughs> Wind into the late afternoon. I like it, I like it. Trying to lob the lob doctor. Well, wrong side, too. It's also true. I would have landed in over here, but not on that side. <laughs> Carry, carried too much. She's just trying to get him at his own game. Lobbing the lob doctor, like you said. Sometimes you miss them, Cam. You just shrug it off. <laughs> you just shrug it off. A <laughs> little bit more reasonable to go for your serve more in mixed doubles as well. Finds the 
backside of Steve Deacon. He was on full chase. Steve Deacon with the counter to lovely footwork from the 48 year old. Fantastic, Steve. He's nimble. over the middle. She's sliding and saying, give it to my backhand, Absol please. Absolutely, and early in that point, Recker with a great dink out wide, but the length of Irakina able to neutralize it. Really nice rolls and forehand control from Irakina. I'm loving her over on this right side. Well, and at times you think she's going to maybe take a step and take it off the bounce, but then all of a sudden she readjusts and finds that she can actually take it out of the air. That's danger. Yeah, might, might, might have saved Steve on that one, but uh, Mr. Dawson said, just in case. <laughs> Exactly right. And the thing is, it's 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 not it's not slow. So it's not combining the, the, the slower ball with the spin. It's just a poke right at your chest and it's really hard to get out of the way. That's her move though. She likes the forehand roll to close with the backhand. Yes, and Callan with a solid backhand counter. Scores for a piece. Oh, and what a beautiful winner from Recker. Wow. High level stuff. I believe Steve yelled no. <laughs> and that ball landed about six inches in. Just too good from Rachel Recker. Steve trying to get in there. A little communication error from the ranchers. Well, that's tough when you haven't really been spending any time on the court together. You got to figure out who's taking that arrow. You know, I mentioned has been being pretty aggressive, sliding over, taking some of those backhands through the middle. But it's a forehand for Steve, too. That's tough. And Steve says, I got that one. Yeah. <laughs> and a great job, catch, uh, Irakina catching Retger in transition. She kind of got stuck uh, and went somewhere between a soft and a hard shot. And that's what happens when <laughs> that's a put away for your opponent. It's when that, not Goldie uh, Yeah, Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Irakina winning the roll dink battle, about four or five or six in a row from Retger and Irakina. Really similar, the ball kind of comes off their paddle similarly with that, with yeah, well that topspin. Well, it's spin. tough too, right? Because that ball's bouncing with topspin, so you're adding topspin to already topspin. Yes. It's not like you're getting backspin and going with the same doubling up the spin. Correct. So what's the trick to that? Well, Waiting for the ball to sit? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, so I, I prefer hitting topspin off of slice, actually. Me too. Yeah, That's so, my point. Right, exactly. So you just, you got to get low. They both have that grip where they have to get underneath the ball, kind of semi-Western, and that's what creates the spin. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. So, uh, I mean, I prefer to take those out of the air if I can. Yeah, don't but let them bounce and run. Yes, exactly. So that's really with anyone that does a lot of spin, whether it's slice or top spin on their dinks. So uh, taking that out of the air can kind of neutralize the spin. Once it hits the court, it kind of plays tricks on you sometimes. Dawson. Yeah, ph phenomenal mover, really good baking there. And what I mean by baking is the shake and bake with a little poach action. So very athletic move from Callan. He's rewarded with a nice put away winner. 
from your camera and it's the bacon shake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a couple times that Irakina, I would say these two guys are not the type of player that really, really, really squeeze the middle hard. Yeah, so going true. behind them is a little bit more difficult than some of the other guys. Unfortunate bounce for Retker there off the top of the net. Yeah, she had a good look. I think it was the right play to go for a more aggressive shot, but it happens. Redger got herself into some trouble there, letting that mm -hmm. ball bounce, trying to mm -hmm. short hop that. This just becomes that much more difficult. Yeah, I mean, Irakina, there's a lot of junk on that shot. A lot. You need a pickleball junk. Yeah, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, and Redger's pulled her out wide a couple times. And I, and I thought she, she was has. in trouble. And the length of Irakina, she was still able to get around the outside of that ball and bring it back to Rachel. change she's now going head to head more trying to reset cross court but she's just feeding the forehand of Deacon that's right Steve couldn't get out I think that one ball was going to go wide early in the point he couldn't get his body out of the way but he recovered nicely so a nice move by the Texas ranchers who now have a two-point advantage here in mixed they would have to pick up both of these mixed matchups to be able to then find the dream breaker we've already had one on the day here mm -hmm. At the Rock and Protein Pickleball Center at Bell, Bell Bank Park and talking to Resort Championship Court. That was wonderful day. I know. Well, I used to I used to play a little professional poker in my day camp, and I lived in Arizona for two years. So I've spent about 2,000 hours at the Talking Stick Resort. It was my it was my did, home base casino. But the casino. question is, did you lose 2,000 dollars oh. too? I was a professional, Cameron. Come on. All I do is win. I, that doesn't. I was gonna say. I don't know if that means that you win, though. <laughs> and, you didn't and, answer my question. And, and oh, you. I consider professional someone who makes money doing it. That's fair. How about that? But did you win there? Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Absolutely. I win everywhere I go in poker. Okay. If I spent 2,000 hours there, I won. I promise you that. <laughs> we might be having a very different conversation if that wasn't the case. <laughs> stuff she kind of threw her hands up like just keep doing that Jeannie yeah. <laughs> telling herself ranchers looking really solid here the last couple minutes of this mixed match that's gonna help yeah unfortunately sometimes when it rains it pours get beat a couple times on dinks starts leaking over to other parts of your game see if the slice can clean it up Sorry, not the slice, the squeeze. We got the slice playing behind us. I was gonna the say. Chicago slice. <laughs> I mean, you can, you don't have to squeeze an orange. You could slice it. All right, I'm just trying to dig myself out of this okay. hole. It's the best I can do. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't want to miss that phenomenal shot by Rachel Regger going behind Steve Deacon. She's had a couple of errors sprinkled in, but wanted to note she made a great shot on that previous point. And Regger is immediately going to take a timeout right here. That's Deacon it. just yeah. went full send with that drive right at her body. Right, exactly. And she was a little late getting forward. So, you know, that when you're established at the kitchen line, even though you're a little closer to Steve driving, when you have that base underneath you, a balance much easier to respond with a volley. If you're transitioning forward, it makes it very difficult, especially with a quality drive from Steve. What's the hard part is, too, you got to imagine with them being with the wind right now, you're calculating your returns, right? You're getting nervous about sending that return too long. So shallow returns, they're coming up right now. Steve Deacon just made a pay for one. Yeah, definitely. With the wind, I would say that's probably where I make the most errors on return to serve, especially with uh, me having some backspin and some slice on it. The ball just takes off. So it's uh, gone. Very true. 15 to 10, Rancher's still up. However, the squeeze, not to be confused with the slice of the two hands. <laughs> 
to none. Thanks for that calling me out there, partner. <laughs> I would never. I would never. That's part, that's part of the deal. You would never either. <laughs> Look at the water. Look at their hair. I was going to say, this is, this is actually really great. You can see the umbrellas above the court. That's actually giving you... Uh, just a little glimpse into how windy it is. And I also need to say a big happy birthday to Miss Anna Lee Waters. It's her sweet 16. The big one six. The big one six. Word on, yeah, word on the street, she got a Range Rover for her 16th birthday. I got a 1984 Honda Accord. I got my mother, my grandmother's <laughs> Toyota Sienna <laughs> minivan. With 186,000 miles on it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, but honestly, Ooh, that girl finger wag, it. finger wag wrecker. I love it. She called that timeout. She was a little flustered, and now she's showing some positive. Gotta love that. She says, uh-uh. Nice job from the squeeze, kind of keeping Irikina back. She was unable to get forward. And nice sustained pressure from the squeeze. They're going to need a little bit more of that. Remains though the ranchers. Yeah, nice. They've spot. got to make a move right now if you're the squeeze. Though. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's it is it is absolute go time. It might have been go time a couple minutes ago. And again, kind of forced into that lob situation. Right and Dawson and quick. Right and, and with Redger having a couple nice forehand speed ups up the middle, Erikina she's got to cover a lot of court in that situation. Nice hands up there from Irakina. Steve got the last laugh, but Irakina, she was in a tough spot she early was. in that point, and she dug out of it. I like it. I think it's a, a quality move from Dawson, especially with Retger having to move back for that overhead. Just a little overextended and not able to come up with that forehand. Game point. And Rutger tried to work around the corner, but 21 to 13. Irakina and Deacon, a solid win right there in game three. Yeah, absolutely. They were in pretty much in control of the throughout the entirety of the match. So great job of not letting their foot off of the gas and can basically controlling it throughout. So next up, you've got Bobby Oshiro playing alongside Todd Bott versus Pat Smith and Lee Whitwell. But let's check in with our winners right now. Steve, you guys were down 0-2. I heard Lee before you guys went into deciding he was going out for the mix. We need to win this one. What was the strategy in choosing this team to go first? Yeah, you know, I I, I kind of like myself uh, under pressure situations, and I love it when Lee applied it, and she applied it hard. Um, our strategy was was fairly basic, as you all saw. Like we we obviously picked on on Rachel a little bit there, go behind Callan a bit. Um, at the end of the day, I, I think we we just applied a little too much pressure that they couldn't sustain and you know the the, the conditions out here right today are, are unreal it's it's cold it's windy and and that is a huge equalizer so any one of these matches um, can really go either way you know and, and this is uh, a, a, my first time playing an MLP event and I'm just so pleased to be here um, just like to say hello to everybody in Canada Sure, they're loving that. And Jeannie, I talked to you before the match. You said you were really nervous, but it looked like you settled in. You were playing aggressive. How did you regroup and change your mindset? It's always awesome to play with Steve. He's a great mixed player. We just stick to the pattern, and we just did our thing. And he he just uh, talked to me and said all the good stuff, and that's it. There you have it, Ranchers. Now, got a point on the board, one to two. We're going to be coming right back with the next mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere. Just now. 
Six carbs and 95 calories. supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Sketchers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Welcome back to Talking Stick Resort Championship Court, where the second mixed doubles matchup is about to take place. And right now, the score is 1-2, to two, the Rams first trailing, so they're looking for a great breaker here. But, well, she's been in this position before. She's staring this one down willingly. Oh, yeah. So, I'm excited. I didn't get to say Pat Smith's name too much in that men's match, a few more balls going to Steve Deacon, but the man's got a whole bunch of power in his paddle and a great forehand in the middle, so I'm looking forward to him stepping up in this mixed doubles match. I've seen Todd Fott play men's doubles, but not mixed, so interested to see with him how much court he takes. Is he one of those very aggressive men, or is it more like a uh, kind of standard 60-40 kind of situation? So, a very exciting match coming up, and the ranchers need it. Oh, here's the head-to-head. -head. Okay. Okay, so we got 56 Smith. You know what, that, that makes sense. I, I would say on paper that that's right on par with what I was guessing. Uh, but I will say, I've been impressed with Bobby Oshiro just in these uh, matchups already. I've been really impressed with him. And you ball control. Oh, yeah. Ability to change oh, yeah. the direction of the ball. Being one myself, I just love little people. So when, <laughs> when little people play well and have good success, I, I am the first one to congratulate them. Uh, let's see what she's got in store for us. Super controlled in her approach. You know, a low center that, of gravity is good sometimes. Well, I good. always think that uh, that impresses me so much because I'm a longer player, so anytime I see that, I'm like, oh, the steadiness. I wish I could have that. Mm -hmm. with some topspin. I expect that to be a topspin slice battle. Lee Whitwell loves the slice dink. And I expect Oshiro to take as many out of the air as possible with topspin. You, you had some nice insight on that earlier with the slice to the topspin battle. You see it a lot, not just in returns and third shots and drives, but also up at the kitchen line as well. Like a crouching tiger steals that one away. Mr. Patrick, he just, I don't even think he even hesitated or looked for weakness. He just went, he just went and he was rewarded. <laughs> Good eye from Fought and a nice spot at the right shoulder of Pat Smith from Bobby Oshiro. It's gonna be very important for the ranchers one moment after this point. Missed return to Lee Whitwell, one of the best players in the game in her area, but struggles a little bit to cover too much court. So she's gonna need Pat to step over in that middle and let her post up and hit those backhand dinks. Yeah! Oh, did 
Speaking of backhand, there's Lee Whitwalt. Exactly, not an aggressive player, but if they, if she gets the ball on the right spot, she'll let it fly, and a beautiful one-hander from Lee Whitwell up the middle. A great placement. footwork to go for an, uh, a surprising Ernie. Unfortunately, he got himself in a bit of trouble. He's, he's laughing about it. I mean, it's he just, hard, he just looked up at us and just goes, dang. <laughs> What's well, funny with Ernie's because as deadly as they are, they can also get you out of position really quickly. I played about 100 tournaments with Deckel Bar, so I've seen I've seen the greatness <laughs> of know. it and, 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 and some of the issues that go along with, with being a frequent Ernie. <laughs> It's tough. When not only is the let cord an issue, when there's slice on the ball and a let cord, it is so difficult. Todd fought a great mover, still couldn't get up to that ball. Lee just chopping wood over there, it's one after the other. Downy soft blocks. You're exactly right, chopping wood with a little little light slice on it, but it didn't didn't bother uh, Fought no Shiro. They battled through some of those neutralizing shots from Lee Whitwell. Yeah. <laughs> Finger wag. <laughs> And I'm, uh, I, I would say I like the move from Fott. Uh, probably didn't get it to the perfect spot as Whitwell was right there, but I like the aggression with him stepping over. Five, six. And look, they, no one ever thinks, I've probably been called on this 74 times, honestly. And I'm, you th oh, he's joking, he's exaggerating, no. I've been called that many times on that. And because yeah, you, when you land, you're like closer to the baseline than the kitchen, so you can't understand it, but it's real. Then you're like four feet back. <laughs> yeah, you're like, it's real. Like, Todd, he's still upset. He doesn't know how he got called for that. <laughs> He'll be watching the stream back after this is over. Yeah. Tough one there from Pat. But yes, uh, you know, obviously everyone makes mistakes. They're human. But Courtney Johnson, she doesn't miss much down there. Great referee. She's on point. I think it grazed Todd's uh, clothing on that shot, even though he was able to get it back. Yeah, so. Look, nice little slap. So as a new member of the 40 plus club, I can I can say they're old. We got a lot of age and experience on that far end of the court with Pat Smith and Lee Whitwell. Nice shot from Fought, 39 for Pat Smith, 48 for Lee Whitwell. shot from Oshiro. That's one of my favorites. When you're pushed wide, you speed up through the middle. Right. It's tough. And, and with the spin she creates, it's not high. She was able to get that on his hip. hip yeah. Very tough to do from that spot. Nice shot, Bobby. Yeah, Todd, Todd fought showing a little frustration with that drive. Got to make him play. That's the toughest, the decision making. Am right. I going to take this out of the air? Is right. it going to be a touch dink? Is it going to, or am I going to let it bounce? Okay. Good decision. 
Yeah, same tough. thing. Same thing with the Ernie, yeah, it's a tough spot. And the thing is, um, uh, to, to your point on that previous point, is a good wide athletic base is good, but you can also get stuck in the mud. So you gotta have those little adjustment steps, otherwise you're gonna be reaching too much. Well, we also have another special guest joining us. I believe it's a birthday girl. Yes, I am down here with Annalie Waters. birthday here spinning it in Mesa Arizona MLP how's your day been so far it's been really good I've been playing pickleball so I couldn't ask for anything else we did hear that you got a pretty special gift can you let everyone know what that was yeah so for my 16th birthday last week I was surprised with a car from Carvana uh, it was amazing I can't wait to drive it when I get I know you think with all the experience she has number one player in the world and you think she's a lot older but just 16 and how has coming here to MLP has your team been feeling she's on the fives how are you guys looking for tomorrow yeah we've been warming up really well it's been hard with the wind to practice today but I'm super excited for tomorrow and we're gonna bring a lot of energy amazing well there you have it guys make sure you do not miss her she's on the fives they'll be starting tomorrow in the Premier League Emily Waters sweet 16 go to her Instagram wish her a happy birthday well there you go that makes sense for the car game Carvana. The title sponsor, of course, of the PPA Tour. That's right. What a stud. You gotta love it. Annalie Waters, si veteran stud, number one player and only 16 <laughs> years old. I was gonna old. say, being a vet at 16 is pretty, pretty it's, wild. It's wild, but it's true. There's that heavy. There he goes. He needed, he needed that. That's a nice heavy forehand from Pat Smith. I just like this from Lee Whitwell. She uh, flicked this away like she was getting rid of a bug in the air. <laughs> Get out of here. Let's go. Let's see if old Pat. <laughs> Did you see her eyes at the end? <laughs> what just happened? Uh, the woman of true expression right there. Yeah. Yeah, hands on the hips for Pat. Got to find a way to get it going. Go, Bobby. Go, Bobby. 12, 9. slide from Pat Smith. So good, and the key there was he cleared his body. Yeah. So a couple, whether it was Todd Fott or uh, Oshiro attacking him at that right side of his body, he was a little late clearing his body a couple times. That time, out of the way, smacked the winner. Okay, so after this point, you got to describe exactly what you mean by clearing your body out. Nice Ernie from Todd Fott, yes. So often a great play in pickleball is attacking right at the person, not necessarily to space. So if you, go, if you can't get your body out of the way, that creates a big issue. So once you clear your body out of the way, it gives you the best chance to counterattack. Oh, oh, Pat, a little Ernie of his own. Back-to-back -back athletic Ernies from the fellas. Love to see it. How do you say let's go in German? I don't know. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? That's all I got. That's all, that's all, that's all well, I got. Well, again, we'll ask Cam in the post game. Got a pa paddle on it, just not quite the angle he was looking for. Yeah, nice loose arm power from Todd Fott. Good communication, too. Oshiro was thinking it might be hers. Todd calling her off and putting it away. Solid stuff. I'll tell you what, the squeeze, they have not really given anything to the ranchers. There's been very, very few unforced errors. They're playing a really tight, solid game right now. That ball was called wide. Lee believes it was in. She kind of did the pre-come on there. She wants a challenge. It's really tough because she hit that inside out forehand with the side spin moving away from the court. So, I mean, that ball was obviously in the entire time until maybe right when it landed. We'll see, we'll see a closer look here shortly. Yeah, she was looking. She was looking for. I was saying she was looking for info from her teammates, yeah. and no one really could give her much. So she decided to pull the trigger on it. We can get a. Spurs. Have you ever seen Spurs on a pickleball court? Not sure. 
I have, but those those aren't your average run of the mill spurs either. That's that's a real set of boots right there from Tim Cliff. That's, I, I think that that, I think that that's more in than the other one. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, I can't, yeah. I, I do think yeah, it's I in. I looked at this and said that, I think that ball's into me, because that's about yes. half the ball yes. so on I, the outside, I, like right on the outside of the line. Right, so I would guess that this one, so it was called out, so they have to overturn it. That's my only qualm yeah, with it. But if point. I had to pick, I would say that this ball is in a barely. You've done a good job. <laughs> We're not going to talk about my record, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. So the ball was out. Yeah, it could. Not it, enough to overturn. It, it could have been out, or it could have been not enough to overturn. Who knows? I'm still saying I was right. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm gonna chalk that up. Anytime you're just you, not right, I'm not putting my stamp on anything. But just when you're not right, you need help, so you need to get on the board. So it's your, it's I'll yours, take it. it's yours. I think I think he's 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 around 500 for his Ernie attempts. A couple a couple rough ones early on, but the last two successful for old Patty Smith. much as you look at that and go, amazing job, Pat Smith. I love these, the cuts from Lee Whitwell to get up to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, one of the best in the game. Very feathery touch from Lee Whitwell. There we go, good <laughs> <laughs> Lee goes, you're welcome, partner, you're welcome. There we go, a little momentum here. They have to have it, obviously, so it's great to see them stepping up. They're gonna need a little bit more, though. There is a little more. Yeah. 15, 16. Yeah, and, and Todd looks right over after that ball over to Bobby Oshiro and says, let's take a timeout. Smart move. And that was one of those situations for Todd. I mean, obviously a very explosive athlete. He's good at those Ernie's, but there's almost no reward for that specific ball. There's really nothing that he could have done with that. So I would have liked him just put that Ernie in the back pocket and just hit a regular ball in the next one. It's tough though when you have that ability. I do not have that ability, so it's not really an option for me. So uh, he, he can go either way. <laughs> I'm self-deprecating over here. I didn't do that. That wasn't me. Usually oh, I'm the one giving you I a hard time. I do remember about <laughs> two hours ago when you said, can you see over the net, Adam? I remember you saying that, so that was real sweet of you. Ah, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure it was in reference to something else. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm 15, sure. 16 now the Ranchers trail by just one. Again, the Ranchers lead this game at number four. The second mix doubles to push to a dream breaker. Thanks so much for joining us here. Major League Pickleball here in Mesa. Always picking on the short guy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I swear I'm nice. Mm -hmm. Huge point coming out of the timeout. Yeah, it's a great call by you. They've been on a run of points here for Smith and Whitwell. That spells trouble, but... That ball's just out of bounds. Yeah, Lee unfortunately got herself in a little predicament in the back of the court uh, and had to throw up a, a lob and, and fought know exactly what to do with it. 17, 15. Hey, and that's one of the benefits of being a more steady player. When you do decide to pull the trigger and you have a little deception on it, nobody sees it coming. Yeah. Perfectly placed from Lee Whitwell. Well, and it's fun to see exactly how her paddle traveled too and why that was almost a misdirect. There's another great stroke from Lee Whitwell. It 
17 all. Oh, and a big let's go off the let court. Todd Fott didn't like it, and he tossed the ball away from his opponents because he was not thrilled with the come on after, after the let court. Yeah, but it was a nice stroke. Well, this isn't tennis. That's more of a tennis move there, but who? That's fair. <laughs> this, is, this is what it's this all about. This is her arena. Yes. That's yes. all I'm saying, though. Like, <laughs> she is the matador of Major League Pickleball. Yeah! And again, wow. everything wow. is going the direction of Smith and Whitwell. So good. It was working. He checked. To try it. He checked. We, we gotta try. Yeah, it. we talked about that earlier. Bot <laughs> giving it back again. Yeah, and I think, and Bobby was trying to tell him, but I think she was a little late on her call. So really tough, uh, especially because it wasn't totally smashed. It was a little bit of that mid-pace shot. Couldn't let it go. Game point for the Ranchers. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That was aggressive. But hey, at this point too, side out scoring. I feel like you got a little bit more room to work. Definitely. just too good. Great counter attack uh, from Todd Fott. Lee Whitwell just right there. Four digs in a row. And that's it. Lee Whitwell puts the ranchers on the back and closes out game four. 21-18. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Wow. <laughs> the veterans coming through in the clutch. My goodness, Lee Whitwell. She's just the roots for this. So good. Look at that smile. Pat Smith stepping up right at the right time, too. And you know what that means? We're going to the dream breaker, but let's catch up with these two. Lee Whitwell, you won that on energy, but you guys do have chemistry, played on the PPA tour, you've been successful. How much does that play a role into coming into a team event like MLP? I mean, it always helps when you're playing with somebody you've dated before. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> 1863, no. I mean, we've got chemistry, we've got, we play together, we feed off each other's energy, and it's always a pleasure. Anytime I get to share the court with this guy, it's gonna be a blast. Well, you guys did just that, and now you have to completely shift your mindset from doubles to singles. Singles How are you guys able to do that heading into the Dream Breaker right now? That's a great question. Um, well, I think we'll have a, a quick talk and then we'll figure it out, but we're clearly our team is a single specialist team, so we've got Lee Whitwell, MVP of the first uh, MLP, so let's see if we can get some Lee Whitwell magic. There you guys have it. It's two to two. We're heading into a Dream Breaker. We'll be right back after this. Actually, I think we might be sticking around here, Cam. Thanks so much, because as we head into the Dream Breaker, it's all good, Cam. It happens. It's been a lot of TV today. You're doing a great job. Uh, but no, as we head into the Dream Breaker, I'm glad she 
brought it up, having to switch the mindset from doubles to singles because it is truly a different game. Right, and, and, a, and a big comeback there from the ranchers. Sometimes you kind of get that emotional dump where something big happens and you have to pick you have to pick yourself back up. Um, so I would definitely give the squeeze a slight advantage here in the Dream Breaker. Uh, and I know I've harped on this a couple times because I like messing with these guys, but I'm going to read the ages of the players. So for the ranchers, we have 48, 33, 39, and 48. And this singles game, much different than doubles, that that youth plays a big role. So we'll see if the experience and as as uh, Pat Smith said, some Lee Whitwell magic for the ranchers can carry them through. They got a tall task ahead though. Without a doubt, so switching to the singles format. Championship court. It's like around the 
Yeah, that's some of my most fun times when it's the day before everyone's trickling in, you get a bunch of rent games, every, everything's loose before it gets too tight. Uh, obviously right in the mix here for the challenger level, but the premier guy's got one more loose day before it gets serious. The wind seems to have died down, also something to note. There's a little breeze still coming in, but not quite what it was even just 30 minutes ago here on the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. <laughs> Richie Talzon, owner of BLQK, right in the mix with the dance-off. <laughs> Are you allowed to win prizes if you're a team owner? I don't see why not. I Look, mean, he's, get, he's well. getting a hoodie. He's getting oh, a hoodie right now. <laughs> it's like, you know, if you work here, you're not allowed to enter in it. Yeah, exactly. Any of the raffles. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I always feel like that with the Rams. I'm always like, so uh, these sweepstakes, is there like, can I sneak into this? Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely I'm, a no-go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is almost game time. All right, so starting off, Pat Smith with the surf. And first point to Smith. Let's go. Really nice tennis background from Pat Smith as well. You see him sliding over, protecting that backhand and ripping an inside out forehand. Big ball from Patrick. Same thing, he goes up the line this time. Back to back for Smith. It's the danger with that inside out on the backhand side. A lot of deception there. Mm -hmm. You're gonna rip that cross court or just go straight up the line. So 2-0. Two, zero. Two, zero. two inches wide. Yeah, I, I definitely held my breath for a second while that was traveling in the air, and it, it landed just wide, though. And he comes back with two, so two apiece. Yeah, nice dipping forehand from Todd Fott, forcing uh, Pat Smith to hit up on the ball. Always a good, good idea. Force that opponent to hit up. So making Lee Whitwell run is Oshiro as she's first on the board in this rotation. Yeah, definitely, obviously much different sport with some overlaps with tennis, but that court is much smaller. So movement issues, usually a little less of an issue. Miss return there. It's interesting too, to see how people return in singles versus doubles. I'm always wondering if they're gonna work with a slice or the topspin tried to work with a slice there. This time she just goes perfectly to the back line twice. Yeah, good adjustment off the wet tape. Yeah, definitely in the singles game. You're getting more reward for your wrist, so going for those first couple shots of the point, serve, return, or, or third shot drive, going for more makes sense. Just on the edge of the line for Oshiro, so she gets the advantage now. Oh, nice, and, and Oshiro fired up too, I like it. Dawson now versus Jeannie o Akiro. One for Jeannie. Callan in a pretty good spot to approach the net on the backhand side. Just clipping the tape though. And Arakina gets tripped up again, that backhand side at her foot. We saw that a lot in doubles. Yes. And a very crisp volley from Callan forcing Jeannie to stay back. Oh, looking for the corner pocket. Yeah, nice roll from Irokina once again, forcing Callan to hit up. Wasn't in a terrible position, but certainly not an easy shot for Callan. 
next rally for these two. Nice chase. And the put away from Dawson. Dallas not ready to get off the court. <laughs> he just looks at me and says, is that is it? Do is I, that it? Am I done? He's am in the I zone. Done? He's in the zone, man. <laughs> so two apiece between those two. Now Rutger versus Deacon. Nice roll and the leave. Leave. She gets the first. Right up the line for Rutger. She just walks over, a little casual hand slap with the with the teammates. Just a nice little one-two combo. Just another day in paradise. It's now 9-5 for the squeeze. Yeah, much much better return from Steve Deacon. Left a couple shor short uh, earlier, so catching the, the back third of the court, forcing Rachel Retger into a tough pass. So two and two. So two the last two. the last two, Gallen and Jeannie, Rachel and Steve, all split. And actually fought and Pat, or excuse me, fought and Smith split as well. Seven, yeah, great dig on the first ball from Todd Fought. Pretty nice cross court forehand from Pat but definitely out of position once Todd was able to neutralize. Beautifully played point by Smith. Yeah, I mean, slice backhand on the line, moving away from his opponent. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's a pretty quality shot. <laughs> as close as it gets. I'll tell you what, that technique looked pretty on point. That two-hander from Pat looked very smooth and he only missed it by an inch or two. We're gonna change ends now and again, we mentioned multiple times the wind direction. Right now it is steady, steady, steady. A welcome sight to many of these players. Discussion has been tenfold in regards to the weather. Yes. But the sun is shining and the wind is gone, so does it get much better than this? Yeah, you're exactly right. <laughs> I think the I think the clip I think the clip of the waters on the outside court with, with the yeah. hair the hair blowing, but it really has calmed down quite a bit. Back out. Rancher's trail, 8 to 11. Quick feet from Fott. Wow! The yeah. wheels on Fott, unreal. Yeah, so good. I mean, I'm not sure Pat Smith can play a better point. That's just too good from Todd Fott. Great footwork, great court coverage. some time there to come in, just yeah. misses. After that return, uh, I was thinking maybe she would sneak in after the return, but. Oh, looking for it. Lee Whitwell just misses again. Oshiro with the first two. Yeah, pretty clean looking stroke from Lee. And that's three straight now. Oshira was the one that gave him the advantage in the first round. Just steady Eddie. Oshira moves well, covers the court. Might not do anything special, but she's not doing anything wrong right now. Oh, the hustle from Lee pays off. Oh, too much court to work with, I think, from Oshiro. <laughs> But that, uh, that was a big point there. Nine, to avoid the sweep. And a fault, so. Yeah, great forehand from Jeannie, yes. 
Jeannie Arakina. So that was the, the momentum fault. So he, he volleyed the ball and then his momentum carried him into the kitchen. Looking for the deep corner. <laughs> that was a lot closer than you thought. Dawson was a little smooth on that one, but I had to be a little scared. <laughs> that front shoulder from Irakina till the last moment, throwing Callan Dawson off balance and whipping it cross court. Really nice shot from Jeannie. So they split two and two. I love how everyone's locked in. No one knows when it's their time to get off the court. No. Everybody's wanting to stay. I like that. 17-11. Yeah, much more of a penetrating shot on these last handful of slices from Steve Deacon, and uh, it's been a big difference uh, in the points so far with him against Rachel. The element, too, of playing four points and then sitting for 12 is another. Like, you haven't touched a ball in 12 rallies. Now I gotta go out and play singles? Yes. Woof. And those singles points are short, too. Not a lot of time to get into rhythm. she snuck in. I'm not sure Steve realized that Rachel Reger was coming forward. Very crisp volley from her. Steve on the full stretch couldn't come up with it. I've already said it four times. The man's 48 years old, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Uh. <sighs> Thank you very much. I mentioned I had not seen Todd Fott play singles, but he's playing exactly how I'd expect him to. Really calm, controlled, and great court coverage. Yeah, and he's been on the winning end of this matchup versus Smith. Yeah, Smith. A significant margin. Right, yeah, Smith started hot, and it's been all fought ever since. Fought's actually won the last five between the rotations. So it is now match point for the Orlando Squeeze. the hold on the backhand, a little more deception from Pat Smith. Exactly, we saw Irakina do it and pull it cross court. That was the Smith version where he took it up the line. Again. And it's going to now sit between Oshiro and Whitwell. If there's ever a time for some Whitwell magic, it's right now. <laughs> and on the first ball for Oshiro, she finds the victory for her team. So the Orlando Squeeze win three to two in the Dream Breaker. That's a great match. Just absolutely outstanding play. They were up 2-0 before heading into mix, and then next thing you know, charging back were the ranchers in their mixed matchups. But then ultimately, too much pressure applied from the Orlando squeeze. They made orange juice, you could say. Good one, Cameron. Oh, come 
Come on. <laughs> Seriously? It was your. We, we, we did a whole match with the squeeze, and that's our first orange juice reference. So that was I think good. it's pretty good. I talked good. about applying pressure. Come on. <laughs> we, we can take a break now. I got to get rid of this guy. I'm sending it on down to Cameron Blackwood with our winners. Take it away, Cam. Kellen, your team was up 2 0. They came back, fought 2 2. You go into the Dream Breaker. What did you guys talk about in your huddle before you stepped on? Honestly, all we were talking about was really just pay attention, get some good deep serves, some deep returner serves, and go from there. And Rachel, how different is it playing a woman on the other side to playing a guy? It's a very different type of singles game. Yeah, definitely very different. You kind of expect the guy to come to the net a little bit more, so they put a little pressure. They're bigger, so they can cover more court. Um, so it's definitely a different strategy when playing a guy. And Todd, I got to go to you. You had a little slower start. You went two and two with Pat Smith, but then you just came alive. How were you able to regroup and get this win for your team? Uh, shout out to Chris Williams and Ogden because he helped me play singles for the last two weeks. And we finally got some deep returns. I had some good volleys. Uh, yeah, really happy with it. And what does it say about your team that you were up, you then you had to go into a dream breaker, they fought back, but the heart of your team moving on into this weekend? Yeah, I think uh, we just we just kind of huddled and say, hey, we want this, we want this dream breaker, and we did it. There you guys have it. They came out on top. We have them going into this dream breaker here. Back to you guys. Squeeze. Squeeze. MLP Mesa is brought to you by Aura Organic. Fuel your lifestyle with Aura the cleanest, most powerful plant-based supplements. Knock around sunglasses, quality shades that won't break the bank. Pro XR Performance, innovation you can handle. Skechers, experience comfort on the court with Skechers Pickleball. Margaritaville, escape to your personal paradise. Stay, play, live, and dine in Margaritaville. Michelob Ultra, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. And I said, Saturday, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, yeah. So if he wants the end, water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. ProXR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. ProXR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball.
Welcome back to Championship Court. Dominic Catalano, Chad Edwards here with you. The Bay Area Breakers taking on the DC Pickleball Club. Chad, good women's doubles matchup here. Some faces and names you may not know, but you're gonna know really quick here between the two teams. Rodzikowska and Summers taking on Bates and Palicelli. Chad, thoughts on this one early on before it gets going? Yeah, I think for, um, for DC to have a chance in this one, we did see them in their first match this morning. That they have to clean up some of the mistakes that they made early on this morning. They made an adjustment in their second round match, but I think for Bates and Paleocello, they have to play some clean pickleball. Rajkowska and Summers, they've been consistent in their first two. Bay Area Breakers coming into this one, 2-0, and oh, DC 1-1. One and one. Yeah, so we are kind of taking a look at the court behind us, too. It is This pool is being played out right now on the court behind us as the Black Diamonds are playing Columbus. And then on championship court, it is DC taking on Bay Area. Bay Area, like you said, Chad, 2-0. and oh. But if DC can pull this out, they have a good chance of moving on um, to the playoff round, the quarterfinals. Bay Area, if they win, they're sitting pretty at 3-0, and oh, almost looking for a bye. Uh, coming out of pool play or group play. Yeah, the way these uh, the way these pools are are laid out, if you win three, you're guaranteed to be through. Yes, you've got to win at least two. Looks like we are just about ready to go here on Championship Court. So it is, Chad, it's a little breezy in here. Uh, as we were out on grandstand court earlier, um, the wind started to pick up almost at around 10.30, 11 o'clock, made things a little tricky. And now 
on championship court seems to be swirling in here. Well, especially in here with the cover over it and then, you know, you've kind of got open areas between the bleaches. As it's coming in, it, like you said, it swells in the court and then goes out. We started the morning off extremely chilly, then the sun came out and then the wind picked up. We are ready to go, summer's to serve to start. Oh, that win right there on cue. Pellicelli with the miss hit on the return, doesn't go anywhere, and then the wind just knocks it down. Using the conditions to your advantage right there. Oh, and again, I think Rajkowski is gonna have to make that adjustment. You know, it's gonna be difficult to reach into the kitchen for those balls. You're better off letting it bounce and then creating an angle off of those that are getting pushed down so much. Next one better go to her. Good finish there from Palicelli and a very good start here early for DC. Yeah, it's different than what we saw them on Grandstand Court this morning. Stays in the corner right there for Summers. A little long there from Bates on the forehand. Again, thinking that wind might knock it down, it doesn't. the second one from Summers. She's not hitting that roll extremely hard. She's using more spin, making it look like that ball's gonna float out and then dropping in the back of the court. Three, three. Summers trying to step into that one, but again, they have hung up in the wind a little too long. specialist just getting balls back but has the ability to create some power with that one-two combination that we saw earlier good job from Bates moving that ball around Got caught right there in the left foot. good ball there from Rodzikowska up her dinks, right? She went to the left foot and then to the inside right foot of Rodzikowska, kind of having her not set, creates a hole in the middle. Yeah, the ball caught the line. A little bit of a miss hit help there for Summers, catching it just off the End of the paddle, a little bit of edge guard. Five, six. Like that ball right there from Bates, as she saw that Summers was not moving in on that, keeps her back, forces the air. Back to a two point lead for DC. Bates catching that one a little late. Ball almost behind that right hip. It's hard to roll when that ball's so far behind. And then a miss serve there from Summers. 
Just no one seems to want to pull away here to start this match. Yeah, good spot. Palicelli recognizing that Rajkowski is having to run back out of the kitchen after that ball from Bates just dribbled over the net, went back behind her into the body. from Bates. Good patience there you see from Bay Area. As they've been wanting to speed a lot up, but slowed that down to work a good point. Nice angle there for the finish. Bates setting up that angle with the first ball through the middle, pinching them in and then able to go out wide. Bates going again outside and inside. That seems to be working for them right now. Chad, Bay Area down by four. Anything they need to change up here on the end change? I would like to see Bay Area be a little bit more aggressive. Like take that last point, for example. There are a couple of balls that we call kind of like dead dinks where they just sit up and they're right there in front. Those are your, your times that you can speed a ball up into the body, uh, kind of, or, or even a, a softer roll that Summers has done a few times head high that you think is going out but drops in just to give different looks. You know, if, if you're not putting a whole lot of pressure on and, and you know, I don't feel like Bates and Pellicelli are kind of scared of anything right now. They're not worried about a speed up. They're, they're allowing Bates to move the ball around. So I think at this point, you're down by four. You've just switched and you're going into the wind a little bit more now. For Rajkowski and, and Summers, take a couple of chances. All right, let's see what adjustments they do make on the, the end change. But it's all DC right now, up 11-7 in the ever so important women's doubles matchup. I'm okay with the first one. I think she's got to do a little bit more with that foot, that that first poach. But she got stuck after that forehand, opening up the backhand. Good angle there from Rodzikowska as Bates trying to slow that down, drop that back in, but nothing she can do on this angle here. But that was all started from the summer's speed up. I think they might challenge that one. No. Nope. That ball missing just, just deep. Good start here on the end change for Bay Area. Trying the around the post is Bates. And it's a 4-0 lead, or 4-0 run, excuse me, for Bay Area here to start. Check out that close call you guys have on screen. set up there again from Summers. So now she's taking some chances, they're calculated risks. Good speed up there, kind of jamming Bates. She's not able to do much with it and then getting the next ball down. Forcing here a timeout, Chad, from DC, because as we were said, it was 11-7, Bates and Palicelli in DC with a lead on the end change, but it's a 5-0 run from Rodzikowska and Summers forcing the timeout. 
What are they talking about in the huddle here as DC has given up five and the lead? Well, I think for, for Bay Area, you know, continue with the aggression that, that gave them this run right now. For DC, now you have to switch your focus. You were controlling it, but now Bay Area is starting to be a little bit more aggressive. Look for the counterattacks. Expect every ball to come hard. If they hit a ball from down up, attack it. If that ball is starting to come up and down, we see Lee and Anna Lee Ward Court side, checking out some of the action before Anna Lee starts their pool play tomorrow with the Premier. As we come back in from this timeout, Rachel Summers to serve and Bay Area up by one. as she saw an opening in the middle and out of the corner of her eye just flips that ball with the two-hander down the middle and they continue their run here. Yeah, so you just saw Bates want going cross court, not coming back fully to the middle. what Bates and Palacelli need to do. How do you counter their pace? Give it right back to them. Stop sitting on your heels and being playing defense. Now you got to flip it and be offensive here. You watch her right there, Chet. Get this paddle, as you'll see on this replay. Watch her get this paddle out in front early and punch this down. No backswing, just straight down. point there for DC, I think, Chad. Yeah, and Palicelli had a ball there that she potentially could have sped up, but what she did was just hit a deeper, more penetrating dink that forced them to try to pull out something that wasn't quite there. Bait ball, a little bit right there as it was baited for Palicelli to speed that up and Summers all over it. that from Red you know she's she has that extensive tennis background. up again here at 15. I'm going to correct myself on it's Reg Kaska, but I'm looking on the back of a shirt and it's no bounce, come on. that's a good overhead there from Bates down the middle got a lot on that and they regain a one point lead. Yeah, that's a good ball from Summers there again. That little a little bit of a dead dink where it's just sitting up in the middle of the kitchen, a little bit above the knees, gets underneath it. Quick flick, quick roll. That's 
such a good two-hander there from Rodzikowska. And now they take a one-point lead. No one wanting to pull away here. Good move. And smart there from Rodzikowska because she didn't try to step in and take that ball. She knew Summers was back behind her. As we see right there, did you get that ball down? Another good spot. That's the second time she's caught Bates not fully covering, covering the middle. Palicelli slides to the line to protect that. Bates needs to take at least one more step there. Right foot, center line. Oh, nice ball from Bates as she had Summers. That was her issue as she was sprinting up as Bates is hitting this. Bates sees that and goes right foot right past her. Now it is 2017. Bay Area will now be frozen on 20. Bates and Palacelli will freeze when they get to 18. Side out scoring for Bay Area right now. Just like that, we are all frozen. Side out scoring for the remainder of this match. Oh, it's on the line. Oh, that was in. Palicelli throws the change up in there, Chad. She allows. Bates allows Palicelli to come in there and hit the off speed, and it changed everything up. Summers into the net. Much earned point for Bates and Palicelli. Yeah, and one thing to note with Bates' overheads right there, those balls are bouncing on the kitchen line. In order to do that, she's hitting it straight down. Well, it takes away a lot of the pace that way. Times of the well chair by or chair by Rod Zikowska trying to flip middle. Yeah, she didn't quite open up the middle enough right there. They, there was still coverage from Palicelli and, and Bates. So I would have liked to see one more ball, probably out wider to the backhand to draw Bates away from the middle before that. Bates not too happy with herself after missing that one in the net. They do answer though and tie it up at 20. No game point anymore for Bay Area. And right on cue, they will have their second game point here, 21-20. Yeah, Palicelli's just caught standing straight up on that one. victory for Bay Area here in women's doubles to start off, Chad. Yeah, good back and forth battle right there with DC going up early, but Bay Area able to change up their strategy and kind of take advantage of being a little bit more aggressive on that after that end change and the wind into their face. So a good and ever so important victory for Bay Area in women's doubles. We know how important that women's doubles matchup is to get on the board first and take a 1-0 lead here in group play. But we're going to throw it down sideline. 
Cam, Evan, you're with our victors. I am. Eva, we saw you at 8 a.m. this morning. It was freezing in here. It's a little bit warmer, but the wind is still swirling. A little bit of a slower start on, they say, the bad side. How much did the end change help you, too? You know, I actually like conditions like that. You know, it makes play a little bit more uh, entertaining. Um, I used to hate playing in wind, and my uh, college coach told me that you need to learn how to use it to your advantage, and that stuck with me for the rest of my life, so I'm loving it. And you guys had, you came back, we're looking strong out there. They started to come back in those tight moments. What are you talking about to close out this match? Honestly, we're just like, make the thirds. Um, when we have match point, just make the third, make them, you know, make them beat us. Um, and let's just, just push through. There you have it, Bay Area Breakers up 1 0. We'll be right back with men's doubles. Don't go anywhere. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Arizona. Check out the remainder of our schedule for today on Championship Court. Next matchup coming at you at 4 p.m. local time. The Brooklyn Aces taking on the Atlanta Bouncers. So that, that matchup will be here next after Bay Area finishes up here on, with DC. Let's take a look at Pro XR Pickleball booth. Those guys in there supporting Chicago Slice. Ray J. Murphy in there talking paddles as he usually does at the tournaments with all these guys. But check out all the sponsors here. We get ready for men's doubles now. Bay Area in the driver's seat, Chad. What are you looking for out of this matchup with Pablo Tellez and Christian Alshon taking on Query and Auburn? So I I feel for Bay Area, you know, this is a dangerous combination. Tellez, very crafty, especially on the forehand side. Alshon, we've already seen the flashes that he can bring to the court. Query, in my mind, has to be more aggressive in this, especially from what we saw from him earlier this morning. Yeah, baby! Fire fight to start off, Chad. If this is any indication how this match is going to go, we're going to have some fun here on Championship Court. Side out flick right there. The show backhand, drop the paddle head under, flick the forehand. Yes. Oh, 
experience. Good, good job right there. He got jammed up too, paddle on the hip, but a good block. from Auburn is tempting Alshon to try and flip that on the forehand. Do I want to do yeah, I want to say, say same it. guy right yeah, then yeah. Miss, <laughs> missing the sub into the net. Oh, back to back miss subs. A win behind Alshon and Tez on the top of your screen. Yeah, nice drive with some heavy topspin from Query right there, causing the miss hit from Tez. Yeah, that was increased by hitting into the wind as well, just dropping down right when it got to Tez. I think Bates is going to get called for a little interference there on the sideline. Screamed out that the point was one and over before Tejas even hit the ball. So it's going to be a hinder on the bench of DC. It's going to be a side out to Tejas. No, I know. You want the point, you can have it. Oh, yeah, okay. Nice. That's a great <laughs> drop right there. Beautiful drop. A little, little bit of chirping there from Tejas. Started by Query with a nice backhand roll to get those balls popped up right there. Yeah, and compared to what we saw this morning, he is being more aggressive, taking some risks. See, that's the difference I'm seeing him right now. He pinched middle to try and attempt to go get that ball that dropped. He didn't get it, but he's looking for that now. Good That's talk. Just, <laughs> <laughs> you go, you, I know what you were going to say. This is not a good That's, pull. That's not a good option right there. No. That ball set up, but he, he just went straight for body. Ooh. That's a nice poach by Sam Query right there. Guys, he's starting to feel a little more comfortable on the court, and we're seeing it from 8 o'clock this morning to right now at 3 o'clock. The improvement already in the, the touch, the feel for the game. He's starting to feel it right now. I like it. Yeah, good aggression there from Avon and Query. Not too sure who hit that last ball, if it was Avern or Query, but they both had the paddle there at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good run from DC right here. Tejas and Alshon not having any answer for it for the aggression and power from Avern and Query. Yeah, nice little backhand roll by Alshon in the middle. Finally needed to get back on the board there. One point away are DC from an end change. Big put away there from Query as we'll change ends here. 11-6 lead for the DC pickleball team. Watch this replay here. Setting up query with the two-hander 
for the put away. And that's a nice job by DC to jump out to this lead. You check out the head to head win probability powered by Duper. It's as close as it's really going to get here, Chad. 54% to 46, and it is pretty evenly matched so far. Yeah, and, and we've seen these matchups kind of throughout the MLPs. When it's that close, it's really hard to predict which direction it's going to go. You know, some of the ones that we've seen, we've seen the occasional 60-40, uh, you know, 65-35 yep. kind of deal. But this one here, I think Tez and Alshon, now that they're going into the wind, different game plan. Five-point lead here for DC as we come back in on the end chain. Again, Chad, I just I don't like that decision right there from Alshon. He tries to keep that lower, but the ball's already sitting so low. I'm okay with it if he uses his legs. He stood straight up on that one. Yeah, come on, right yeah, Tez and Alshon just not quite in rhythm right now. They're pressing, trying to do a little too much. That's good forehand from Alshon. And he needs a couple more like that to get back into a rhythm here. But I like exactly what you said, Chad. It seemed to be pressing a little bit. Yeah. Oh, good reach in from Query right there. That ball floated up just enough. Quick backhand flick and Vern there for the finish. Nice angle there from Alshon. Just big reach. And then like you're showing me, Chad, here, <laughs> is he rolls that over beautifully with the wrist. Still a six point lead here for DC though. Look at big man go. Good work from Sam Query there, jumping that sideline. Catch this on the replay. Big right step. Oh, it's hand. Yeah. All right, might have been hand, wrist, elbow, chest. As Alvern <laughs> says, he goes, hit me in the chest. Oh, Alvern created the opportunity right there, but got too big with the backswing. Tejas has to be careful with the amount of risk he uses on that. Good step in drive from Alshon. Query catching that one behind the right hip. There's a slight hesitation there of whether he's going to take it with Avern coming forward. The setup from Alshon on that point. He had a forehand roll drop that set everything up for him, but unfortunately, off the tape, and it allowed DC to get back in. As you see, Anna Lee and Lee Waters watching closely. Good ball there from Alshon. Overn getting a little bit on top of that forehand top spin. I mean, like you mentioned before, Dom, Query feel, looking much more comfortable on the court right now. Ooh. He hesitated on the move. It was a good setup, good setup ball from Query. Avon just hesitated. Wasn't able to get that one out in front. Get out. Oh, no what? way. What a ball from Olshan. But that's a reverse forehand yes. right there. He flicks he, the paddle over. No look almost, too. Watch him completely turn Flick his body. Over. Yeah. Beautifully done by Christian Olshan. Here comes Bay Area. Back now within two with Olshan serving. DC had all the momentum. Not anymore. 
deep spinning sub there from Alshon. And that's how quickly a game can change with rally scoring. And now we have a timeout from DC. I mean, a, a good timeout, obviously, you're trying to slow that momentum down, but I might have taken it one or two points earlier as you felt that momentum. They do take it now. They still do have a lead. They get the side out. They go back up by two. If they give up a point, obviously, we're tied here. What are you talking to in the huddle of D.C. right now, Chad, trying to tell them? Well, I don't think D.C.'s not playing bad right now Let to let Tejas and Alshon back into it. I do think that they've kind of let a few balls get too deep potentially not anticipating that Olshan and Tez are going to speed the ball up. Do we take a look at court two? It's Columbus up 18-15, and they are down 2-0 to Utah, so Columbus needs this one to stay alive and force the second mixed doubles match. Yeah, again we see the query Avone both catching those balls kind of level with the hips. Olshan and Taya is really applying the pressure. Come on. Yeah, it looked like he was going to flick it down the line and then he changed his mind and tried to go back cross court. I almost thought he was going to flick it middle. Yeah. The middle almost seemed open too, but yeah, like you said, Chad, he changed his mind. Nice drop there from Query. Taya is letting that ball get deep again. Needs to drop that left foot back, open the hips, give himself some space. These boys getting a little tight right now. Yeah, we see it from Query as well. It's hard not to play tight here in this situation, but find a way to stay loose. Oh, Taya is coming in hot, but see the paddle way back. Let it get really low, has to hit up on it, hits it long. We're all frozen here. Rally scoring from here on out. But it's match and game point here for DC. Yeah, good spot from Taez. We saw Query kind of lean toward the middle a little bit. Taez bringing that back center of the body. Good job by Al Chad, stepping in and getting on top of that, yes? Yeah, and, and he made his adjustment there. We saw him get a little too, too big with the swing. That one, it's short. The elbow never goes behind the body. It's another game point here for DC. Almost want to see Query take a step to the middle on that one. Hard for Ravon to come back and cover as much as he was trying, especially with the pace he put on the ball. Yeah. A short there from Tejas, just didn't finish. It'll be game point number three here for DC, trying to tie this up at one game apiece. And DC will take this first game 21, or the second game, excuse me, 21 to 18 to even it up. What was the difference at the end there, Chad, for DC? Well, you know, Bay Area tried to make a little bit of a run coming back to 18, but DC was able to make their adjustment and shorten their swings up a little bit, anticipate the power coming from Tez and Olshan, and ultimately able to keep the ball down. That was the, the big difference for them after cutting it a little close. We'll shoot it down to Cameron Blackwood, who is with Stefan Auburn and Sam Query. Stefan, you're going up against a very fiery team with Christian and Pablo over there, but how were you able to neutralize it and come out with the win? I mean, I knew that was going to happen, so I trusted my hands to just beat them in those points and don't let them catch fire, which they almost did, but we, we got lucky and we really held it down. Yeah. And Sam, you're really honing in on your pickleball game, but talk about the really the hard transition you have from tennis over to pickleball. 
Yeah, you know, I always say it's like you can get good pretty quick. It's hard to go to that next level. Uh, Stefan's been like a huge help in that, kind of coaching me along the way. And uh, we played great there. We had a lead. They kind of grinded their way back, and then we did a good job of finishing at the end. There you have it. It's 1-1 now. We are heading into mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. to me nothing can get in my way and when they ask what are you gonna do next i'll say i'm going Too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. Six carbs and 95 calories. Uh, checking out what a view here from Legacy Sports Park here, or Belknap Park at Legacy Sports. Belknap on championship court with a look and a view of CC2 as they're going to a fourth and final game in mixed doubles. 21-19 victory for Columbus in that first mixed doubles matchup to stay alive. But we're back here on championship court. Bay Area and DC. Here at Bell Bank Park. Rodzikowska and Tejas will be on the bench first. And it looks like Summers and Alshon will be out for Bay Area to start. We'll see, it looks like a Palicelli query. Team going against Summers and Alshon. Chad, thoughts on this matchup? Again, we've seen Query and Palicelli early, earlier, and we saw just a little hesitation from Query and mixed doubles trying to take over. Are you thinking or seeing anything different that's going to make this a different matchup for them? Yeah, I like the adjustments that he made in, in men's doubles right there, but like you said, one of the things that we saw earlier this morning is Query was worried about getting beat out wide to the left, so he was kind of leaving the middle open a little bit too much or leaving it for Palicelli to try to cover. Like to see him get big here. Really put the pressure on in the middle. Pelicelli is going to keep you in the point for a long time. Summers, a little lapse in concentration there, missing the first serve into the net. Side out quick to DC. No look forehand does not work the second time for Alshon. Yeah, and I was going to say it on the flip side for Bay Area, Alshon has to try to stay in that controlled chaos. Like a half speed up from Palicelli and Bay Area on the board. 
But that, that's where Olshan has to play right there. He can't try to match hands with Query unless he's open the middle first. just waiting for Palicelli to slow one up. Yeah, and the issue there is Palicelli is going out wide to Summers each time. Doesn't get Query involved. And that's going to be an issue right there because Summers is going to look to attack from her position if Palicelli or Query leave a ball up. Looks like Christian Alshon dialed in now, immediately coming back after losing the men's doubles match with partner Tez. And they are now out to a 4-2 lead. Good spot there from Query, going right at the right foot of Alshon. Stuck in the transition area. It kind of slid on the court, didn't quite come up enough. Nice leave there from Query. Self-defense, self-preservation. Yeah, that was just protecting your face, trying to get out of the way as fast as you can. guard of Palicelli. I think pa Palicelli's got to go more left foot to Summers there. Nice. And too much Alshon again as he's making his presence felt there in the middle trying to speed things up. sequence that we saw before. So Pelicelli again, going out wide to Summers, which allows Summers to create the wider angle back. That keeps Query out of it, and when the pressure does come too much, he has to go down the line, giving that only attempt for Olshan. Yeah, and right now, Olshan's shaking his head. I think he knows he needs to drop that third to Pelicelli and see what's gonna happen. It's another ball up on that forehand. Puts it away in a 9-5 lead for Bay Area. Trying to take a 2-1 lead here. Good aggression there again from Alshon. opinion the problem right here is Summers and Palicelli. Summers is putting stuff on her ball, on her dink. She's speeding up at the right time. Palicelli straight defensive mode. She's pushing back every dink and it's not creating anything. Yeah, she's she's not applying any pressure to Summers. But if you also take a look at the positioning between the two guys, Olshan is splitting that center line where Query is kind of even half a step away from the center line with that right foot. So he's giving Summers a little bit large, more of a larger area to put that pressure on Pelicelli where Olshan is cutting down the area for Pelicelli to hit. That's a little change ends here. 
Bay Area 11-5 lead on DC. We'll see if the end change is good for the DC pickleball team. Oh, and off the tape, getting the roll is Bay Area and they continue to add to their lead. Nice ball there from Summers. As we see Query try to step to the middle and be big, she goes back behind him. All Sean again, getting big in the middle. I like it, make a mistake, so what? He's yeah, been successful got, more than he hasn't. And you've got the room to, to be aggressive right now. Oh, nice try from Palacelli. Here we go. Now that's what we got to see a little more of from Palacelli taking the initiative. Alshon just recognizing where Palacelli and Query were on the court. Query needed to take that ball right here and go back cross court, not middle. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's seen it once already. <laughs> she made the adjustment he, quickly. He did not disguise that one though. No. Ball's just deep. But that's a much better job by Palacelli. She split one in the middle, sped it up a little bit, not 100%, but forced some action. Another good spot there from Summers. I think Query's just not quite recognizing those balls off the paddle. The anticipation factor is not quite there. That's part of being an aggressive guy in the middle. You got to be able to read the paddle, anticipate when it's going to go behind you. There's a nice ball by Query. Is they'll get the side out, but they do have some work to do here on their serve. Down by seven. Can't get all of them back on one point. No. And he's trying to right there. I like the first one, right? First drive. Now step into the next one, drop it in, and get into the point. Good talk by Query on the second overhead. Puts that away, but still a seven point deficit for DC. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> trouble. <laughs> you saw that coming <laughs> shot before. Query almost got that ball in the face from Paleocelli. Even hopped the side of the court open. Flick. Yeah. Taking over right now, nine point lead for Bay Area. Looking to go up 2-1 here, heading into the last mixed doubles matchup. right there will be a game point for Bay Area here up by 10. 
How about Summers getting in the action right there as well, taking some calculated risks and speeding up some good balls. Yeah, I like the adjustment she made. As soon as she saw Pellicelli was going to start playing a little faster paced, she answered. And Chad, this is a big hole for DC to dig out of. What do they got to do to try and amount a comeback? Although, Chad, we have seen comebacks like this with the rally scoring. We have seen comebacks like this before. The only way to really get into this right now, or get back into this, yo, you said it before that Query's trying to get all the points back on one swing. Yes, be aggressive. Yes, take the middle, but don't try to create something from nothing. Maybe take a step back away from the kitchen line. Give yourself a little bit more reaction time. You know Oshan and Summers are going to be aggressive right here. Try to keep the ball down and disrupt their timing and gain some rhythm yourself. 2010 game point here for Bay Area. They are frozen. Do it, 21-10. Bay Area cruising in this first mixed doubles matchup. What was the difference for Alshon and Summers in this, in this match to, to go and take a commanding 21-10 victory? Yo, know, Alshon played under control, but played aggressively. But I think the big difference there in that one was actually Summers. She was the one that was creating the opportunity. She was hitting those deeper penetrating dinks in the cross court, forcing the mistake from Pellicelli that Alshon took advantage of a couple of times. But then also once they got that lead, she started putting the pressure on as well. She went behind Query a couple of times, really challenged his hands. I mean, all, fantastic all around effort from both those players right there. All right, we'll kick it down to Cameron Blackwood who is with our winners. Christian, you and Rachel came out firing. You had a big lead from the start. You kept the lead the entire time. Talk to me about how you were able to switch your mentality going from losing in men's but then coming and winning in mixed. Uh, I was just trying to channel the rage because I, I get pretty upset if I lose, like most of us athletes, but it was good. I was trying to be aggressive but not too aggressive, and Rachel and I, we, we played well. And Rachel, you were having a lot of success on those speed ups. What were you seeing on the other side of the court to pull the trigger? Um, honestly, just lots of patience with dinking cross court, opening up the court, and then pulling the trigger and being ready for it to come back because it came back every time. <laughs> there you have it. We have our next mixed doubles match coming up right after this. Don't go anywhere. Match point. It's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. Six carbs and 95 calories. Our pickleball paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control 
with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game. Because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Welcome back to Mesa, Arizona, kicking off the 2023 MLP season. It's been a good one so far as we have a dance off right now. Annalie Waters is in the middle of all of it. I have Steven Waters over here on the sideline closing his eyes. He does not <laughs> want to watch his daughter dance like this. But hey, checking that out on the Michelob Ultra Joy Cam as Anna Lee just breaking it down right now. We do not know the masked man she's going up against, but I'm gonna say Anna Lee is winning right now. As she usually does, she is dominating out there on court and now in the bleachers in a dance off. Caitlin, Caitlin Kerr in the mix right there. Our hype lady extraordinaire, also one of the owners of the Las Vegas Night Owls. Oh no, Annalise now singing too, so she is rapping, dancing and dominating on court. We'll see what her and the fives can do starting tomorrow on court. But right now, before any of that, one more mixed doubles matchup here, Chad. Bay Area in D.C. Rodzikowska and Tellez trying to end it here in the mixed doubles. Bates and Auvergne are trying to force the dream breaker. Quick predictions, Chad, and thoughts on this match. Well, obviously, Bates and Auvergne really need this one to try to force that dream breaker I think for Rajkowski and Tez, you know, controlled aggression like we saw from Ocean, uh, Ocean and Summers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say Ocean? I said Ocean. And that ball a little long there from Tez. I can get away with saying stuff wrong with an accent. Sometimes. <laughs> and he's right, ladies and gentlemen. The 1-0 lead here. Make that 2-0 here for DC. When we saw them earlier this morning, Auvergne and Bates played extremely well. Yeah, and that is Stefan Auvergne taking control there. Big game. forehand. Run it again. 3 0 lead. Quickly. Did you see, did you see the, route, the route that Bates took right there? It's a big, big banana route running to the sideline, giving Avon some plenty, plenty of space. Yeah! Oh, Tejas keeps that in right there. That looked like it was coming off the paddle way harder than it actually did. Can't fault Bates for thinking that one was going to go wide. Nice ball by Bates, keeping that low, right? And that's how you eliminate a poach like that from Tejas coming in and pinching, keep it down at his feet. Very hard to control that ball. Good leave there from Bates. Tejas is crazy good when he gets that rhythm going, but has a tendency to spray a lot of balls. That around the post was so wide open for Rodzikowska as Bates really gets into this backhand roll. The court so open. Two-hand backhand down the line from Rutzkowska. Let's so take another look at it here. Just, just inside the line. Uh, Bates playing dodgeball against Tejas right now as he's trying to body her up. Hey, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a pickleball. Yeah, good drive, good step in there from Avern. And we've seen Stefan Avern over the past year really become 
a great player and an aggressive player using that big lefty forehand. Nice movement from Avon. Avon actually stepped on Bates at the beginning of that point. We saw one of our matches earlier, Rob Cassidy stepping on the foot of Olivia McMillan and taking her down. And there's Rodzikowska doing exactly what Bates did to Tejas and keeping that ball down, not allowing Auburn to get on top. some additional power from Tejas. Construction there from Shelby Bates as she pulled Tejas to the middle here and finds the sideline. Nice defense from Bates, but Auvern can't dig that last one out as Bay Area stays within two. Good spot there from Avern. is trying to come up and put pressure on, but opening up the feet as the target for Avern's forehand. Just too many times. Yeah, I think she needs to go right foot of Radzikowska there instead of trying to continue to go tight to that sideline. Yeah. Oh, Bates, I don't know if it was there or not, but definitely didn't let it drop. No, I think she, she kind of freaked out a little bit there, not knowing her exact positioning on the court. Inside out there from Auvergne, and we will change ends here. 11 9 lead here for DC. Could have had an 11 7 lead. Allowed Bay Area to get back in. But what's going to be the difference maker here for Chad is they, or Chad, as they do have a two point lead here and need this match to force the Dream Breaker. Yo, Tez is, is trying to be aggressive. He needs to be aggressive, take a lot of court and go middle. But they need to recognize, like Avon did on that last point, when Tez comes over too far, you don't have to be aggressive on that one. Just create a good angle back out wide and keep him honest. Now that gives you the ability to, to go at Rajkowska. They got the flip side. Rajkowska and Tejas right here. Tejas needs to tame down the movement a little bit. Awesome. We have some amazing fans. Thank you all for coming out to Major League Pickleball. As we come back from this end change, DC up by two. Shelby Bates to serve. Too much there from Avant. Almost a little late on that ball. Good speed up there. Wow, that was almost a major collision in the middle here or on the left side from Bates and Auvergne. But a good start on the end change for Bay Area. He 
mishit the heck out of the one off the and edge had guard. So much spin on it. Good job from Teyes getting that in. But yeah, that's what Avon has to be careful of, right? Not trying to add too much power. Good reach in and good spot there from Teyes. Tied here at 12. That's a good spot there from Bates going behind Teyes right there. In your shots. Bates not quite able to dig that one out. All tied again at 13s now. Oh, too big from Bates. That ball was a sitter and she took a big backswing, dumped it straight down into the net. from the net. That's gonna help a lot right here. A two point lead here late is huge. As DC senses that and calls the timeout right away, Chad. I love the timeout here from DC because they've been inching along ever since we switched ends here. They call that timeout to slow the momentum down. What are you talking to DC about here to try and get that momentum back? They had it on the end change. Well, it's a it's a four point swing from Rajkowski and Tay as they were down by two, now up by two. And most of that has come from Avern trying to do too much. They were in control. They were, well, he was putting good pressure on, but then we saw him get a little too big. Some of those balls sprayed. And then Taya and Reg Kaska were able to control theirs a little bit and get some good reach ins and speed ups. Wow, big in here. St. Louis Shock is going to win it all. That is Rod Zikowska to serve up by two, trying to end it here in mixed doubles. Stefan Auburn, Pablo Tejas going at it toe to toe at the kitchen line. Auburn coming out on top. A good deep return. Tejas trying to rush, I mean, sorry, Avon trying to rush that drive. Again, it's keeping that ball down at the feet of Tejas. Oh, off of Avon's paddle, that ball was going out. I think he's trying to get his paddle down, just couldn't get it down fast enough. Nice angle there from Auburn, finally able to put it away, but some great defense from Rodzikowska and Tejas. But he put it away with a slow ball. We talk about change-ups all the time, right? Changing that speed. Courts back to back. Rodzikowska gives one to Auburn. Auburn gives it right back. All tied up now at 17. Oh, almost <laughs> jumped up and over. 
from up here, it looked like it was going over, but does not. And Bates and Auvergne and DC take a one point lead here. I think the pressure was brought on by Bates taking that let court out of the air. She did not let it settle, did not let Tellas and Radzikowska set up. Well, I think if she lets that bounce, it's got so much spin on it, she's not going to catch up to it anyway. Oh, Stefan Auvergne finally able to get out of the way there. And they have a game point here. 2017 to force a dream breaker. He was sitting on it, but his body was moving toward the line. Good spot there from Tears. Both teams frozen now. Side out scoring. No, come on. Good setup, but he went for too much. Game point number two for DC. on the sideline to keep him in it. And then the let court winner. Chad, we get our first dream breaker say, of the day. Means. It's a dream breaker. Here we go on championship court, DC and Bay Area. DC fighting for their life right here. They needed that so bad. Bay Area wants to go 3-0 and set themselves up nicely going into tomorrow. But what a match, 21-10. Bates and Auburn and DC come out on top. AJ Kohler on screen right there in the paint. Take a look at Shelby Bates coming over. It is. We are looking to shoot it down a sideline. And we have Cameron Blackwood, who is sideline with Shelby Bates and Stefan Auburn. Take it away, Cam. So, Stefan, usually we see both the guys playing on the left side in mixed doubles, but not the case today with the two lefties. How does that change the strategy in a mixed doubles match like this? I mean, it definitely changes the patterns, but um, I definitely like the hands battle, and I like going head on with Pablo, so it's perfect. You guys had a close, tight match at the end. How were you able to close it out and force this into a dream breaker? I, I thrive on this. I love this energy. I love the team atmosphere. And I just got really aggressive, big with Stefan, and we were ready for it. There you guys have it. We are headed into a dream breaker. We cannot wait for this. Back up to you, Dom. All right, Bay Area Breakers, DC Pickleball team going to the dream breaker. Chad, now this is where it gets interesting. It's the setup here. Whoever can set their lineup first has almost a very huge advantage going into this, correct? Correct, but I will say that I am favoring Bay Area in the Dream Breaker right now. You've got two, oh sorry, three accomplished singles plays in Rechkowska, Tejas, and Alshon. DC not as known for their singles plays here. Query making his debut a couple of weeks ago in pro singles. Bates dabbles in singles occasionally, but Paleocelli not as much. And Avon the same thing. So it'll be definitely it'll definitely be interesting to see how DC sets their lineup. So first matchup, Chad, Auvergne and Tejas, as we're hearing from courtside. So Sam Query will go second. We take a look at AJ Cola, Karina Tereshenko. Jesse Irvine, and Dom is blocking my screen. <laughs> and Lindsey Newman. All the Premier teams being out practicing today. All right. 
we are all set now for our lineup for singles for Bay Area and DC. So Bay Area and DC going in the Dream Breaker. It'll be Tejas and Auburn. And then it'll be Alshon and Query, followed by Radzikowska and Bates. And then the fourth and final matchup will be Rachel Summers and Monica Palicelli. So it is all set. As you see Steve Kuhn's brother Al talking with Brandon Itzikwal as they are sitting sideline watching this matchup. But Chad, lineups are set. It's the men versus the women, so nothing really out of the ordinary here. But you're giving the advantage a little bit here, you said, I mean, to Bay Area. Definitely, definitely with the lineup, the way it's set. This is a, a, a very tough lineup for I, Bay Area. And I will probably say the closest matchups here are going to be Tez and Avon. Summers and Paleocelli. But I think Olshan just going to be a little too strong for Query and Rechkowska for Bates. That's where Bay Area is going to pick up or look to pick up the majority of their points here in this one. As these gentlemen finish their warm up, we look to be about ready to go. Pablo Tejas will be serving to Stefan Auvern to kick us off here in the Dream Breaker. For those of you that haven't seen the Dream Breaker before, each player in that lineup will play four points, win or lose, and rotate around. Scoring remains the same. Yeah. Good start there for Auvern. Taya is a very polished singles player. And that ball staying up just a little too high there off the Auvern drive. Taya is getting on top of it, putting it down at the feet. Tejas missing a sitter. I thought Avon had left himself in some serious trouble flicking that ball up high. Oh, well, Auvern comes out on top here. 3-1, something we didn't see or expect here in the beginning of this dream breaker. A little unexpected. Tejas, I'm sure, will make his adjustment second time around. Typically, we'll see the first and second players in the lineup get three shots at their rotation. That ball just a little wide from Query. Good leave there from Alshon. The ball was close. That's a nice return from Sam Query, pushing Alshon back behind that baseline. Yeah, good deep return on the backhand side. Alshon trying to run around that inside out drop to the backhand side of Query. And we see Query do the same thing, but up to go down the line. The downside there is he opened the court up greatly for the Alshon cross court. Wow, nice ball there from Alshon as he will even things up at four. Heading into our women's side of things where it'll be Shelby Bates taking on Eva Radzikowska. And Radzikowska has won a couple of medals on the singles side on the pro tour. That's a nice cross court drop there from Shelby Bates. And she keeps things even here at five. Shikowski just not able to catch up to that one with the spin. And 
Just a little wide there off the backhand of Bates. So Bates gonna try and keep this even here at sixes. Heading into Six, Summers five. and Palicelli. That's a nice ball down the line from Shelby Bates, Chad. Yeah, and Radzikowska miss hit that one, leaving it short. Bates stepping up, it's taking that straight down the line with a little bit of shape. from Paley Chuck. Just smooth, relaxed. No pressure. No, I'm just creating an angle. And that ball sailed under a little bit. We saw her stand straight up and kind of just flick at that one. Summers, I think, saying the ball is cracked. She'll bring it over. It is. We are all square here at seven. Great job though, Chad, here from DC early is staying in this. We thought Bay Area had a huge advantage. So that all started with Stefan Auvern going three and one. That ball just wide. Good forehand cross court from Summers pulling Palicelli out wide. Summers goes three and three one. And, one. and a nine seven lead here for Bay Area. But if I'm DC, I take that right now and say, okay, we're in this still after the first round. Miss serve. Tejas feeling the pressure a little bit. And that ball's deep too, so. Auvern just handling himself right now is He's gone five and one against Taya so far. Make it six and one, and Auburn looking good here, and he gives DC the lead. That's good control there from Tejas as he finally gets back on the board, but Auburn going three and one both times against Tejas. All square here at 10. Ooh, that's a nice ball from Sam Query. A little backhand punch. Yeah, just a little pop in the back corner there. Olshan thinking he's gonna go cross court with it. We'll change ends here. A DC with an 11-10 lead, Chad. Feeling good right now, sitting in the driver's seat on the end change. Let me take a, another look at Jesse Irvin and Lindsey Newman. Where he wants that one back. He had the cross court open. Oshawn was scrambling. Then we see Millie Rain and Georgia, Georgia Johnson. Oh, what? Yeah, uh, half the no. time for that. Not, -uh. not at all. I don't understand the reason for that at that point, unless he felt like he was out of position. No, he paused to be able to hit that tweener there. But Query gives him a free point back. So they go two and two in that round. That'll mean DC. Bay Area all tied up, but unforced error there from Bates will give Bay Area one point lead. Oh, she had it wide open. She set it up perfectly with that shorter ball to the backhand side of Bates. from Bates. I like the control. 
but it's Bay Area with a one point lead. Oh, ball wide again there from Bates. Tough to go baseline, baseline battle with a Regikowska. So back on the bottom side now. Summers went three and one against Palicelli the first time. A little wide there from Summers and Palicelli strikes first here. Summers, she took it early. Pelicelli was kind of just walking forward, allowing Summers to get that ball behind her. Oh, she, she tried to aim it. Yeah, she came up on that one, didn't stay down through the whole stroke. from Summers, a good spot to create that pop-up from Pellicelli. So we're back on top, Tejas and Auburn. Auburn has been in control. He's six and two so far in two rounds. Needs some here. Uh, Bulls now, the wind is behind him now. Think of Vern. Thinking about challenging it. <laughs> all, all players on Bay Area are like, Bay no, that Area was way like, out. That was out. That was way out. DC's like, yeah, that was out. Yeah. Nice oh. inside oh. out forehand there for Pablo Tez. So a 19-15 lead here for Bay Area. Ball stayed down, Taya is trying to rush it. So we take a look at the DC. Players, a little tense. running a burn all over the court there. Well, it is all up to Sam Query here to keep DC in it. Christian Alshon can end it. They are frozen on 20. That ball was just gonna dribble over. You see Michelle Esquivel. Rob Cassidy sitting there. And a little, trying to stay warm. <laughs> Getting cooler out. Oh, and Query trying to go down the line. But another opportunity here for Bay Area to end it. Oh, Sean. Came up on that one as well. Crowded himself over the top of that ball. DC's not out of it yet. Both teams frozen. Oh, nice. Query going nice. back side there on Alshon. Great ball by Sam Query. And we will head to the women's side of singles here as Query goes three and one there to keep his team in it. And it is a 19-20 dream breaker. Bates trying to tie it up here. Oh, what a ball. Oh my goodness, Chad. It was, it was all but over. Pressure. Bay Area had the lead 2016 but we are all tied at 20. Oh, Bates scrambling, but just too good from Reg Kaska with the angles. She had Bates all over the court on that point. 
But again, rally scoring, or excuse me, side out scoring the rest of the way at 20 20. Oh, she overran it. I think Bates even caught her leg there as she was coming through to hit that backhand. A timeout here from DC as it'll be match point on the paddle of Rodzikowska when we come back in. So Bates calling that timeout on her own, stopping everything. It's 21-20. Trying to get it to Summers and Palacelli is Shelby Bates. But what she need to do here, because Rodzikowska's had her on the run, Chad. Yeah, she's got to hit that deep return. We saw a couple of them stay down on Rodzikowska. She wasn't able to pick it up and create the angles. But if she doesn't get that deep return, Rajkowska's going to take advantage of it and start moving Bates around. Yeah, Off the is. tape and out, and it'll be Bay Area with a 22-20 victory. Here in the Dream Breaker, Bay Area sitting pretty, Chad, 3-0. and oh. DC's gonna have to have some numbers go their way, ending up 1-2 and two to see if they move on to tomorrow. But what'd you look at in that Dream Breaker there, Chad? Yeah, just a couple of costly errors from DC, giving Bay Area that four-point lead going into the end there. They kept battling, brought it back 20 apiece. But like we predicted at the beginning, Bay Area just a little too strong on the single side. And that's where when you come down to choosing those teams, the Dream Breaker plays a big part of it and those singles plays. No, it absolutely does. And Bay Area proved it, but a great run there from DC and staying in that 22-20. But we'll throw it down courtside. Cameron Blackwood is with our winners, the 3-0 Bay Area Breakers. Yes, Pablo, a little bit of a slower start. Stefan was getting the better view, but you're able to change it around. How? Just trying to keep going for my shots. Eventually they start going in, so. You guys went 3-0 and o today, Eva. How special is this team? Oh my God, I mean, how much time do we have, okay? Because I could keep on talking and talking. You know, it's been, it's been an amazing day for us, you know. I don't think we've ever played together, you know, at any of the tournaments, you know. To, so to come together and finish strong like that, it's been like a perfect first day. What is tonight looking like? What's the recovery for tomorrow? Foam roll, foam roll, stretch, food. That's it. Rachel, any words going in? How much does this win and going 3-0 and today lead you into the rest of this weekend? Uh, yeah, huge start for us. We'll keep going for the rest of the weekend. Hopefully we can get to Sunday. There you have it. The Bay Area Breakers go 3-0 and today. Back to you guys. All right, so Bay Area goes 3-0 and on the day. They are sitting pretty for tomorrow. We'll take a break here on Championship Court. It is Brooklyn and Atlanta coming at you next here on Championship Court to finish out our day on day one of the first stop of the 2023 MLP season. MLP Mesa is brought to you by Margaritaville. Escape to your personal paradise. Stay, play, live, and dine in Margaritaville. Pickleball United, the official court of Major League Pickleball. HSS, Hospital for Special Surgery, is proud to be the official hospital of Major League Pickleball. Circle, your water, your way. Frameth Pickleball, where Major League Pickleball players and fans get their gear. Michelob Ultra, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. 
The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, yeah. So if he wants the end, water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. At Front With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from Front With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, you know? So if he wants the end, water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com.
are we going? Welcome back to MLP Mesa by Margaritaville. Cameron Irwin alongside Pro Pickleball player Adam Stone. And we are ready for a good one. The last one here on our championship court for at least this day. So we've got the Brooklyn Aces facing off against a team we have already seen on championship court in the Atlanta Bouncers. We've got to look first at the women's doubles because it is Christine formerly McGrath. Mm -hmm. Now Trifunovich alongside her partner Brooke Buckner and on the other side uh, some recognizable faces there. Corinne Carr. Corinne Stone. Are we, oh, do we do have a full name change or no? Oh it's Corinne Carr. Oh Corinne Carr. She's She's sticking, sticking with, with it. it. Sticking with it <laughs> alongside Sierra Gate and Leach. So women's doubles now underway. And it's actually four versus two out there. That's right. We've Just got two pregnant women out there. You gotta love it. Couple pregnant ladies <laughs> playing some pickleball. I mean, doesn't get better than that, does it? <laughs> nope, both Corinne Carr and Sierra Gate and Leach. Baby on board. Nice power there from Gate and Leach. We talked about that ace of spades uh, paddle earlier. She's She has power either way. So with the ace of spades, she can really let it fly. Also fun to note that on the other side, we've got two moms as well. Brooke Buckner has two kids. Christine McGrath has three. Some new moms versus some experienced moms. That's right. Nice pressure there from Trifunovich. Corinne Carr not able to come up with that dig from the baseline. And a good leave from Corinne Carr. One of the one of their better aspects of her game. She's been around for a while, and she's very good at letting balls go out. Uh, frustrating sometimes when you're drilling with her. That ball just sat up. I think it redirected. Yeah, tough luck there with the let cord. So Gate and Leach have her paddle on the right side of her body. That ball ended up just on her left shoulder. Great job after a very nice counter attack from Brooke Buckner. Corinne Carr there for the second ball with the backhand. Nice combination from her. Pickleball such a game of combinations. That's one you typically see from that right side. The forehand speed up, close out with the backhand. I think you're exactly right, especially at the pro level. Yeah. Uh, there's These guys are too good at defense. The hands are too good. You're not really going to be finishing in one almost ever. So it's all about the combinations. And Buckner barely misses. Yeah, it was a good look. A nice little shake and bake uh, from Christine and Brooke and just sailed it a little bit long, but I like the play. Now also important to note, this is just the women's doubles matchup. We also will have men's doubles next up. Hunter Johnson and Ben Newell are on the Atlanta Bouncers. And again, Buckner showing up big time right there. Yeah, I got, Corinne got crossed up on that one. She had a nice dig early in the point, but a little too much from Brooke Buckner on that one. Oh, breeze kicking up. I think that's just a bit more than a breeze. <laughs> It's interesting, too, because we have action happening on some of the outer courts as well, and it's even gnarlier out that direction. The wind has been a major factor. You talk to so many of these athletes across the competition, and all of them had said it's a little bit frustrating, but it's something you got to play through. I imagine there are better wind players in the game of pickle. Yeah. Some who are more comfortable with it. Oh, definitely. And really, it really comes down to footwork. Because yeah. like I mentioned, the ball's there and then it's not. So if you're if, if you're slow with your footwork and you're not taking those adjustment steps, you're going to be in trouble. Come on. Yeah. Nice 
they were up. I'm not, I'm not sure that's a, yeah, exactly how they drew it up, but we'll take it. Nice setup from Corinne Carr and a kind of a slower finish from Guyton Leach. We don't see that too often. <laughs> Combination. Corinne Carr starting the fire and Gaten Leach cleaning it up. Beautiful shot from Corinne Carr. Plenty of pace on that forehand. That's, that's a convenient miss hit. <laughs> I don't think she hit it exactly clean, but just dropped it inside the baseline. And a rock solid start uh, for the Brooklyn Aces. Oh, we got a little time here. Cameron, I got to clear something up. I mentioned earlier that we were going to extend even if the match score was 3-0, and that was my bad. I got confused with total points and total point percentage. So just wanted to clear that up from everyone. I'll take the lumps for that one. Oh, man, that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of changes every year, so we, you know we're all keeping up. Hey, maybe we'll get an example of it right well, here and get a three zero. Maybe, maybe an early dinner for however, us in the booth. However, we have had three go to dream breakers, I know, a I know. four here. So I'm just saying on the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court, it's been all about the Dream Breaker. <laughs> you mentioned what, 40, uh, was it 40%? I, I believe that was the number that, that someone quoted to me. 40% from the three events from last year, yes. Went to Dream Breakers. Went to Dream Breakers. Pretty remarkable numbers. So if you don't think that you need singles in the game of pickleball, That's if you right. have any intention of joining the MLB, well, you better figure it out. All facets of the game, Cameron, absolutely true. So nine to five, the Brooklyn Aces with a four point advantage. Carr and Gaten Leach. Naked, one additional. So in MLP, when you win the point, you do not switch sides. You just let your partner serve <laughs> as there is the I formation on yes. the side of the aces. Unfortunately, the Brooklyn Aces went with the single file defense, and that's uh, not, not the best way to go, but. Unless you're covering a lob that's and a right. drop shot. Yeah, we'll, we'll get through it. <laughs> a little too big of a swing there from Brooke Buckner, but I'll tell you what seen her play too much a handful of times on the live stream and in the earlier match today she impressed me she played very well very solid composed uh, consistent and then uh, you know went for it with some power shots when she needed to so I like what I saw from her earlier we'll see if she can uh, step up her game in the second half of this opening women's doubles match well you mentioned Brooke Buckner she's really out of Delray Beach Florida now residing in Concord North Carolina attended the University of Michigan where she played college tennis. Yeah, quality background in the racket paddle sports always helps the transition. There's a bit of a few of those with some tennis background yeah, <laughs> on I'd the court right so. now. I'd say so. <laughs> Sierra Gate Leach also, I believe the University of Missouri as well as uh, UT also played. Correct, where the team owner Kevin Durant played basketball for one year. So a little connection there. Texas Connection. So good. Hey, great, nice lean in there from Christine Trifonovich. Taking that forehand right at the feet of her opponents. Nice play. No one was looking to reset. <laughs> was counter a, after counter. It was great. A couple awkward swings in there, but that was a very much an extended firefight. Excellent play, ladies. Nice lead. There you go. That one just 
just got away from Christine. Yeah, very nice leave too. Gaten Leach locked and loaded for a counter attack, but able to get out of the way. Great drop, great drop. Nice spot there to find the backhand of Christine Trifunovic. More comfortable on the forehand side with that soft stuff when she's playing the right. attack from Gaten Leach and all of a sudden we have a 15-7 lead. Some of these points have been very good. I wasn't expecting it to be 15-7 when I looked up at the scoreboard. And some miscommunication there through the middle. That's one of the hard parts when you haven't been with your partner before. You gotta figure out who's taking this middle. And right now, Brooke Buckner started to slide, maybe thought that ball was coming to, towards the line. Left middle of wide open. Yes. Definitely true. Everyone's skill set's a little bit different. Sometimes it's pretty close to 50-50. Sometimes we've seen earlier today, it could be a 80-20% situation with left to right. So totally player and opponent dependent. Just hammering back and forth. Finally, Corinne Carr with the finisher. Let's go, Corinne Carr. I like it. That's all I got. <laughs> uh, just look at this. My goodness. Reset after reset. Then countering from Trifunovic. We've seen about two or three now pretty extended firefights. is a beautiful shot from Corinne Carr. Yeah. The redirect speed up right at the shoulder. And one, one of her favorite shots is that inside out forehand and she's taken several of those at Christine earlier in this match. Way to switch it up, Corinne. It's game point for the Aces. There we go. There you go. Definitely need some momentum here from the bouncers. It's got to start somewhere. Nice put away from Brooke Buckner. 8-20. seen that a lot on that far side today yeah. when, when the other team is dropping just not carrying as far as the other team is expecting nice roll from Carr Women's doubles goes the direction of the Brooklyn Aces. Corinne Carr and Sierra Gaten Leach. Top 21 to 9. So a celebration on the side of the Aces and open a little bit more lopsided than I anticipated. Oh definitely. I, I don't think any time a team scores single digits and with this field of competent players everywhere, that's definitely something that's a little bit shocking. So Trifunovic and Buckner will have to regroup. However, they do have a solid men's team up next and Hunter Johnson and Ben Newell. Yep, so Warming up on the other side is Rob Nunnery and Greg Dow. Sorry, excuse me. Go oh, ahead. I was just gonna say, I, I believe, I believe that was our first match of the day with the bouncers, correct? Yes. Is that right? Okay, good. Yeah. Hunter and, I, Hunter and Ben look nice. Lots of power drives, some shaking and bacon, and they played well, so. We'll send it down to Dom with our winning women's doubles team, the Brooklyn Aces. All right, I'm with Sierra Gaten Leach and Corinne Carr. Congratulations. How important, Corinne, is that first match in women's to get that win, especially when you guys do need a win here today? Right. It's very important. It sets the tone for the whole match. And ideally, we'll win this with three <laughs> because I'm not sure what's going to happen in the other match. And so our score here actually matters. When, when, even if we win in a tiebreaker, uh, 
it's, I think we're better off if we win quickly. <laughs> And then, Sierra, go to you. It seemed like you guys had a plan in place to come out, play fast, and it worked for you guys. Was that the plan with you and Corinne going in? It was, yeah. I wanted to be big, um, take like as many balls as I could, and like have my presence be known against them. And Corinne did such a good job of having her presence known and drops and everything, so I was able to just close in really hard, and it worked well. All right, the Brooklyn Aces take a 1-0 lead here on Championship Court. We'll take a commercial break. When we come back, it's all about the men's doubles. Six carbs and 95 calories. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, cause I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I'll see the back of the band, now we're dancing on the half pipe. Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the down, now we're flipping on the outside. Upside, upside. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. It's time for some men's doubles, but first let's take a look as we are about to close out our first day here in Mesa. Here are your group standings, group A, B, and C. Right now we are in group C, so you can see the Atlanta Bouncers are 2-0 and on the day they're currently facing off against the Brooklyn Aces, who are 1-1, one one, so could very much use Yes, and this right one. right behind us on grandstand, we have Dallas Pickleball Club and Arizona Drive. So there's a situation where uh, match wins could come into play, but there's also a situation where point differential percentage very much might come into play. So we're just going to have to see how these two matches play out. Those are the words of Adam Carr. I mean, excuse me, Adam Stone. Uh -huh. I've been I, I've been called that several times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, not the I'm worst sorry. thing to be. No, not, not the at worst all. thing to be. I'll take not it. Not at all. I was bribed by production to say that. Fair enough. I respect it. All right, there's Gregory Dow. <laughs> nice opening speed up from Greg Dow. Steady right side player right outside of Charleston, South Carolina. I feel like we should take a bet on how many uh, points it will be until Rob Nunnery takes off the jacket. I think he's going to keep it on the whole time. You do? That's my call. Okay. Just saying at the uh, change event. Nice hold with that front shoulder from Hunter Johnson, waiting to the last second to whip it across his body and get it to the Rob Nunnery backhand. Very nice play, Hunter. Yeah, baby. Yeah, slight communication error from the aces in the middle. They chatted about it though. I'm sure they'll get it figured out. Nearly goes over. Yeah, good to see Greg Dow out on the West Coast. Doesn't venture over here too often. He's got a big boy job. Nice 
little shot. extra a yeah. pop on that top spin. Yeah, definitely. That, that, that was, we talked about it multiple times. Pace, spin alone, great, but you have both of them, a lot to handle. Beautiful roll right there from Rob Nunnery. Oh yeah, he likes he likes the low rollers, and the first time or two you see him, it's very difficult. You get a little more used to it, but it's a great shot for Rob. And that's a clean put away from Ben Newell. Yeah, that that, that second drop, that fifth ball from Greg Dallas, sat up a little too little too high, and Hunter Johnson took advantage with a little little mini Ernie. Staying off the line, though. Yeah, Greg Dow, great, great backhand punch. One of his specialties, like I said, really likes that right side, and that is often where he's playing. So he's used to those patterns. Tough break from Rob. A little too much life on that fifth shot, sitting up nicely for Ben Newell. He knew what to do with it. Five apiece. Tried to get underneath that. Newell's looking back on what in the world. I mean, I'm almost certain he hit his paddle on the, on the ground, ground before he's, I, I'm not sure I've seen that on a third shot drive from that position before. <laughs> the man got low, what can you say? Winning points from the baseline right now. Yeah, tough one. Uh, I think Hunter had a decent look at that backhand. Not sure if he changed his mind or it just got away from him. a pro tennis player, got up to a career high of 198 in his world ranking for doubles. Played four years of professional tennis. Does serve as long? Yeah, Ben Newell sells it long. Back over to the aces. Yeah, can't go there on Greg. Big 6-4 frame. He can cover a lot of court with that backhand punch counterattack. Working with a rainbow serve. Nearly worked. Yeah. Dow's got a unique grip, it looks like. Yeah, that is coming off his paddle for sure. He really has that kind of top of his hand really extended out in front, but he gets a lot of pop on it. Kind of unorthodox errors right now on the side of Johnson and Newell. Definitely, and the Aces absolutely just picking up steam. They they got 3-0 in their first match, won a dream breaker in round two, and they look very good to start this round three matchup. So 11 to six now, so they're gonna talk things out. You can see Johnson and Newell having the conversation. Yates Johnson is also sitting courtside. I saw Hunter look over a handful of times in the middle going, what are we doing? What, am I, what do you see, brother? They're connected. <laughs> I, think, I think Yates is 28 minutes older, something like that. I might've made up that number, but I know it's something under an hour. Hunter's one inch taller and Yates is thoroughly convinced. <laughs> Yates is thoroughly convinced he's the best looking <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need a side by side. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and Hunter's one inch taller. Did I say that? Yes. Okay, good. Just one. That, that's that's all I got on the Johnson twins. We there we go. <laughs> Rob Nunnery, former tennis player as well, out of UNC Asheville. himself back on the mainland the mainland I visited him in the beginning of yes. December yeah it was pretty cool so you and Corinne seem like you had a pretty amazing trip lots of activities maybe a couple too many <laughs> <laughs> nice lift there from Newell Nice combination from Johnson because 
I mean, that was a thunderous counter uh, from Greg Dow, but Johnson might need to pick a different spot to initially attack as Greg Dow right on those backhand counters. Yeah, there you go. Or just, or just hit it harder. Yeah, yeah, hit it harder. It was a great reach in by him. I mean, pretty obviously a tackable ball, but not a gimme by any stretch. Oh, that thing was wicked. There was no way you're getting that. that, that that's his shot for the whole day. He's had some great inside out forehands and just add that one to the list. There, Rob Nunnery, ready for that one. Kind of handcuffing Johnson, looking forehand in the middle, had to switch over to the left side of his body. Not easy to do in the moment. Was 11-8, now they find themselves at 12-10, so a few points work back the other direction. from Dow. Yeah, exactly. Looked like he was slightly surprised. Very nice block and a Got it rip, down. yeah, rip cross court from Rob Nunnery to finish. Watch. Oh, and a good bounce his direction. Oh, he almost had it. Oh, it was a good look too. He didn't miss it wide, so he obviously had an angle for the ATP, but just couldn't keep it in. Scrambling, losing his balance. just slapping that ball down at the feet. Yeah, definitely a low trigger pull from Rob Nunnery, but he has lots of success with those. Can't fault him too much, just too much counter attack ability from Ben Newell. shot from Ben Newell. Greg Dow knew he left a dink a little high, was crashing back to the middle to cover, but Newell carving that out wide. Dow cannot come up with it. Ben just continuing to toss him up in the air. <laughs> Yeah, when your your opponents are hitting that hard from <laughs> above their head, you got to figure out some way to get it back. Drop, drive, or lob. Do what you got to do. Heads up. Yeah, nice job. That was a fairly easy leave, but I do think that that is a strong suit of Rob Numnery. Has a good eye out there and can let balls go out. Johnson and Newell, where are you looking to attack right now? Yeah, that's a good question. If you can get the ball to Greg Dow's right side, but it's tough because he has that wingspan and he's only covering 40% of the court. So okay. uh, picking a spot to attack right now is tough. Maybe the right shoulder of Rob Nunnery. Seems like Dow's going pretty heavily, not only at Newell, but also some middle balls. Possibly the threat of the Ernie from Dow. God was in the back of Hunter Johnson's mind. Put that dink right at the top of the tape. 16-14. Make it 17-14. Yeah, just if they are gonna attack, it's gotta it's gotta be the forehand. Both both fellas on the far end of the court on the Brooklyn Aces, Rob Nunnery and Greg Dow, really sit a little harder on their backhand side. Very tough to attack there. 17-14 right now, Dow and Nunnery doing a nice job. And as a reminder, too, they also now lead 1-0 after the women's doubles. As Gaten, Leach, and Carr picked up game number one. You heard them doing the math. I loved it. Corinne yeah. teaches finance. She's the, you yes. can call her the yeah. prof. She's the prof. She's a professor. So yeah. I'm just saying, of course, she went straight to the numbers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. That's all her. That's her area of expertise. I'm not going to touch that. 
But hey, just to let you know, Cameron, Bob Nunnery still has the jacket on. Things are things oh, are looking things are looking good for me right Bob. now. Just saying. Okay, my our scoreboard today is very lopsided. <laughs> <laughs> you have destroyed me. <laughs> Thank you so much. <gasps> Maybe day two will be better for me. Hey, we'll go. find out. <laughs> Not so sure it will be, but we'll find oh, out. Oh, come on. Zinga. Yeah. Ready that time? It looks as if Dow, when he does get a chance to attack, kind of trying to find the middle right now. Quick. Yeah, he yeah, probably could have bodied up Hunter a little more with that one, but good hands from Hunter Johnson. <laughs> Casual leave. I oh, know. That made me nervous. I was like. Yeah. Yeah, tough one there. Uh, stepped back off the kitchen line. I think that's a, you know, more often than not a spot for a dink, but he went for it and we're all tied up. and then Dow changes the call. Roth yeah. thought it was out. Let's yeah. take a look. Yeah, it's tough when you jerk your head back like that. Super hard to see. Yeah, I, c I couldn't tell from the replay. I got a little slight glare, though. Right, shoulder, he right just, side, but a little too much. Yeah, he just overextended a little too much. Didn't hold his balance, but I like the idea of that shot. And you can see it kind of pretzeled up Dow a little bit. Yeah! And that's a great shot from Newell. That, that was very sneaky. He's had that exact same ball several times earlier in the match, and he never once sped that up, especially cross court. So I like Newell changing his pattern there, and he's rewarded. Oh, sneaky. Ace is now trail. Or excuse me, tied at 19 apiece. And a missed deep. Yeah, there was nothing really happened there. Sometimes you just, you just, uh, what, my technical term from earlier, flub it? Sometimes you just, just flub it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my favorite word yeah. of the day. Game point for the aces. Is out of okay. bounds, potentially. Maybe it was in bounds. Dow's going to, wow. again, call it in. Oh, man. I'm very far away, but I thought that might have been out. Yeah, that's tough. The score is frozen, though, for both teams. Here's a look. Ooh, that's, yeah, that might, that's probably out. So are they it's also been hard, though, because Dow has been pretty honest. He's overturned two of his own calls. Right, so. and I think he might have made a mistake on that previous one. So I was going to say, because he's, over, he's overturned the calls towards the other team. So. Right, right. Oh, we had a clip for a second. Here we go. So they're going to challenge this. Okay, what do you think? Call the ball out of bounds. Ah, oh, man, they're making it tough on us, aren't they? My goodness. I mean, I, the, the call on the on the court is out, out correct? Yeah, yes. so I think you probably have to stick with that, even though that is incredibly so, close. Explain this. So you're going rule of thirds, right? So 
Uh, yeah, so, uh, right, right. So that's where, I mean, that's basically what it was. The ball hits and it skids a little bit in tennis. Uh, as you can see with the Hawkeye, you kind of have that, that oval shape. Yeah. But this is just one circle where it actually lands. So the so, contact point is minute and it's only just correct. under the center correct. of the ball, the correct. exact center. It might have been out on the previous one, and that would have been matched. So we're, we're still playing. This is kind of wild with how close all of these calls are. I will say I'm impressed by Dow overruling in favor of the other team in regards. I know that sounds, but just from a sportsmanship aspect, if you don't know, you have to give the benefit of the doubt, right? Uh, yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, I know it's you know, different. People say tournament rules or right, <laughs> tournament right, calls, but right. I'm just saying. Yeah, everyone, everyone has a different code of ethics. You never really know what's <laughs> going on in everyone's mind. <laughs> slide enough to his right. He was able to catch it with a backhand, not a forehand, but just couldn't quite get the extension he was looking for. Nice speed up from Hunter Johnson. Now a shot for the tie. You do. You. him in the back instead. Yeah, hit him in the butt. <laughs> it, it definitely <laughs> did, but crazy that he almost oh, even he almost possibly made it. it. <laughs> Another game point. Hunter, Hunter didn't hit that exactly how he wanted to, but but Dow was so far back in the court, it was kind of an awkward situation for him. Excuse me, that's a point. Yeah, it is, and I think they've had two or th two, maybe three, where they've been on 19, and now they've yeah, they've got to 20. Okay. Calling that ball long. Yeah, looked out from here. Here's a look at it. Point the opposite direction. Oh, much the inside out. Here's a look at that call. It was out of bounds. Good call. A little tight on the backhand deep from Newell. See if he can redeem himself. And Dow is all over the forehand. Was that an out? Or was that a Dow? I'm not sure no, of the call. It was a bounce. That, oh. That's what Rob Nunnery says when he wants his partner to let to it like go. Bounce. He yeah, says yeah, yeah. bounce. I just grunt. I don't even say words. I just sound, go. To me, it sounded like Dow. Yeah, Dow. It could have been. <laughs> no, but you're right. 21 all. <laughs> like half a piece a second of hesitation from Hunter Johnson yeah. and that's all it takes to to make a mistake. 22, Brooklyn Aces again at the top.
tight as it gets. Have we had a 23 to 21 yet today, Cameron? Yes, we have. Okay, thank you. I th no, we had a 22 to 20. <laughs> okay, gotcha, So gotcha. I think that might be the first 23 to 20. So the men's doubles goes the direction of the Brooklyn Aces, who are now up two to zero. It's going the direction Corinne Carr has hoped for that 3-0 finish. But we will find out how this one will close out. Mixed doubles is up next, but currently we've got Dom Catalano down on the court with Greg and Rob. Take it away. I'm with Rob Cassidy, Greg Dow. Guy, or, oh my God, oh my God. Rob Nunnery. I love you, Rob. I love you, brother. Hey, um, nice match. It did take you guys four, and you fight off a match point on the other side. What are you thinking after you had three opportunities and then they get one? Yeah, I mean, rally scoring's crazy. Like, you know, there's so many swings. You just have to stay in the moment and play every point the best you can and hope it shakes out your way. So that's that's all I was thinking about. And then, Greg, I mean, you're coming in your own right now, buddy. You're playing great. You played great a couple weeks ago in Punta Gorda. And then again in Boca, playing with Rob. How's that feeling right now? Oh, I love playing with Rob. Um, he, he just, he's just so much experience. Um, he's good at everything. Great at the kitchen. Great hands. Uh, great drive. So he's, he's just a pleasure to play with. You know, I, I kind of I got a little tied out there. They started targeting me a little bit smartly. And, um, you know, Rob kept encouraging me and, um, yeah, found a way to Find a way to win it. I know, Rob, you guys are, you need this win here today in this match to go 2 and 1. How important is it to go 2 and 0 oh and set up for mixed? Oh, it's a big deal. I mean, we need to take this one too. I don't, I don't know how it's going to shake out with the, with our pool, but I know we're, we're, uh, we're not a guarantee if we get a win. So we're trying to win every single game here. And yeah, it's, it's a big one. We haven't played our best pickleball today, so hopefully we can do it here. All right, Nunnery and Dow victorious. They put the aces up 2 0 going into mixed doubles. Don't want to miss that coming up next. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. Six carbs and 95 calories. Our pickleball paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. It's time for the mixed doubles matchup. Right now, the Brooklyn Aces lead two to zero. Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. We're thrilled to have you join us here in Mesa, Arizona for the first event in the season at number one in 2023 on the MLP Tour. I would say what our mixed doubles matchup current is about to be, but we currently have three women out on the court, so well, that can't be right. <laughs> well, well, technically, she, I mean, she has a boy in her belly, That's so true. Te <laughs> technically it could be mixed doubles, just saying. I had to get one of those jokes in, come yeah, on. Yeah, that works, that works, that works. <laughs> you gotta love it. So it looks like Nunnery's stepping up now, and he has been playing with 
uh, Karen today. So okay. I would expect that to continue. He's kind of getting loose, so it looks like that's what's going to happen. So Corinne Carr and Rob Nunnery, and potentially it looks like Ben Newell alongside Buckner. Meanwhile, you were taking a look on the outer courts onto the grandstand because we're looking at the Group C standings and it's getting interesting. Exactly right. The the Drive have a 2-0 lead. They are 0-2, but they have a 2-0 lead against the Dallas Pickleball Club. So if they seal the deal in that match over there, the Brooklyn Aces win and they're in and we will not have to go to point differential percentage. There you go. So if they drop that. It's currently 17-15 out there the direction of the drive and it was it was 16 9 the drive at one point so this is a pretty big comeback from the Dallas pickleball club there's a lot going on here cam there is a lot going on into the late hours we're just about to hit the five o'clock hour actually right now local time there's a look out to the grandstand where it's 16 17 you can see the AZ drive oh look here Cameron we have a swisheroo so the previous two matches for the Aces was Nunnery and Carr, and now we have Nunnery and Gaten Leach. There you go, so they did change it up. Maybe they're psyching them out, just, you know, a little uh, mental warfare in terms of who's picking what. Hey, however, <laughs> however you gotta get it done. Physical, mental, leave it all out there. drives then gets them up to the kitchen line however nice finish from the Atlanta bouncers saw a little Ernie from Buckner and this will be unique because you've got the women playing heads up as Newell's a lefty and the fellows playing heads up so that changes the dynamic definitely and we talked about possibly returning to Ben Newell because his poachability is so strong we saw it on that point Oh, first match of the day. You're absolutely right. That was one of the conversations was Brooke Buckner does a really nice job, especially on that backhand side. She's got yes. a wicked two-handed backhand drive. Oh, my goodness. Rob Nunnery what? just called for a service foot fault. What the heck? I don't even – I've been playing this for six years. I don't know if I've ever seen that called before. Oh my, interesting. Wow. wow. I, yeah, I, I'm, I know I've said wow like three times. I, I really don't know if I've ever seen that before. Um, interesting. Are they going to challenge this? Yeah, I don't know. Everyone's kind of hanging out. I'm not sure exactly what's happening to tell you the truth. Here's a look. Uh, it's kind of on there. Yeah, it's f it is. That's the finish, obviously. Which you're so the yeah. feet closest are CR Gate and Leeches, obviously right, the ones right. on the far. In the KDs, just saying. Oh yeah, I got a pair on right now, Cameron. Like you said, it's good to be Adam Carr. I got that. I'm, I'm a I'm an honorary member of the Aces, so I got a pair of KDs. I'm happy about it. I believe Dom's got some insight for us. Oh, hold on, Dom. We gotta open up your mic. All right, let's see if can we send it down to Dom. Take it away. Let's try it one more time, Dom. Both Nunnery and Dow serve. So this is where I think this is coming into play is they were talking on the bench about this. So they were talking about it, and that's why they're calling this right now. They, they were interested to see this. So I know, Adam, you were talking that we haven't seen this in years, but it's coming into play now. How much, though, Adam, is this going to come into play in Nunnery with his feet looking down, seeing what's going on now instead of just, hey, I'm going to go? Yeah, definitely. It's something to think about, Ment that mental factor. He, he's been called on it, which is unusual. Is he going to, is it going to rattle him later in the match or possibly take a six inch cushion with his serve? I mean, that's something to think about. 
I think he's going to stand three feet back and serve the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah which, which is reasonable. <laughs> so the call is still a foot fault after the video challenge. Heavy right now, Gaten Leach. Yeah, it's a it's a solid start for Newell and Buckner. Easy leave, nice return from Gaten Leach and Rob Nunry having a easy let that go off the paddle of Ben Newell. The crispest start now for Gaten Leach and Nunnery. And that's not going to help either. Yeah, that's bad luck there. But man, Buckner rips that two hander. Might want to avoid that spot if you're the aces. Let's see if the switch happens at some point here. You got it. to the opposing side for the ATP. Yeah, around the post on the opposite side of the court. You don't see that every day. Lob is out of bounds, but to your point, they did send the ball in the direction, I feel like. Yeah, Tried right, to correct. to keep him more baseline. From Buckner. Yeah, she neutralized that offense uh, very nicely, and unfortunately for Nunnery, he got handcuffed on that second ball, even though I do think he was in good position. Quick feet from Buckner, but not quick enough. Yeah, that's tough. Even when you get there, you're just, it's a little frantic. You're, you're, you're just a little out of sorts, and it's tough to come up with that ball, even if you make it there with your footwork. Shot from Gaten Leach. The heavy hand's definitely her calling card. Starting the fire with a little bit of a mid mid paced attack, but it worked out. And a little too much reach on that for Newell. Yeah, it's tough when you when you see your your partner also in Ernie position, might make you feel like you need to extend a little further than you can. Too, the ladies going head to head, dinking line to line. It's the shortest distance. You don't have much room for error. Very true. There's that drive. And Newell, what a backhand. Yeah, just sitting heavy backhand, like he knew where it was going, and I guess he did. <laughs> line but she's in a good spot to crack that forehand so uh, yeah I mean sometimes sometimes you just miss it so 6 11 means they're gonna switch sides now change events but to your point she had she pretty much had two on her paddle right clean winners but sadly 
play they hit about the top of the net. Yeah, that pickle. But they, I, I do think they have adjusted a little bit uh, going to, to Newell a bit more. And I think he obviously has some nice shots in his, in his repertoire, Ben Newell. But I think his foot speed and kind of creating havoc up in the kitchen line is probably one of his best assets. So I'm glad to see that they're trying to kind of take that out of the way from him. What about going cross court to Newell? I, I know the ladies are going head to head right now. It's creating some, some matchups that it's proving to be rather difficult in terms of speeding up. And you've got a lefty on the far side. Exactly. Go, go to his backhand side. Just every, it's almost like the resets the cross court ball, actually. Right. We just saw it in men's, too. He was stepping around his backhand to hit forehand dinks. He doesn't really want to hit backhand so, dinks. He was trying to mask it. So I think it's very reasonable. And they have uh, absolutely, with, with that lefty in the middle, I think they might need to switch it up. We'll see what they come up with in the second half of this match. a little more middle. Yeah, he and got there. He's, he, he likes that little flipper from down low. Newell was on a previous one. Seems like Newell's sitting pretty heavy backhand on that counter, too. Really nice drop. Kind of went a little more linear, so not didn't float up there. More penetrating shot, and they were able to draw an error from Ben Newell. That's right, nice little stretch here from the aces. See if they can keep the momentum going. Fine with the drive from Gaten Leach. Brooke Buckner a little late getting up to the kitchen line. Is right now. I mean, you can, it's it's tangible. It's not just a saying. You could really can see Pep in their step. Yep. <laughs> Lofting that to the baseline and some net love for Nunnery. Yep. Tough one. Really nothing you can do off of a drive that clips the tape like that. I don't care how fast your hands are. That's when you just say thank you, Net. Yep. That's what you can do when you're playing heads up. Exactly. So they're having a little chat right now, Rob and Sierra. See if they could possibly be talking about going more cross court dinks or playing to the middle. In, both, in that rally, both those things we just mentioned right, took right. place. Well, yeah, right, definitely. And again, same thing, back in Newell up as he takes a step off the kitchen line. Mm -hmm. Brooke. Was pretty, she was pretty on that. She was pretty on that, but didn't work in her favor that time. Nice. A little, a little, a little willpower from Rob Nunnery. A hop, skip, and a jump trying to get that thing over. Lead has now changed the aces back on top, 14-13. Reasonable idea, just just sailed her dink too far, and that's okay. A nice little backhand poke there from uh, Ben Newell to earn the point. Definitely, Gate and Leach definitely a little frustrated with herself on that one. Yeah. 
Christian Beesnell. Nice spot at the feet from Gaten Leach. Nothing Buckner can do except just try to get it over and couldn't. from Ben Newell. Yeah, great ball there. Some nice digs in the midcourt from Rob Nunnery early in that point, but too much on that last forehand cross court from Ben. Ben comes flying in, but the ball goes flying out. Yeah, that's exactly right. And Gaten Leach a little late getting forward. Ben Newell sensed that perfect drive from Ben. that ball just so casual with that <laughs> forehand reset right there that block <laughs> the paddle right afterwards. Time out at 15-19. Uh, 19 serving 15. Man, things have changed. Aces really came out hot after the side switch and the bouncers had the reply. Too. It's happened on the outer court several times as well. So definitely something that is not exactly where you want to be, but not insurmountable at all. Nineteen fifteen, Buckner with the serve. Nice job from Newell. Third shot drive. It's now game point. Finding the backhand side. Little deception. You can see the flick of her wrist there, pulling that ball cross court. Face said it all after that one. Not the ball did not come to him exactly where he wanted it, but he was able to get a paddle on it. Oh, a little too much sauce. So another shot for the bouncers. He went for it, Cameron. <laughs> ah, creeping back if in. If I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss big. That's right. Not sure that's optimal strategy, but hey, no, it's OK. <laughs> Just some slight hesitation there. You can see the gate and lead starting to play a little bit more off the line. Mm -hmm. And you've seen that a couple times where she's pushed her dinks kind of deep and created some errors from Buckner where yeah. she wasn't sure if she should attack or not. Nice save from Buckner. Battle 
collision. Oh, that's a tough one. That's a really tough one right there. But I just mentioned Gaten Leach had been playing further off the line. Mm -hmm. That time she stayed there. It's a little more enticing when you're a foot closer. And there it is, the Atlanta Bouncers finish it off 21 to 19. Which means we will have a second mixed matchup in just a short while. Next up will be Hunter Johnson. Dominic Catalano now with our winners. Take it away, Dom. I'm with Brooke Buckner and Ben Newell. Congratulations, guys. Gets you guys on the board and forces that fourth and final match. How important was it for you guys there, Brooke? Yeah, I mean, we had to stay alive, and that's what we're trying to do. Benny brings good energy, and we wanted to fight. All right, Ben, you love to take over. I know that. You see that big left forehand, lefty forehand in the middle. Are you looking to do that, especially here in mixed, and kind of letting Brooke set you up? Yeah, you know, I'm getting to feel a lot more comfortable in mixed. I don't play much, or I didn't last year. So to be able to get to play with Brooke uh, and hold my right side, I love it. So happy to be here. All right, well, you guys are moving on. We're going to that fourth and final match to see if Atlanta can force that dream breaker. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have that match for you here on Championship Court. Oh, my good Lord. I said, Saturday, no one's here, right? Are you getting this? You get, yeah. So if he wants the end Water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. Oh. <laughs> We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. ProXR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. ProXR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. All right, time to get settled because we've got another mixed matchup about to get underway. Trifunovic alongside Hunter Johnson. On the other side, it's gonna be Greg Dow and Corinne Carr. All right, they've changed up their lineups in terms uh -huh. of their mixed doubles partnerships. Uh -huh. We saw Gain Leach and Rob Nunnery. What are you thinking for this new one? Well, uh, first off, I want to talk about these standings, Cameron. So, do. so we have the Atlanta Bouncers at 2-0, and the Brooklyn Aces at 1-1, and and the other two teams in the bracket are both 1-2. and So obviously, if Brooklyn wins, they get in. But at the same time, currently, they are leading those teams in point differential percentage. So there is a chance that Brooklyn could lose this match and still advance. So I know that's a lot of math for you guys. It's a lot of math for me. So it's a lot of Somebody math for you guys. Somebody call Corinne Carr. Yes, we need a finance <laughs> professor. We need we Somebody need numbers. Somebody go with numbers. Yes, definitely. So No, but I, yeah, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, we'll keep you up to date. Yeah, definitely just wanted to mention that. Of course, let's just leave all the math out of it. If they win this match, they are in officially. Let's go. 
All right, so now talk to me about what you think Dow and <laughs> Card could do together. Oh, now Dow, he does not play a lot of mix because I mentioned he has a job and he can't get off on Fridays. So he sticks on that East Coast playing men's doubles on Saturday, but he's a big boy. He's 6'4", he's, he's capable on the left side even though he's more comfortable on the right. So I think the big man just needs to, to play his game, play loose, play aggressive, and uh, you know let Corinne Carr set him up. All right, Corinne Carr, the ultimate setup woman. Yes, absolutely. She's very good at that. And then you've got Hunter Johnson on the other side alongside Trifunovic. Yeah, and I would imagine Corinne Carr and Trifunovic, uh, formerly uh, McGrath, have played each other about 64 <laughs> times say, is what I would they say. They know each so, other's game extremely well. Exactly. It's going to be a cross-court dink battle. And I'll tell you this right now, Cameron, I expect Corinne Carr to lob. Trifunovic several times in this match. We'll see if it happens. Well, you've been really on it today, so I'm not going to go against you here. We'll see if it happens. Yeah. Oh boy, Car came back awfully quick. Mm -hmm. I don't think Dow expected her to come back that quickly. a few of those from Hunter Johnson. And, and obviously it's a quality shot, but I think the key is the deception. Everyone on the left side that he's done it to has been looking middle. Well, so it's a phenomenal job by Hunter. And you can see from the way he even sets up his feet, it mm -hmm. looks like that ball is going middle. Mm -hmm. Just at the last second, he kind of had that shift where his hips opened just enough to get it over there. And a boy, big man, way to impose your will there. Nice loose arm up high. That was nice. We'll just leave it at that. She does have a, uh, she's going to be mad at me for saying this, but she does have a belly support brace on right now. Great ATP, and we saw a lob on that point, didn't we, yeah, Cameron? We did. Let's go. I mean, hey, she is literally carrying another human, so she's allowed <laughs> whatever brace she wants. I wear a back brace, and I'm not carrying humans, so <laughs> <laughs> let's just put it that way. <laughs> Four to two now for the Brooklyn Aces. Speed up from Greg Dow, just kind of starting the fire uh, with Trifunovic right in front of him, a couple feet off of the kitchen line. Nice ball from Christine, catching Karinkar right at her feet. A great spot. 3 5 now. Nice call from Corinne Carr, just in case uh, Greg Dow was looking to hit that ball, letting him know it's sailing long, and it does. sure what he was trying to do. Was he trying to hit that hard or, or do a, a uh, little no, scooper I, dink? I think, he, a was, scooper I think dink? he was trying to scoop that. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find a little Ben Johns in him. Yeah, yeah, looked a lot like that actually. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, tough break, clipping the tape, nothing Crane Carr can do there. Nice put away though from Hunter Johnson. Nice little 
A.J. Kohler crab walk across the kitchen from Greg Dow, covering a lot of court laterally, keeping the pressure on Christine Trifunovic. Great control from Carr there, bringing that ball back to the middle. That's big time. She was pushed wide. That is such a touch dink right there. To keep that with so much depth, that shallow, that's wild. Atta girl. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll toot your horn for you. <laughs> oh man, I should have done it. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a, that's a great ball from Hunter Johnson. It is, without a doubt. Great angle, nice spin. Uh, definitely some a ball that Corinne's going to make occasionally, but you can't blame her for that error. Great pressure from Hunter. Watch Hunter Johnson bail. Watch him bail to his sideline. What a spot from Corinne. Yeah, because she held that for so long. And a little too much heat on that one. Ball goes long. So 11-6, the Brooklyn Aces are staying steady at the end of the first quarter. She's doing her thing. I'm trying to, you know, not sing her praises too much and keep it professional up here, but she's making every ball. She's lighting people up. I mean, what do you, what do you want me to say, Prof? You're doing your thing. I love it. Yep. No, no, no one, I mean, you are biased, but not in that regard right yes, now. Yes, that's right. <laughs> no. Playing great. Playing great. 11 6. Again, this is our last match of the day here. And then we'll get started again tomorrow morning. The premier level will start. I tell you what, some of the play we've seen today, it's what shocking. It's shocking like? that there's uh, this is the challenger league. I mean, come on, great athletes out here, great touch, great power. You know, just some really good stuff going on, and we have even more action tomorrow with both the challenger and premier leagues. It's also important to note there is a redraft after the first three events, and season one concludes. So, which of these challenger? Athletes could find themselves up at the premier level. That's where it's going to get interesting. Ooh. Wow, that was really good. <laughs> yeah, that was really you good, get, Hunter. You going to clap for that, yes. Hunter? Yeah, for sure. Well done. <laughs> crazy Look at this angle. Angle. Yeah, crazy angle. Remarkable. Opening up the court beautifully with that roll. Yeah, and that, that took a funny bounce. It kind of bounced to the side. So obviously Hunter Johnson probably should have made that shot, but it did have some some English on it, and I understand him uh, mishitting that ball. Yeah. Anger on that one. Yeah, a little grunt. A little extra oomph. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go, Thirteen seconds. In clutch. She went for the it. Speed up and the close. Yeah, she went for it. Absolutely. That first ball was, I mean, it was low and it was hard and very well struck. Wait, wait, we call that friendly fire. <laughs> when you get hit, you get hit, hit by, by your, your teammate. Partner. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> 14-8. now. Right here, guys. Right here. Great shot. 9-14. 
Quick wrist from Hunter Johnson. Great return, Greg. Great return from Greg Dow. Really pinning Trifunovic back on the baseline. Tough ball for her to come up with. Hard to get underneath that one. the forehand side. Great hands prop. That was, I mean, quality play. That's okay, I'll do it from here. Yeah, you got I, mean, it. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, I played like 12 tournaments with her before. I've never seen her play this good. Nope, it's only 10-16, Trey and Johnson need to make a move here. Their team trails one to two in the overall score. She weathered the storm nicely there. And Hunter Johnson just kind of poked the paddle out there with the nice winner behind Greg Dow. Great play from the bouncers. Yeah! Nice spot, Karen Carr. Jamming up Hunter Johnson after a slightly high dink from Trifunovic. 17-11. Great, great, great setup and finish from the bouncers. Just too good on that point. Uh, you can't blame Trifunovic for trying to go behind Dow there. Just pushed it wide. Yeah. Timeout from the bouncer is probably a good time to use that. 12 to 18 now, trailing by we six. Trifunovic and Johnson. And again, I'm going to look back to these standings. You said win and you're in for the aces. That's so correct. Put so put themselves in a good position. Right, because they lost 3-0 to the Dallas Pickleball Club in the first match. But fortunately for them, the Dallas Pickleball Club just lost 3-0, so that kind of neutralized them. Well, what's going to be interesting now is what the percentage is between the bouncers and the aces, because they'll go okay, they will not be two and one. Right, but, uh, but right, so, so that, that's for seeding. seeding. That's, which that's is in terms still of still seeding, which, which is a factor. Absolutely, that's a factor. Are you one of the new ones? It looks like the, the bouncers have a 100% match win percentage, meaning they're 6 0. So I don't think the aces can actually catch them. Man, this, this is real math. This is borderline algebra. It looks like uh, the Slice, as well as the Orlando Squeeze in Group A. It's the Breakers and the Black Diamonds. Yeah, so we didn't need match win percentage or point differential, differential percentage on any of these matches or any of these groups. Just clipped the tape from Corinne Carr. 13, 18. Oh, she had him. She had him. Just overcooked it. That's it, Brad. He gets it back over the net, but it is wide of the court. No, no, get this one right here. 19 14. On that pickup. Uh, Bert alert. <laughs> Bert alert. That's our first one of the day. I love it. One stop here. I didn't know we had an alarm. Oh, yeah, we have an alarm for the Bert alert. <laughs> We're going to work on that one. <laughs> She saved 
saved him. She saved him. That's exactly what she did. Because that was, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably going to be four or five, six feet out. But it's tough in those situations. We've talked about it throughout the day. You're just locked in on trying to play defense. It is now match point. That's a beautiful shot from Johnson. Yeah, great athleticism, obviously, with his singles prowess. He is a heck of a court coverer, and he showed it right there with a Burt two or three points ago and then an Ernie on his own side on that one. 16-20. there on that backhand side. Yeah, she was able to get it over to his backhand. I think that might be the only third shot that he's hit on his backhand side this match. Don't quote me on that. Feels right. Let's see what you did there. Hold your drag, hold your drag, come to you. 17-20 now. Come on, guys. 17-20. Good leave. Hunter Johnson had his paddle up, though, ready for the speed up. Dow's been moving around some of those speed ups now in terms of location. Beautiful pickup. Spin cycle for Johnson. And the poach. from Hunter Johnson. I mean, it's just too good. It's too good. I mean, we even missed the ball he picked up and spun around. He did a pirouette in the middle of that rally. 19 to 20. Yeah, crazy stuff from Hunter Johnson these last couple minutes to keep his team in the match. Mm -hmm. Little powwow for the Brooklyn Aces. Still in a solid position with that 2019 lead, but definitely uh, things a little tighter than they were a few minutes ago, Cameron. It seems like uh, Greg Dow is seeing a little bit more, stealing some more of that middle, even more aggressively. I think we got uh, Dominic Catalano down with something, a uh, court side here. Take it away, Dom. she was going to get a couple in. That's my two. That's the two. Way to go, babe. Match ball. You, you. Yeah! Not so fast again, and it looks like just some communication there at that point. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just the pump fake. That happens yeah. with the guy playing a strong left. It's just going to happen occasionally. Tough time to do it, but... Imposing his will. Fantastic put away power. Match point. Changing the pace is Hunter Johnson. Beautiful, deceptive backhand roll there from Johnson. Yeah, Greg Dow coming in a little bit hot. He tried the old lefty switcheroo there, but couldn't coax it over. Really nice hold on that front shoulder from Hunter Johnson. Yeah. And again, 
the middle is proving to be a little bit more challenging. I feel like Dallas started to assert himself that much more in the middle, and it's creating some hesitation now between him and Carr. We haven't said much of her name just in the last few. She's not seeing as many opportunities. Yeah, she had the angle, just hit it too far. Match point for the bouncers. The game point. Nice pickup. Nice job. They almost dug out of it. They were in a lot of trouble, the bouncers were. They almost dug out of it. Man, really tight moments here at the end of this second mixed match. So the aces need one to tie. Oh, and the lob works, but she ended up getting it on the backhand side, high over her head. I thought it might go out, and Trifunovic didn't hit it Totally clean, so it might have dropped in. It's a really tough spot. Game point. Bouncers. My goodness, the Atlanta bouncers trailed by so many and yet found the second mixed double. They were trailing 0 and 2 before heading to mix. We're all tied up at 2 apiece. You know what that means? Dream breaker! Dream breaker! <laughs> you know we had to close out the day, why not? Definitely. Ooh, we were going the distance. Johnson. So clutch. A little adjustment in their game. We'll send it down to Dom, who is now chatting with Christine and Hunter. Go ahead, John, Dom. I'm with Christine Trifonovic and Hunter Johnson. Wow, what a match, guys. You coming all the way back down 2015. Hunter, what was the difference there? Yeah, we just had to kind of settle in there. Uh, we kind of changed our strategy up in the, the middle of that game and just try to bring it to them instead of being a little defensive. And uh, yeah, she, she did a great job on the right side, just, just being aggressive but also being a good defender. So it was awesome. And Christine just grinding out on that right side. It's like the old Christine that we've known for years and years. And you're out here grinding. I love seeing it. But how is it playing next to Hunter and now going to that dream breaker? Oh, it's so much fun. Um, he played solid, um, put a lot of pressure on um, the mixed team. And yeah, a lot of fun. We are looking forward to the dream breaker. Job's not done. <laughs> yeah. Third time. Uh, all right, so it's the third dream breaker for the Atlanta bounce. We're going to send it back up to you, Cam and Adam. Take it away. guys dream breaker time and we have just got word that the dream baker points do count towards your point differential so this is a very very important dream breaker if you're taking a look at the point differential right now you got the bouncers at 51 71 the aces at 50 75 the AZ drive at 49.49. So that's where it's getting real dicey. We'll see if that's completely up to date to this point. Yep. Yeah, I tried Ooh, the It's about as close yes. as it gets. I mean, this is wild. So if the aces take a loss here, we'd have three teams, all one and two in group C, but then that's where it'd come down to not only the match win difference, but also the point differential exactly. percentage difference. Exactly. So if they lose, the, those points that they, they accumulate in this dream breaker would be that much more critical. If they win, 
they're in. Well, I'll tell you right now, the two pregnant ladies, they won a Dream Breaker earlier today. So why can't they do it again, right? Come on. It's a great point. <laughs> These lineups are going to be really important. Let's see. We got the powwow going over there. Oh boy, what are the lineups going to be? We've talked about it. If this is your first Dream Breaker, which we know it hasn't, because if you've been with us, this would be four of five <laughs> on this court alone today going to a Dream Breaker. We will have a rotation of each of these four players. They will play four individual rallies against an opponent. It is rally scoring. You must win by two going to 21. Typically, the top of the lineup is some of the strongest, but it totally depends on what you want the matchup to be. That's this goes cool. all the way back to the coin toss at the beginning, deciding who is home and away. So if you were the home team, you have the advantage. You get to respond in mixed doubles. If you are the away team, you have the opportunity to respond in the Dream Breaker. So that is where your advantage lies. You get to see what the matchup is or who the opponent Correct. is and choose who you would like to face off against Correct. them. And I would I would have to imagine that the Brooklyn Aces lineup is going to be Rob Nunnery, Greg Dow, Sierra Gaetan Leach, and then Corinne Carr at four. The ladies could probably uh, swap, but Rob Nunnery is definitely the best singles player on their team. I'm excited. Are you yeah. excited? Oh, it's, it's, it's a big match. <laughs> I know it's been a long day, but this is, I mean, this is stuff you live for. Right. Hunter Johnson should for sure be the one spot, fathered by Ben Newell, Brooke Buckner, and Christine Trifunovic. But we'll see if they throw a monkey wrench in it. We'll just have to check that out shortly. All right, so Hunter Johnson is stepping out to the court first, as is Rob Nunnery. We don't have our Cameron Blackwood with us, who was handing us a little sheet of paper to find out what the yeah. lineup will be. So we're going to play this real time. And she did great with that, by the way. That really helped a lot. I'm just looking down at Dom, wondering, Dom, what are you doing? You got to give us these lineups, bro. Dominator. <laughs> He's got them, but he just he hasn't t told us. <laughs> He's just chilling. He's just enjoying the match at this point. No, I, I'm giving you a hard time. No. Job down there. <laughs> all right, here we go. For all the marbles. Big return. Rob looking for Hunter to try to attack his backhand. He did not comply. Favorable bounce for Rob Henry. Yeah, that, I'm not gonna lie, that was an awkward point all the way around with the let cord. The sitter to Hunter and he sails it long. Found the backhand that time. Hunter Johnson did. Just, I mean, it's just too good on the inside out ball there. Not even a bad return from Rob Nunnery. I mean, that's why Hunter Johnson's, you know, a top three, top five, whatever he may be, singles player in the game. It's up there. So now it's going to be Dow versus Newell. So Newell picking up the first. 4 1 now. And you've seen it a few times from Dow in terms of switching the paddle to his left hand. That's right. The old switcheroo. The old switcheroo. Right, Newell sliding into that. And then finishing up the line. Yeah, the footwork is on point from Ben Newell. Pretty casual slide, just right into it, and then the inside end forehand to finish the deal. Yeah, pretty sure that was right on the line. Incredible shot from Ben Newell, really showing all the shots in the toolbox. Yes. 
time for Gaten Leach versus Buckner. Baseline to baseline for each of them. Great shot. She set that point up so well. Buckner stayed steady, though, and found a lane. That's a great point from both ladies. Let's go, Sierra. Come on, Sierra. Come on. Hey, two. if she was trying to take pace off it or not. Worked. Either way, Cameron, she certainly took some pace off. Oh, look at this old school battle. Veterans of the game here. This Four is like, to eight right now. It's like it's 2015 all over again. Let's go. First strike down the line. That's right, somebody was gonna change the pattern. Corinne Carr does so, unfortunately can't keep it in. And back to back for Christine. to 11, time to change ends. Yeah, pretty pretty quick start here from the bouncers. It's gonna be really important for the, for the fellas to step up right here. And they have some pretty tough opponents to do that against, but see if they can pull something out of their bag of tricks, Rob Nunnery and Greg Dow, to close this gap. rotations, Johnson, Country, Funovich, with three and one over Buckner. There it is for Rob Nunnery. Good start for Robert. Nice slice backhand volley out of the reach of Hunter Johnson. Johnson almost looked like Rob thought he was coming back deep. He dink deep. He didn't break forward. I'm still not even sure what word you I, I don't said. even know. I never even <laughs> fixed it. I just left it there. It's been 10 hours. Roll with it. <laughs> Seven, 12. So this time, it went the direction of Nunnery, three to one over Johnson. Nice play from Rob. A little mini stare down towards Hunter after that last point. I love to see that. I'm not sure if that was clean either from Dow, but let's just pretend like it was. Nice drop volley. Ben Newell can't get to it, no one can. Hey, I said the boys needed to step up. So far, so good. Keep it going. And another. So, Dow has put a few additional on the board. It's now a one-point game. 
Great job from Rob Nunnery and Greg Dow getting their team back in the game. Really nice crisp backhand from Guyton Leach. When it's in her strike zone, she hits it as well as anyone. Wait. Something about the score being called twice. No, you stuttered it. You did. You stuttered it. Okay, he's. Gaten Leach misheard him. They're saying he stuttered. He's saying side out to the bouncers, I believe, is what just transpired on court. Now they're, con uh, yeah, a little meeting of the minds in the middle of the court. And Gaten Leach is going to ask the same question. Saying that the score was called twice. Catalano is going to have to find out exactly what just took place. So it's now 14 12. Mm -hmm. Buckner choosing to come forward. And just sitting baseline. You gotta love the ground strokes. Looking to Buckner's backhand. Slicing in, finds some yeah. lanes, but wow, some quick feet from Buckner. Ridiculously good volley from Brooke Buckner. That was a great inside and pass attempt from Gaten Leach. Absolutely phenomenal play on the full stretch from Brooke Buckner. Oh, we're getting a little. 15, 13. What do you call that? Clap, clap, stomp. <laughs> sure. <C> correct. <laughs> Told you, broadcasters, we make up our own terms. Yeah. Backhand to backhand, Corinne Carr. Nice little casual fist pump there from Corinne Carr. Love to see the positivity. She's known for that. 14, 15. Oh. Yeah. And Trifonovic finds one as well. Effect 16, 14. Effectively short. Corinne just was, she kept waiting for that ball to get to her and never quite made it. <laughs> <laughs> Good look, good look. Nice approach though from Trifonovic. Corinne Carr had the, the proper angle, just couldn't keep it down. Not quite enough topspin on that backhand. 17 14 now. That ball's out of bounds. Keeping things close, so we're all the way back to the top, round number three. These two are even in terms of points against one another. Rob Nunnery and Hunter Johnson. Ooh, some trickery! Nice hold from Rob. He had Hunter Johnson frozen looking for the inside out ball. Rob plays inside in, Hunter can't get it. Hustle. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't think there was a chance he was going to get to that ball. So great hustle, hustle from Rob Nunnery, but just too good on the volley from Hunter. Well, and I don't even know you got a paddle on that ball. Yeah. And change of pace. Sometimes that'll do it. Yeah, Hunter kind of turned around like he couldn't believe it. One of his favorite shots, that controlled roll cross-court forehand. 
Uh, can't make them all, Cam. Tripped up again on that forehand side. 17-19. Dow and Newell. Out of bounds. I wasn't sure there was no word spoken. 18, 19. 18, 19. Let serve. Let serve. 18, 19. Backhand to backhand. Two straight for Dow. Nice drop to the backhand side of Newell. My goodness, I cannot believe this matchup is tied after the start the bouncers got off to. <laughs> My goodness, 19 apiece. Deep volley from Ben Newell. Getting fired up with his teammates. Hello, baby. 2019. Match point bouncers. And out of bounds. From down 0 2. The Atlanta bouncers come back. Hitting two mixed and then 21 to 19 in the dream breaker. Absolutely true. We've seen it many times. The 0-2 comeback. Congratulations to the Atlanta Bouncers. Well played. Yeah, that deserves a victory circle. I like that. Why not? Time to have a little fun with the victorious team, the Atlanta Bouncers. Dominic Catalano has all the winners. Everyone get settled. Let's get to this interview because I'm sure it's going to be a fun one. Take it away, Dom. All right, I am here with the entire Atlanta Bouncers team. Wow, you guys are down 0-2. You come back, win both mixed and the Dream Breaker. Hunter, how's that feel, buddy? Going 3-0 now, too. I mean, that's three Dream Breakers today. We're just veterans at this point. Uh, we're, we keep our we're, – we're, we're calm, cool, and collected. That's all we can do, and uh, I'm just happy to be a part of this team. We're moving on, baby. Let's go. Christine, you guys battling it out, Dream Breaker. Adam's up there in the booth going, it's shades of 2015 with you across the net from Corinne Carr. How's it feel? Um, that was fun. Um, good battle. They played great, and I'm um, happy to move on to the semis. <laughs> All right, well, congratulations, Ben. Brooke, congratulations to you guys, too. We're going to kick it back upstairs, but the Atlanta Bouncers moving on with a 3-0 and record unblemished today. Back to you, Cam. All right, you heard it, the Atlanta Bouncers 3-0, so they top Group C standings. The math has yet to be done to find out who else will be moving on from Group C. You can, of course, check back on the MLP webpage to find that out. Thanks so much for joining us here at the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. For myself, for Adam Stone, and the rest of our Boxcar Productions, we will see all of you back here tomorrow morning starting at 8 a.m. local time.